Welcome everybody to the first online European uh, assembly. We cannot say we're the first area assembly. Unfortunately, uh, America stole our thunder. Um, but here we are together in our first um, uh, online assembly. And it will be probably an intense day being at the computer all day and not being able to uh, be in run one room together. But I'm sure we will make it uh, a, a very good assembly. So let's get going. So with this, I'd like to call this meeting to order with my special gavel. And then I would like to ask, um, who shall we ask? Anna, VP Anna, could you um, state the JCI mission? Sure, if VP Anna is ready, otherwise we will just go with myself. The JCI mission to provide development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change. I'm sure you are reciting with me at home. And the JCI vision to be the leading global network of young active citizens. Introductions. Uh, do we have any VIPs in the room? I cannot see, of course, if people are watching through the live stream. Um, so anyways, I would very much like to welcome everybody watching uh, uh, through Facebook Live, all our special guests. And um, I see that Kevin Hinn is in the call, our uh, Secretary General, and I'm sure there are many more people um, watching us. So welcome to everybody who is uh, is watching. Then my opening remarks. Well, I'd like to start off with um, what a special year this has been. And I can imagine, especially you, the national presidents have been thinking like, OK, I am a national president for only one year. And then in this year, this happens and my year as national president is ruined or whatever position you are having. Um, but I would like to emphasize that we are all in our position because we want to learn. We want to develop ourselves. And therefore, this is a, a special opportunity, a special year where we are learning a lot. Even though it are not things that we expected to be learning, we are learning and we are developing ourselves. And I'm sure that all the things we learned this year can be very well applied in the future to make even better events and uh, to do even better things and to apply in your work life as well. So I'm convinced that this is a very valuable year. I'd like to encourage you to focus on all the opportunities that this year is bringing you and uh, you don't focus too much on the things that you will be missing out on. Uh, I'm sure next year or in following years, you'll be able to attend uh, conferences again and uh, meet up with each other. Um, and it may be unfortunate that you are not walking on the stage this year, um, but there are still many things you can get from this year. So thank you also all for joining on this, uh, at least here in the Netherlands, beautiful day. Um, being inside, unfortunately, uh, following a meeting, but I hope we will be able to uh, make this still an enjoyable day for you. And we will make some decisions that will bring JCI Europe forward. Thank you. And the next one will be Itai with his opening remarks. Okay, um, one, two, one, two, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everyone who's connecting uh, to this virtual conference. Uh, I greet you from Harare, Zimbabwe. I hope you all are having a good time. Um, allow me to first off uh, uh, acknowledging our executive vice president assigned uh, to Europe, Marianne de Groot, the, the chairperson of this uh, conference. 2020 JCI Board of Directors that are here today and those that are also connected uh, remotely on the Facebook channel. 
uh, members of the European Development Council, national presidents and chief delegates. I also would like to acknowledge the COC director for 2020 uh, European uh, Conference um, and past JCI officers that we might have also connected today, senators, members of the JCI staff, members and friends, good morning to you all. What a year it has been, 2020, a year that I ordinarily would say it's a year that was delivered to us with the virus, and if only we could probably return it to sender, but probably not in this lifetime. But what we've had to do is to embrace it and take it as it is and take it in our strides. I know most of us are disappointed uh, that uh, we have not been able to meet physically this year in Dublin. We always like to share a laugh, to share a hug, to share words of wisdom and encourage each other on, but probably not this year and hopefully uh, next year. But I'm most excited uh, by the way that members have been able to respond in the midst of this crisis so far. I've seen so many online ac academies being held across the world. Of note is, is the one that was held by uh, JCI Finland. That was an amazing academy that they, that, that they held. And so many other events online that have been carried out uh, throughout the year in Europe and even beyond. This shows you uh, JCI Finland. That was an amazing this shows you how when us as a young people put our minds to doing something and to find lasting solutions and as young leaders in this fast changing world, we can accomplish amazing things. I can only encourage you on for us to keep on pushing and I believe that through this experience, we will come out victorious. Through this experience, we are, we are actually setting our wills into motion in order to ensure that our organization transforms um, and, 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 and goes along with the new normal. The self-improvement, the personal growth that, 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 that has seen us accomplish so far will be is something that will go without, without recognition. My hope is that for us, we embrace whatever we've been through so far and let it be something that can spur us forward into the future. Look around ourselves, look at how we can be those positive change agents that can breathe life in rebuilding uh, economies, rebuilding communities post this crisis. And I hope that sooner or later we'll be out there to, to be able to connect physically. I wish you all the best in this conference. I wish you fruitful deliberations as JCI Europe. I wish that uh, we can come out victorious post this crisis. And at the end of the year, when we then get to meet in Congress, we can look back and say, in the midst of crisis, we, we, we rose to the occasion. I wish you all the best. And to the chairperson of this conference, before I finish my, 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 my speech this morning, allow me to uh, present to you um, this lovely gavel. OK, this one is my gavel that I used when I chaired the conference. In, uh, in, 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 in Cotonou two years ago. But with this virtual gavel I'm passing on to you, I wish you a successful conference. I wish uh, you wisdom as you chair this conference, uh, EVP Marion. Your physical gavel, I will, I will hand it over to you at the earliest convenience as, as, as soon as airports are open and we can be able to meet. Uh, All the best as you chair this conference. Thank you very much, JCI Europe, and have a fantastic conference. All the best. Have a good one. Thank you very much, President Itai. And the, the gavel transformed a little bit when it uh, came through cyberspace, uh, but I'm sure it will function well uh, during this meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, then our next point on the agenda is messages of greeting. Are there any messages of greeting? It's... 
Uh, yes, thank you, EVP Marian. Uh, we received a message of greeting. However, I have not received the video file yet. Um, it's a greeting from Lars, but I will drop the video in the library folder after the assembly so you all can watch the greetings from Lars, from former President Lars. Um, so it will be just a little bit delayed, but there is a greetings from former President Lars, and I will drop it in the library folder for this assembly. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lutz. I'm supposed to be able to go to the next uh, slides, right, Lutz? Yes, there's a slight time delay. You just clicked to item three. You're going backwards, and there you go. Just give it a little moment, okay. so one second delay, yeah. All right, then we are at the roll call. Uh, Lutz will be calling each national organization. The idea is that you then unmute yourself and uh, state that you are present. Um, make it a little bit longer message than just present so that the time delay um, doesn't uh, el eliminate you at all, uh, how to say. Um, but that we can at least see you with your camera and that we see that it's actually the national president who is uh, speaking. So Lutz, please take it away with the roll call. Yes, thank you, dear EVP Marion. Um, just one, um, one announcement beforehand. Uh, we did decide due to the um, pandemic that the uh, dues, the membership dues, will be due by the 31st of May. Thus, everybody will be uh, regarded as financial today, um, just for your information. Um, and then I would like to start with the roll call. We do it alphabetically. Um, and thus, I would like to start with JCI Austria. Christoph, I see you in the participant list. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I just checked my mute button. <laughs> Perfect. So, okay. so I had some technical uh, problems with my volume. Can you please repeat your question, Lutz? Yes, I was just doing the roll call. Uh, I was basically just asking if you are present, and uh, this is very likely the case since I have heard your voice already. But uh, maybe you want to say if you are present, and maybe you want to take uh, turn on the camera for a second so we can see you if you would like to. Yes. So. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Austria, I am present. Service. Uh, perfect. Thank you very much, Christa. Uh, then the next one up would be JCI Belgium, Tom. Good morning, everyone from JCI Belgium. We are present. There you go, and good to see you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next up is JCI Bulgaria with Elita. Hello, guys. Morning from Bulgaria, and JCI Bulgaria is present. Thank you very much, Elitza. Uh, then next up is Catalonia with Anna. Hello, uh, I'm Anna from JCA Catalonia and I'm present. Thank you very much, Anna. Welcome. Uh, then we have JCI Croatia. Hello, good morning from Croatia. Croatia is present as well. Thank you very much, Helena. Then we have JCI Cyprus. Morning, Okay, thank you very much, Dolores. Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good to see you. All right. And then just remember everyone to turn off your videos again, uh, just to save bandwidth. Um, so people who have not a very stable connection can still follow the whole presentation. Thank you. Uh, then next one up is uh, JCI Czech Republic with Miroslav. Hi from Czech Republic. This is Mirek. We are on board. 
Perfect. Ahoy. Thank you. Then we have the next up is JCI Denmark with Susanne. Good morning, everyone. JCI Denmark is present. Thank you very much. Good morning. Then we have JCI Estonia. Good morning and guten Morgen for Lutz. <laughs> JCI Estonia is present. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Good morning. Then we have JCI Finland up next. Morning. JCI Finland is present. Perfect. Thank you very much, Michaela. Uh, then we have JCI France. Hi. Hello. Good morning from Europe. I'm Linda from JCI France, and uh, I am in the host. Merci beaucoup, Linda. Bonjour. Uh, then we have next up um, JCI Germany. Good morning, Sandra. Moin, moin. Germany is present. Sehr gut, vielen Dank. Uh, then next one up is uh, JCI Iceland. Good morning, JCI Iceland is present. Thank you very much. And then we have JCI Ireland coming up next. Good morning from a surprisingly sunny Ireland. Uh, JCI Ireland is present. Thank you very much, Ronan. Then next one up is Italy, JCI Italy. Buongiorno, JCI Italy is present. Buongiorno, <laughs> grazie mille Davide. Uh, then we have JCI Latvia coming up. Good morning, JCI Latvia is present. Perfect, thank you Lita. Good morning as well. Uh, then we have JCI Lithuania. Good morning. JCI Lithuania is present. Lovely, thank you very much. Then next one is uh, Luxembourg, JCI Luxembourg. Can you hear us? I see you on Hi, bonjour. Bonjour, um, Aurélien here, and uh, greetings from a sunny day in Luxembourg. Lovely, thank you very much. Well, you know, it seems like it's sunny everywhere. Um, then next up is JCI Malta, which is another sunny place, I assume. Good morning and bonjour. Uh, Malta is present, and as you can see, with the sea and the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. While we are all sitting in our offices, <laughs> thank you, Marcus. Good to see you. Um, then next one up is JCI Moldova. <clears throat> yes, that was ex uh, that has been announced before. JCI Moldova is not present. Um, then next one up is JCI Monaco. Hello, everybody. So nice to be here. JCI Monaco presents. Thank you very much. Good morning. Then we have the Netherlands, JCI Netherlands. Good morning, everyone. JCI Netherlands president, national president and deputy as well. <laughs> I hope there's a one meter 50 between you guys. <laughs> Can't you see that? <laughs> okay, thank you all, Bas. Then we have JCI Poland coming up. Everyone, it's Joanna from JCI Poland. Uh, Dzień dobry from Poland, and have a great uh, day today. I'm looking forward to the assembly. Thank you very much. Good morning, Joanna. Good to have you on board as well. Uh, next one is JCI Romania. Hello. Do you see me? I, we can hear you. Now you've muted yourself. See you now, but you're on mute. Now you can hear me? Yes, now see Thanks. and hear you. Hello, okay. JCI Romania, Alina, still me. <laughs> Perfect, thank you very much. Good morning. And then we have JCI Russia coming up next. Hello, everyone. JCI Russia is here. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sergey. Good morning. Uh, then we have JCI Scotland coming up. 
Good morning from uh, another very sunny location, very surprisingly in Edinburgh. Uh, it's not raining. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Stephen. Um, then we have JCI Serbia. JCI Serbia speaking. Hello, everyone. <laughs> good morning. We are present as well. Perfect, thank you very much. Then we have JCI Slovakia coming up. Hello everyone, JCI Slovakia is present. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you, you too. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Then we have JCI Sweden coming up. Good morning everyone, and JCI Sweden is present. And uh, Lutz, I would like to remind you of our neighboring country, Norway, unless you forgot them. In case you forgot them. Oh yeah, they are, they are actually, they're actually on the end of the list in not alphabetical order. All Are right, you? okay. Very diligent work, Johan. Thank you. But I, I have them on the list. <laughs> Sweden is at least present. Perfect. Thank you. Good taking care of each other. Um, then we have JCI Switzerland coming up. Good morning, everybody. JCI Switzerland is here and ready. Dankeschön, Andre. Good morning. Then we have JCI Turkey. Good morning, everyone. JCI Turkey is present. Thank you. Good morning. Then we have JCI Ukraine. Hi, Lut. Hi, everyone. Nice to hear you guys. Perfect. Thank you, Yevian. Good morning as well. Good to have you here. Uh, then we have JCI United Kingdom, UK. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Have a good day. Thank you, James. And then uh, we have JCI Norway. Last but not least. Yes, hello from JCI Norway. Good. Carl, I hope you I hope you didn't get any sweats that I forgot you, but <laughs> you were on the oh, list. No. <laughs> no problem. Perfect. Okay, then we have uh, 33 national organizations present, and that means that we have a simple majority of 17 and a two-third majority of 22 votes. And uh, we have more than 50% of the national organizations present, which means that we have quorum. EVP Marian, we have quorum. Thank you, Lutz. And I believe the percentage is a bit lower for the area D than for the EV. Um, but <laughs> we have a quorum anyways. So, okay. Check your notes, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, are we going backwards again? Yes, we are. So then we get to the adoption of the agenda. And first, we already had received some amendments to the agenda, uh, which are here. We've added agenda point 9B, an update by the EC 2020 host national president, Rona Nisi. And at agenda point 20, uh, we have the sub items, the European Academy, Know How Transfer, uh, Deisha Academy, World Congress in Yokohama, and the European Conference 2021. Of course, all events updates. Are there any other amendments to the agenda? Please raise your hand if you have an amendment and I can give you the word. I do not see any hands raised. I'm not sure if that is because of me or Lutz, do you see any raised hands? No, I don't. But uh, just to be sure, if you can't f um, find your hand, maybe you just say here in the chat, um, last resort, but just really to make sure uh, we hear you if you want to say something. Just in general for the call. All right, then I assume there are no amendments to the agenda. And then we move to the adoption of the agenda. And now we will have our first kind of uh, voting. Um, normally, this is done quite quickly with uh, all those in favor say agenda. Um, what we will do in these cases is 
I will wait for five seconds if anybody raises their hands to object to um, accepting the motion. And if not, then the motion is accepted. This is because this is the fastest way um, to uh, to get through these things. Otherwise, we have to wait for a lot of hands being raised. I see a question. Can you just make a test for raised hands? Uh, yes, if you go to the participants list. And so for now, I will not count this as objecting to adopting the agenda. You can go to the participants list and there you have a hand button. Uh, raise hand and you can click that. If you want to test that, you can test it now and you can click it again to lower your hand. Do you see any raised hands? Yes, I do. Okay, prob probably you don't see it, only me as host. Okay, then we have to stay in close contact for that. We have Alina and Anna uh, raising up their hands. Um, it was the test. She said the test, but we cannot go back the unmute uh, to raise the hands. is working, but if you want to raise down the hand, it's not working the button. It, it's not really well visible, but if you click it again, the color slightly slightly changes. Okay, I'll try it again. It works now. Do you see me? Still? Yep. Raise okay. hand. No, the raise the hand. <laughs> yes, you put down the hand. Or you want to raise it's down. Yeah, I mean, it's down. now is the hand is down or up? It's down. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, it's slightly blue when it's raised and it's black when it's not raised, but it is indeed not very clear. Uh, but you have to put it down yourself. We cannot lower your hand. Um, anyway, so this was the test. Um, so please, it, I don't know if there are any hands raised now, but please lower them if you have raised them. Lutz, can you verify that we have no raised hands? No raised hands. Good. Then I'd like to move to the adoption of the agenda. Are there any objections to adopting the agenda as amended? Please raise your hand if you object. Otherwise, please keep your hand down. I will wait for five seconds to give you the time to object. And Lutz will tell me if there is a raised hand. Seeing none. Then we have adopted the agenda. The minutes of the European National Presidents Meeting at the 2020 JCI European Presidents Meeting in Chisinau, Moldova. Are there any? Oh, I forgot a, a part. I think I have to do that adopting of the agenda again. Because, of course, we first have to have a motion on the floor and the motion has to be moved by someone. So someone has to move the motion to uh, adopt the agenda with the amendments. So the chair seeks a motion to adopt the agenda with the proposed amend uh, uh, amendments. Please raise your hand if you'd like to move that motion. And I need Lutz's help. Yes, we have, um, I have to see, JCI Catalonia raised their hand. Yes, moved by JCI Catalonia and seconded by? JCI Luxembourg. JCI Luxembourg, thank you, Lutz. Lower your hands for the moving and seconding. Are there any objections against uh, adopting the agenda? I'm waiting for five seconds. Seeing no raised hands, then the agenda is properly adopted. Thank you. We will get better at these online meetings soon. I just want to verify, um, JCI Catalonia, you have your hand still raised. Was this on where you opposed to the motion or? Yes. Okay. Just know it. Thank you. I think. Okay. Yes. We will get better at this, guys. Uh, at the end of the day, we will be experts. 
Then the minutes of the European President's meeting at the 2020 JCA European President's meeting in Chisinau, Moldova. Are there any amendments to the minutes? So no raised hands. Okay, good. Uh, so no amendments. Then I seek a motion to um, adopt the minutes of the European National Presidents meeting and raise your hand to move or second the motion. Lutz. Moved by the Netherlands, seconded by JCI UK. Any objections to adopting the minutes? then the minutes are approved. Then we go to the action items that we gave ourselves at the last meeting. The action items are, one was the clarification on the tougher than cancer campaign and if it's included in the international plan of action. I consulted with uh, President Itai, and it turned out that the version of the plan of action that was sent to the national presidents for approval at the assembly in Tallinn at World Congress last year was not the latest version, so it did not include the, um, the tougher than cancer campaign. Um, so officially the one that is approved, it does indeed not include this campaign. However, it's still up to the president to run this campaign um, as a personal campaign and people are still uh, free to uh, adopt the campaign along with him. So there's no obligations here. It was not in the approved plan of action. That was a mistake, um, but we can still do activities with it uh, if we want to do that. Any further questions on that point? So looking at Lutz, if there are any raised hands. The Netherlands. Please go ahead. Thank you for the clarification on this, Marianne. Um, of course, I'm not trying to make too big of a point of, of it. And of course, I support Itai in, in seeking this as a personal campaign. Um, I just wanted to stress after EPM that um, because the plan was not entirely clear to us, it wasn't approved by the national presidents, we were only seeking the motion to not further support the, the campaign financially and, and also by using staff of uh, headquarters and also by our area. Um, we do not have to vote on this again now. Uh, I just would, wanted to stress that that's the point we wanted to make uh, because as the 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 national presidents are the body that have to, has to approve um, plans like this also in the plan of action. Uh, as it is not in the approved plan of action, we cannot put any um, monetary or uh, other help from our offices towards it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Boss. Uh, that is very clear. Any other comments regarding this point? Seeing none, um, then the next two points um, are both uh, things that we have referred to a task force, the elaboration of the motion by JCI Cyprus to create a business network of members that will be addressed in uh, agenda item 18, campaigns uh, point B, business networking platform, and the step up for year of revamp report um, will also be addressed in agenda item 18, uh, point A. So those will be addressed later. No questions regarding those points, well, they can be addressed uh, when we get to those agenda points. Okay. Okay. 
Then point eight on the agenda is um, normally on the agenda we have the announcements of conference appointments. Um, in this case, we uh, are doing only the assembly today and we're not actually uh, at the conference in Dublin. Um, so we currently don't have any uh, conference appointments. We are working on an online European conference program. Uh, Derek will tell you more about that later um, and more information will follow. Uh, but for now, there are no uh, conference appointments. We keep going back and forth with these slides. It seems this goes better when you click. Let's there we go forward. All right, then point nine, conference director's announcements. First, we have an update by CUC director Derek Riley. Derek, can I give you the word? Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me, Marion? I can hear you, Derek. Welcome. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Dublin virtually. Uh, the sun is shining. We wish you were all here. Uh, and we are delighted to announce that instead of being in Dublin this week, we are going to be running an online European conference from the 12th to the 21st. So the Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the first weekend will be organized by the COC team in Dublin and will follow the same theme as the original conference, which was Friday will be about engagement, Saturday will be about employment, and then Sunday will be about empowerment. We hope to have a website with the program up and running this week. Uh, it is being worked on at the moment. Uh, this is a collaboration between the COC in Dublin, JCI Team Europe with Marion and her team, and also JCI HQ and the event staff there, with each of the three parties uh, organizing uh, different elements of the online conference. So it's actually much more collaborative than uh, Dublin was, uh, whereas everybody is doing a lot more online. Um, the, um, a, the registration will be open to everybody. Uh, people who were to attend Dublin and registered to attend Dublin will be given priority for those sessions with limited ad numbers. And also if we have any v, uh, VIP or keynote speakers, uh, priority will be given to those that have uh, registered or had registered for Dublin uh, in advance. So we're trying to give some value to those uh, people that were good enough to, to already uh, try and get to Dublin. Um, so the uh, program is being finalized at the moment. As mentioned, the website will be coming uh, live in the next couple of days. And um, that's the first weekend. Uh, then during the week, the Monday to the Thursday, uh, will be predominantly run by the Skills Development Committee. And they will be running official and recommended courses on um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening. Uh, and these will be given priority to those again that have been uh, those that have registered already. And then on the Friday and Saturday and Sunday of the second weekend will be Team Europe, uh, Marion, and we will be having public speaking, debating, uh, award ceremony, which I'm really looking forward to. We're really going to be focusing on why uh, people won the awards and explaining the projects. Um, we're going to be having opening ceremony on our weekend. There's a lot to remember. Um, but yeah, we're really looking forward to. Um, first online uh, conference and um, it wasn't our plan uh, we wanted you in Dublin uh, we were going to have an amazing conference but we feel we're also going to have an amazing conference uh, when we are going to run it online as well and uh, so wishing everybody safe and well thank you for all the messages of support and understanding and um, nobody could see this coming uh, and we hope that there will be lessons learned for future conferences and we are already having conversations and advising future organizing conferences uh, how we set up our conference and versus how they we think they should set up theirs. So uh, thank you very much, Marion. Yes, thank you, Derek. I had a long way to my mute button. Um, and I'd like to remind also the national presidents that they have received an email to send in a video for the opening ceremony. Um, so if you haven't checked your national uh, con your country's email address yet, uh, please do so because we would like to have you all in the opening ceremony. Thank you, Derek, for your uh, introduction.
to the online European conference. Thank you. And the next speaker is Ronan Nisi, the 2020 host national president. Thanks, Marianne. Um, so as, as host president, I just want to say a few words on the overall contacts. So from an Ireland perspective, I suppose it's an understatement to say that it has been a roller coaster of a journey for every one of us involved. Um, anyone that has been involved in the organizing of a European conference knows what I mean with all of the challenges. However, if you throw in just that little minor challenge called a pandemic, um, you know, even a country like Ireland that punches well above its weight is going to struggle. In reality, though, the situation has been heartbreaking for all of the team and everyone at JCI Ireland, uh, given how many years this was in the making. This was our big chance to welcome you all to our beautiful country. And as you know, the sun is shining here, so the weather definitely didn't get the memo. Um, but our organization was so excited and uh, we were ready for this and it was going to be one hell of a European conference. Um, but despite everything uh, and despite all the opportunities that we have now lost for our organization, we are going to continue to push forward and to grow. And with that, I, I just want to say that I'm so proud of what all our members in, in our own organization here in Ireland have done. Um, spirits are high and it has been a major blow um, for all of us. Um, but, but we're going to keep going, we're going to recover and we're going to come back bigger than ever. So at this point, I would just like to acknowledge Derek and uh, the, the COC for their incredible efforts since the outset. Um, it's important that everyone knows that they really poured their blood, sweat and tears into bringing you all that European conference that you would remember. And in spite of the heartbreak, they really continue to work around the clock in collaboration with JCI Europe and the HQ teams. And uh, on that, we do appreciate the support from, from you, Marion, uh, and your teams in Europe, and of course, the HQ teams. Um, but also to have the support of my fellow MPs and national organizations has been immense. Um, of course, the ETI as well, President, your, your support has been invaluable too. I know you've been all going through your own struggles, um, but your understanding has made the pain a little easier for us here in Ireland. However, with all being said, we have turned the page and now we are into a new chapter. We're once again working towards something special and we're going to get there this time, no matter what the world decides to throw at us. So what I'm going to say is clear your diaries and be ready to go on the 12th of June. We want to see whatever bit of Irish is in you. We want to see that coming out for the occasion. And I promise you we'll have a cracking time. We'll have some party and we'll enjoy it all together. Cade Mila Falja. Thank you, Ronan. And I think uh, Jesha Island has uh, deserved a, a big round of applause. And it, it, it might be a bit difficult. And I think if everybody unmutes themselves and gives an applause, it will sound crappy. But I think the in intention is good. So a big round of applause for, uh, for Ronan and Christine. Yeah. Thank you all. It, it indeed sounded crappy, but with a good intention. So, Next up on the agenda, and I guess this is my part, is the update to the uh, JSHA Europe plan of action. So after the EPM in Moldova, we have uh, updated or refined the plan of action that we presented back then. This was sent to you after the, uh, the European President's meeting in Moldova. So you had, had the time to review it. Um, and now we would like to give you an update on how we are progressing with that plan of action. Um, do I keep clicking backwards?
So let's continue the clicking. So yes, uh, the main goals that we had defined is uh, to strengthen the JCI brand and identity inside and outside the organization. So to, so to show what we stand for and that we show it properly. Um, second is to stimulate and facilitate the knowledge sharing between the national and local organizations and the JCI board because of all the great things that are already going on and we should learn from each other and share with each other. And then third is improve the foundation and continuity of the organization with an enhanced administration and handover. So you've already seen a few points that we're working on to create more stability and uh, create, create a solid uh, JCI Europe organization. I'll ask which to do the next slide because I think I'm going backwards when I click. Yeah. Um, so in this, in the strength of the JCI brand and identity, we identify three uh, objectives uh, to reinvent the step for Europe campaign, promote the four areas of opportunity, uh, support national organizations in better promoting the JCI brand and better utilize the sustainable development goals for the benefit of the organization. And in the second uh, main goal, not sure if Lutz doesn't get my key or if there's a delay. Um, stimulate knowledge sharing, so stimulating best practices sharing, enhance the use of the JCI programs, uh, streamline communication channels, and increase the participation of JCI international events. And then in the third one, we had uh, improve the foundation uh, at administration at all levels, uh, strengthen continuity, uh, encourage national organizations to do real situation analysis of challenges and support growth development of national organizations. Now for each of these uh, three times four, so 12 objectives, uh, we have one slide with action items in each of these where I can quickly give you some uh, progress updates. There will be some that have more details later, um, but this is just for a quick review. And you can also review the Trello board that you have received the link to earlier, and we will send it again uh, where you can always monitor our progress there. So for the Step Up for Europe campaign, we are working on that and you will get an update uh, in, in point 18, if I remember correctly, on this agenda. The next slide, the promoting the four areas of opportunity. Uh, well, these are some continuous actions that we are informing people about opportunities in all four areas, actively promote them. We are planning sessions for the online European conference in each area. Um, promoting the academies, of course, there's some challenge in organizing the academies, but we uh, are always uh, promoting these. And um, still to do is creating a tool to visualize the personal growth paths in these areas of opportunity. Then the JCI brand, um, it's a continuous action to promote JCI Europe visibly. We've been working hard with the communication plan and promoting on social media. Um, we are always working on using the correct corporate identity guidelines and style guide. And the PR and Media Academy, of course, due to Corona, has been postponed. I see it's currently planned for September, but we have to see whether it's possible to organize it then, and uh, then we can promoting it. So that's why it is on hold. On hold. The utilize sustainable development goals for the benefit of the organization. I think we have some work to do there, how we can better connect the SDG product projects to connect with partners and connecting them with all four areas of opportunity and not just seeing them as only community uh, items. And promoting the active citizen framework for more than community projects. That is something that has that we are working on globally as well um, to yeah, see the active citizen framework no longer as only for community projects, um, but see if you can also apply it for business because it's the same principle. So that is what we're working on. Stimulate best practice sharing. Um, we are organizing sessions and we did it already at APM, but also at the European conference, we are um, organizing a presentations and pitches session and um, connecting local and uh, local and national officers. We are continuously 
working on doing things like posting Tuesday tips for growth on Facebook. And we are working on a magazine with the best uh, stories and best practices that will also be addressed at the campaign agenda item. And the use of JC programs. Um, engaging award presentations. Certainly we will uh, seize the opportunity that we are now doing a completely different European conference and uh, we have the opportunity to reinvent uh, all items there, including the awards presentation. As normally people would be eagerly waiting for their dinner and now we have the opportunity to do uh, it uh, all at once. So you could be having dinner while watching the awards at home and we will uh, go more into depth on what the awards actually are, what projects received the new, an award and um, you know, what they did so well so that we can learn from them more. Um, then share the details of those, not so fast looks, share the details of the award winning projects, that's what I said, and also of the toy winners. Um, boost marketing about programs, awards and the EU know-how transfer. Uh, we, I think we still have some work to do there, uh, especially for the awards coming up close. We will be doing some more uh, promotion there. And the EU know-how transfer, of course, with the corona situation, we have to see uh, how much of that is possible. We, but we are currently working behind the scenes to make that happen, and there will be an update later. Um, then sharing best practices of organizing programs at national and local levels, that is... Um, so that we are something that we are con continuously doing. Communication channels. Yes, uh, you've seen our newsletter already. We've created a, a strategy for communication and we are uh, working on better using our online tools, groups, etc. Increased participation of JCI international events. Of course, that is a bit of a challenge this year, although we can say that everybody who doesn't have the money to travel to the European conference normally will be able to attend this year's European conference because they can just do it from their homes. And we really hope that we, they will be motivated to then join an actual event in the future. And further, we are reviewing a grant policy and the EPM contract, so those are in in progress and we are working with the COC to ensure relevant content and activities um, in the online European conference. Administration at all levels. Later today we hope to uh, introduce the GLC position at the Europe level. Um, we are continuously working on proper administration at the Europe level also with the legal um, ground that we have in our team. And uh, we will continue with the 100% efficiency program review. That is also something that is done on the global level um, as well. So that is something in progress. Strength and continuity and handover at all levels. Um, we, I think we can work some more on supporting national and local leadership academies and kickoffs, but that is something that the VPs uh, are doing or working with their national organizations. But of course, many of these events um, will have to be uh, cancelled or postponed. Um, but maybe we can work more on that in the second half of the year. Share best practices to the deputy national president system. That is also something that is done among the, the VPs in their groups. Uh, promoting local action guides. That is something we are planning to do and also in the knowledge sharing session that we will have during EC. Ensuring continuation for next year's Team Europe. That is a continuous thing that with everything we do, we make sure it's documented for the next generation of board members. Then encourage national organizations to do a real situation analysis. This is something that the EDC is working on, the health checklist to assess the national and local organizations' health. and support growth development of national organizations. Uh, updating the mentoring program, you should have received some information on that already. Uh, or 
options, unfortunately. It's currently on hold, although we are looking into what we can do online. Um, that is mainly something the EDC can tell you more about. And the rollout of the new course, Engage, Empower, Grow. Also, this course has been held online a few times, so we are uh, working on the rollout of this one. For so far, the plan of action progress report. Are there any questions on the plan of action? Jisha, your plan of action progress report. Anna, from JCI Estonia. Thank you. Um, thank you for a very detailed report. And I also want to thank uh, that you're using this Trello board that we can always have a look at regarding the plan of action. It's very, very convenient. Uh, I only wanted to ask about uh, one point that was about strengthening the JCA brand. And the key result, resort, uh, result was the stronger JCA brand using the same language. I only wanted to ask how you're going to measure it or how are you? Plan, planning to look back whether it is stronger or not. I know it's not easy to make everything measurable. I'm just like looking ahead. <laughs> yes, indeed, it is challenging to make things measurable. And sometimes you then uh, revert to measuring things that can be measured, even though they might not say what you want to achieve. Um, with the language we mean here that that uh, we all use the same words uh, with the same uh, meaning. So, for example, local organization, um, we know what a local organization is. Um, but indeed, it will be hard to measure, but we can only constantly monitor whether people are um, using this. So I don't think we can have a concrete measurement here, uh, but we can have, um, yeah, a, a a gut feeling maybe of whether people are completely diverting from the, the international guidelines of how to present JCI or if they are uh, sticking to it. So I admit it's not a very good uh, key result that you can measure. But if there are any suggestions how to measure this, I'm open for that. Okay, we'll think about it as well. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the plan of action? Seeing none. Now, this report was for information, so there's no official uh, adoption. And then I would like to give the word to my support and anchor this year, Natasha Yoff, the chair of the European Development Council. Natasha, take it away. Thank you so much, Marian. Uh, it's absolutely a pleasure to uh, work with the team this year. Um, well, Madam Chairperson, all protocols observed. So first, I would like to do uh, the presentation and reporting of um, the work done by the EDC so far. So, uh, first of all, let's just slightly for the presentation. But let me, uh, meanwhile, while we are waiting for the presentation, let me just give you like an overall introduction. So, um, I hope you saw the report that was uh, uploaded in the drive. And uh, the, the opening statement about life is what happens to you while you're making, while you're busy making other plans. That is indeed what has been happening uh, this year in general for all of us. So how do you handle that? Well, one thing that is certain is the only thing we cannot do is just sit down, lay back and wait for it to be over because nobody knows when this will be over. And you will also see a reflection uh, of how to adapt for the European Council, European Development Council for this situation. Um, on a general note, what is uh, a bit different in uh, the EDC, the European Development Council this year, is that um, all councillors are assigned to a VP, as you know, 
and it's really um, it's really really great to see how much we are um, collaborating within the team and I do hope that it's measurable at your side that we are not approaching you with the same questions all the time and the same information and so uh, because we do collaborate better within JCI Europe. That is very much thanks to the idea from uh, EVP Marion about how to handle and put together uh, a collaborated team. All the councillors as well are um, assigned to a committee together with the vice presidents. So that is also a bit different that, than, um, that the council does not only uh, work within the frame of the European Development Council, but take uh, responsibility for a broader perspective in JCI Europe. One of the things that we uh, saw very recently, maybe you were also a part of it, was uh, the global session that was hosted uh, a week ago between all the four areas, or sorry, two weeks ago. That was a session that was put together very fast. And uh, you can imagine having so many people working together in so many different time zones that you can basically think of. And um, well, a learning for the next time, I would say is definitely that this is really a valuable session and it should be done in, um, in better time. Also in order for, uh, for the national presidents and national organizations in general to support in promoting um, this session as well. But that is something that we, uh, that we introduced and that is actually due to the current situation. So some good, uh, good things also comes from this. So Lutz, can we take the next slide? Uh, and one more. Let's just, uh, oh, back to impact and promotion. We are there, okay. Next slide. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Just to uh, elaborate a bit on the report. Well, one of the things that really has been a focus for the whole JCI Europe team this year is how to streamline the communication, how to really emphasize on the things that are going on that is important for uh, US national presidents, uh, where we need a call for action, where there is an option to attend uh, different sessions, where there are information that is important for uh, everyone. As uh, we in the, C in the EDC has a portfolio for impact and promotion, it was decided this year that um, that the portfolio for impact and promotion would have a broader perspective, which means that uh, Manuela is doing the entire communication part for uh, Team Europe and uh, is also putting together uh, all the newsletter, newsletters with uh, the endless work there is to, uh, to create these all the times. We have scaled up on, uh, on social media in general, um, adapted the website and a new initiative that also was created during to this situation is uh, the JCI Europe Live. I hope you have uh, joined the sessions. It is uh, councillors uh, Manuela and Ruth that are hosting the sessions and the next session will go live on June uh, 22nd and that will be highlights of the European Conference 2021 and we hope that you will all join in. So yes, that is perfect. The next slide, please. Skills boosting. Thank you so much. Skills boosting is the portfolio that has always been, uh, or always, that is uh, a bit of an over exaggerant because it's only for the second year, but uh, not to over exaggerate this one. Skills boosting is really focusing on the Regional Growth and Development Academy and here in general the academies. One of the things that we uh, unfortunately had to do, as you all know, was to either cancel or postpone the, the academies that were already planned. We um, have done additional thoughts about how to handle that, but I will come back to that a bit later. 
So best practice, uh, share, best practice sharing session is really a part of this also, and you've uh, probably also seen it in general in the JCI Europe Live. And also uh, here is a portfolio that is very um, touching base with the national presidents whenever uh, someone reaches out. Can we go to the next one, Ruth? Uh, Lutz. So new organizations. New organizations is, um, okay. Well, luckily you will get the slides afterwards so you can see the pretty faces of the counselors and uh, not the adopted version here. So new organizations, it is really a difficult time to focus on new countries in general. Um, but that's not the only thing we do. It's also supporting at the local level. And uh, I was super happy a few weeks ago when uh, national presidents of UK, James, reached out to us and said, we have a member who has this idea about starting the local chapter in four weeks. And uh, is there any way EDC can support? And that is an amazing challenge and we are up for it. So what I want to showcase with this story is, if you do have any ideas in your national or local organization that you need our support for, just reach out because we are indeed here to support also at the local level. What we will do in this case is we put together a team of counselors that will support here and uh, it will be with the primary contact person as uh, Dresden Stankwitz from new organizations, but also um, counselor HP, counselors Heidi and uh, Jana will be involved and uh, probably also Manuela. But local supports in general, and we are still looking at the national organizations that could have a chance to uh, get affiliated um, in the nearest future. Can we move to intensive support? Well, I can promise you in my slides, that is Jana and Heidi on the picture. So one of the things that has been a huge focus here is to um, move forward with um, with the mentoring program and put that into a frame where it uh, was ready to uh, to launch. And um, I, I hope you saw the emails sent out by uh, the counselors. The mentoring program, program is a pilot program at this stage. It's launching at the 2nd of June. And uh, at this moment, we have applications from 20 mentees and uh, 10 mentors. So that is really, really amazing to, to see that we are ready to, um, to kick this off. It's also in general country support. And uh, here this year, there is a huge focus on uh, from intensive support, also the regional academy, regional growth and development academies. That's not necessarily um, what is always in the portfolio, but this year, we have two counselors on intensive support who are both trainers. So of course we utilize their skills in also this part. You've probably also seen them in a lot of the online trainings because they have really been hosting a lot of online trainings uh, all over. And by that said, let's move to national and local collaboration. Here uh, is a here is a portfolio that where it, we aim to support in also the collaboration between the local and the national level um, in general. The health checklist, we've been talking about the health checklist. So a part of the work was also to, um, to design this uh, all over and make it ready for launching. And actually very recently, so recently that it was just yesterday, um, we texted a bit with uh, JCI Scotland about uh, entering into uh, to testing the frame. And um, when you see the health checklist, it is the first version and we really would appreciate if you would give any kind of feedback for it, but we are really happy that we are ready to, uh, to use it now. So also the guide to growth made the guide to growth 
for the European online conference that will take place from the 12th to 21st of June. Um, there you will see a session on um, Monday, uh, Monday, June 15, where uh, we launch a program with the Sustainable Growth Program. And here you will also see the guide to growth and the concept within there. What we aim for here is a little bit less inspiration. Inspiration is always amazing, but in this part, a little bit less inspiration and a little bit more uh, actual tools that you can implement and use directly in your local and national organization. So this portfolio is also supporting in revising the agreements. That is everything from the EPM contract to the European conference contracts and so. And uh, it's also where you see that we utilize the skills that everybody has to support in general for the team. Support of national and local organizations. There is a support for, uh, for example, in one case, the ACI Ukraine, Ukraine, and we are really happy that you also reached out and uh, asked for our support, and we are eager to support you in any way. And let's go to the last slide. So what is going to happen from here? Yes, that's a really good question. I promised you that I would get back to the regional growth and development academies. We do hope, we really do hope, that it will be possible to go back to having the physical online academies, meeting face to face, being able to have the interaction between humans, because there is just magic happens when people come together. And that is a special part of the academies. But if that's not an option, and maybe even if it is an option, that isn't completely decided yet. But at least we have uh, created a framework for the online regional growth and development academies. It will be revised and discussed up upon to the summer holiday. And um, there from you will hear more about it if we are, if the conclusion will be that we will go uh, forward with the regional growth and development academies online if we are not able to do it physically. So, um, Councillor Heidi has been doing a lot of work uh, by putting together a framework that we've been discussing in the EVC team. How can this work together, giving inputs in general and seeing how will this um, benefit uh, the national and local organizations. So, just to introduce you shortly to the online uh, regional growth and De development academy. The idea is to have a 10 week academy. The idea is not that you put all your time in it, of course, every day, but it's an academy where you can do a little bit of work one day, skip the next, or how that fits with your team that you are together with. Things are still to be defined, but the framework is there for it. So in general, it will focus on strategy, um, identity, plan of action, also to support in how to grow your local and national organization to develop the organizations in general. So what you know, but with some of the modules um, framed into an online part. The 10 weeks is, uh, is meant for having a continuous um, program, but where you are able to also um, work on some of the modules going a bit back to them and in general frame the academy together with the EDC team as we are announcing it. Besides that, well the mentoring is uh, kicking off very soon. Uh, there will definitely be more online trainings and uh, webinars in general. We also had some of the knowledge sharing sessions which were more or less the good ideas, the great stories that uh, Councillor Drazen hosted with past president uh, Lars Heislund. So as a new part here, we are introducing candidate training for um, EDC uh, councillors, for candidates to EDC councillor and for the chairperson as well. We do that in order to uh, prepare be people better for the position and to give um, actual 
uh, tools to to handle the position instead of just um, just uh, a framework that you need to fill out a different a kind of different questions and um, not being able to have any kind of real life interaction. So the candidate training is um, also taking part in the week with the European online conference and it will be Wednesday on the 17th. It's super important to say that this training is for people who already know they are candidates for the EDC for 2021. But if you have anyone in your national organizations that could be interested but haven't decided yet, then they are also welcome to join the candidate training. They are more than welcome because it also serves the purpose of introducing and clarifying for people if this is a position they want to go for. So they indeed are welcome and you are more than welcome to reach out to me in any way or to any of the counselors. So this was uh, in general the report for EDC on a short notice. Um, and therefore, first, I would like to see a motion to accept the report. That is moved by. And Lutz, now I need your help. If anyone wants to move this motion? JCI Czech Republic is moving this motion. You. Moved by JCI Czech Republic, seconded by Any seconder? Seconded by, by Sweden. Uh, I got a message here saying seconded by JCI Germany. Thank you so much. So, guys, now the floor is yours. Any discussions about the reports, anything you want? Uh, elaborated. All the councillors are here and ready to also answer. So anything, any discussion? Hearing none. So we are going to. Yeah. Uh, I raised my hand, but probably the hand raising is not in there anymore. Uh, thank you for your elaborate report, uh, Natasha. Um, one thing I would like to add, I see a lot of actions coming from the EDC. Is there also some sort of agenda you have with the upcoming events or actions you are doing online that we are uh, that we can share uh, with our members? Uh, because I've, I, I lose track sometimes. Yeah, it's really a good question. It is actually to, well, be very honest, transparency is always amazing one of the things we did discuss at one point by having um having a collaborated jci europe uh, when we offer the trainings and the sessions and so is that it's not necessarily then visible who is doing what and uh, at that point we decided well it's not important um at least we're trying to do that if it's the right decision well time will tell but in general, it will be promoted in the newsletters and on the Facebook page. Um, and if you're, if you're thinking about more specifically to just cover that part, um, the online regional growth and development academies, if they will take place uh, instead of the physical ones, then we will reach out to you directly as well um, via the national president's email. They will right. be promoted yes. as well, but yeah. But the sessions that the, all the teams are doing together, like the JCI Europe Live, that is uh, EDC um, coming up with that idea, some of the councillors, but it comes up in the discussions because we do so much together. So they are hosting it, but it could be that the idea was in general. Right. Maybe it's wise to, to, uh, to make an inventory of people that are responsible for the communication of those events in their countries. Um, I know that everything comes to the national president's email. Of, I think not everything, but a lot. Um, and and streamlining all that information to the proper channels is a day job at itself. So um, sometimes it might be easy to have the persons responsible in their countries to be able to distribute it directly to towards the members to our own channels. So 
Um, if we can help with that, that would be great. Thank you so much for uh, for that idea. That is really highly appreciated um, because that can sometimes be an issue that we are not targeting the right ones because there is so much to do as national president. Uh, we wrote down the idea and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much. So I tried to follow. There are some discussions in the chat. Um, I saw a question. Um, from Jason Poland, I would like to uh, uh, also add to what uh, Bas just said. I agree that we would need some more more clarity with regards to the information flow because you guys are doing a great job. Your trainings are very valuable, and I agree that it's sometimes difficult to follow and find uh, where actually to look for information and. Just to give you an example, I've seen that you have done a training on the 17th of May. I was looking for the video um, that was supposed to stay on the uh, JCI site on Facebook, but I couldn't get to that video anymore because it was not available. So if there was some sort of um, um, library of resources with links to those videos available only for members, if you don't want to keep it public, that would be very helpful. Maybe uh, you could also have a dedicated group for EDC trainings on Facebook where we could find this information easily without going through emails. Our members could join the group if they are interested. So it could help you streamline it without investing in a separate website. Maybe it's uh, something, it's a thing to consider. Just taking notes at the same time. Thank you so much. Um, just, just to clarify, the video you're mentioning, which video is that? Uh, I believe it was a good, good practices video um, with the DPs, um, as far as I remember. Is it the video created some years ago? No, no, it was last week or two weeks ago, 17th of May. Ah, yes, from the global session. Yes, I think so. And I couldn't find this video anymore. So it is just one of the examples that even if you do distribute the newsletter, because this was in the newsletter, then it's not available and we don't know how to find it and the content might be still relevant for the members. So maybe there's, there's some sort of links resources uh, on, on the JCICC website would be an idea and the other thing would be a Facebook group. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, well, just then just to come back to your questions, the video from the uh, 17th of May. Um, yeah, that's actually a really good question with the different channels because that was broadcasted from the JCI Facebook page. So the video should be there still. But however, we recorded the session and it is being um, clipped together because the session was really late. Um, so the 45 minutes of um, speaking and so in the beginning we will try to compromise it so we get the questions and the, the great speeches and so and that work is being done already i know um not by a, a european team but by one of the others and um i will just put a note on to just an example that. it's just yeah. more to show that we would uh, really uh, want to help you distribute the great content that you provide but then we don't know where to look for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for exactly that training, it, we really didn't give you much chances because it was uh, promoted so late and decided quite late. Um, for the training on the 17th of June, the candidate training. So um, the, the training is, well, in general for people interested. So no need for have announced being a candidate or being 100% clarified that you or any of your members are going to, to run. What we will focus on is um, discussion of, well, the portfolios, what is the responsibility of the EDC? Also, how does EDC and the vice presidents go along together? What are, where does it overlap and where are the differences? Because uh, that's personal opinion, but if we use, um, if you use what is, meant to be for the counselors and for the VPs. It goes along amazingly for great support for the national organizations, but too many times we are 
confusing each other probably and uh, about what what are the different roles and then it seems like that do we have two different roles doing a little bit of the same and that's not the intention so the responsibilities the content the collaboration in general between the vice presidents um, and the jci board and also the ebc and uh, going back to also discussing the portfolios and content and how to work remotely uh, and at this part if it's someone who has been uh, involved at the national level in your countries they would be used to working remotely uh, and not or and leading through others but still it can be a bit different at the international level did that clarify your question perfect thank you so much i see there is a question from estonia Yes, thank you, Natasha. I would just like to use this opportunity since you mentioned the upcoming online regional growth and development academies, if they should happen. And I can already foresee that when I go back to my members with this information, they have a lot of questions. Um, but right now, I only want to ask if it should take place online, is there a maximum limit of participants or this means there could be like more uh, more participants and there's not a high limit and the very honest answer is that's not clarified yet we discussed it last week with the edc team and that is one of the things that we will clarify and discuss more um, uh, towards the summer holiday when we also start seeing what about the travel restrictions and so so very honest it's not clarified yet okay thank you thank you um i also saw belgium am i right um the point was answered in the meantime so no further questions perfect thank you i see also marcus but you say similar point to you anna so it clarified your questions as well no not really no um, go ahead okay um JSA Europe has uh, lots of tools and over the past year communication improved with the national presence newsletter and so on. However, um, me and some other countries have the feeling that important points are being lost. Uh, just as a quick example, the uh, new revamp of the Step Up for Europe campaign uh, that was presented, but uh, there was like a tiny newsletter coming in German language. I mean, I speak German, but many others don't. Um, two weeks before, there was no mention in the WhatsApp chat of it, and some people missed it, um, the presentation of it, which is sad. So um, uh, it's like little things like this that make the communication a bit difficult. And also there's continuously the question of members, not only in my country, but in other countries, what can Europe do for us? Yes, so you do a lot, you have a lot of tools, you have a Zoom account. You have translations for several languages and so on. You have the tools, but many local organizations, national organizations, and members are not aware of it. I would even go so far to say the majority of people. So um, we came up with uh, solutions and um, it's, it's up to you. Maybe you can clarify if you have uh, more communication improvements in, in stock uh, or planned and um, if not, then um, maybe we could uh, suggest uh, to set up a committee to improve communication, maybe even make an online learning platform, or you hire a second person for this, because I think a lot of work falls at the moment on Manuela at the EDC, and uh, this is not really fair on her. So, um, But there is clear need for improving communication within the organization and also externally to stakeholders like local national organizations and members. Thank you so much, Marcus. Um, yeah, let, let me start with your first point about um, the newsletter versus WhatsApp versus, in general, the communication channels. Um, the, the super important thing to keep track of, in general, all the time, will be the national president's email. And that can seem a bit reverse because we do have the phones with the WhatsApp uh, open all the time and with us. Um, and but that's because that's where the the official communication goes to. Then we also use the WhatsApp for like quick messages and uh, reminders and so because um, in general knowledge sharing between each other, but also wanting to to help and just highlight. Please um, please remember to uh, to check out what is here. 
But what we actually do see, and we, we set up the newsletter um, so that every national president gets it at the national president's, uh, the national president's email, uh, the national organization's email. And uh, it's actually very often that the newsletters are not open. And uh, of course, that can be supported by also putting a message in WhatsApp or something. But I must also stress, it's super important to click into it. But there is a point to what both you and also Bas is highlighting. There is a lot of information going to the national president. So we do take this into account. Um, for the last part, well, uh, we should have had um, an additional employee and that is uh, really taking a long time and way longer than it should have. We, uh, I'm trying to remember when Magdalena ended her position here. It was just before the World Congress, so it was around November or something. And since then, there has been an open position. And as you also said, that is actually the position taking uh, care of a huge part of the communication which Manuela is doing at the moment. And uh, we are pushing to get that person hired so that we can get him or her on track and um, also take some of the tasks off the shoulders of uh, both Manuela and in general of the team, because that should be, um, that should be done by um, a part of it at least by the headquarter and of our, of our staff members, because it needs to be uh, continuous. And what about for the coming years? Um, what will it, uh, how will it happen at that time? So there is a new employee on its way. I don't have any more information on it on this point, um, but we can uh, definitely get it if uh, there is something additional to, uh, to um, support with that you want. Did I answer your questions, Marcus, or am I missing out on anything? Um, yeah, you answered them. Thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't really see now how this would improve the situation, just explain what was being done at the moment, but not um, uh, how this would improve uh, unless you hire a second person now and you manage to get that. Um, so. How about we set up maybe a committee to explore how to improve communication and how to improve the value communication, what Europe has to offer to members? Because uh, right now, um, yes, it goes to the national president's email and as a national president, I can relay it, but every year there's lots of information lost. So maybe if you make a poll of how many uh, national presidents knew that there is a Zoom account of say, Europe to use for us, uh, it would probably, I would suggest less than 50% of that knew that. So um, uh, this is communication not only the official part, yeah, that goes to the email, but for example, the Step Up for Europe campaign revamp was uh, just one invite to an online thing, but it was not an official email. This is the session about and so on. And this was also a German invite, please note. So uh, it was not communicated properly. And um, maybe we should find a solution for that. Or we accepted that it's like that, but uh, maybe uh, we should move a motion to set up a committee to explore how- Can I just clarify something? Can be improved. Can I just clarify something? It's uh, it's really highly appreciated that uh, you're working with us and pro uh, proposing things so we can improve. Um, there was a suggestion before about reaching out also to the ones in the countries who are responsible for communication and that we will uh, discuss in the team and how to do it and see if we can uh, if we can gather these emails and so. Um, so that is definitely a, an idea from from this session that we are, and from this uh, conference assembly that we are taking with us. Well, the Zoom account, this Zoom account is not a JCI Europe. You can use it until um, in the middle of June. The JCI Europe Zoom account is, um, it's not JCI Europe Zoom account, sorry. We have a click meeting account and we do have uh, a think, think, thinkific, I can never say that word, uh, account as well. The Zoom account we used at the global session in May that was bought for um, for the event uh, and paid and paid by uh, the four area councils uh, or will be paid by the four area councils and um, 
we have it for one month and then we will have to renew it if uh, we want to use it again. But for now we have it. So it's not JCI Europe, but we have it now. But your ideas we're going to work uh, further on with. And uh, it's definitely up to you if that is uh, clarifying the intentions or if you want to put a motion on the floor. Um, I think it would make more sense to put a motion on the floor and then see how many countries support it. Yeah, you are more than welcome to do that. What is the motion? Give me a second. <laughs> of course. Uh, we propose. Well, yep. Go ahead. Uh, we propose that JCI Europe creates a committee or task force with a goal to improve its value delivery and communication with the stakeholders, for example, local and national organizations and members. JCI Europe has great tools and initiatives that many stakeholders don't know about. The task force should work on improving communication of what JCI Europe has to offer, how stakeholders can benefit and explore setting up of a common knowledge sharing platform for European countries. I'll also post it in the chat. It's okay with yeah, you? I was about to ask you about that. Perfect. Okay, it's posted in chat. Perfect. There is a motion on the floor. It needs a seconder. Seconded by JCI Belgium. That was the first I saw. So, any discussions? JCI Belgium, do you have something to add here? Well, I think uh, Marcus put it um, really well, so I have nothing to add. I think it's it's worth exploring at least if we can um, improve our communication, at least internally, hopefully also externally. Um, so full support for this motion. Thank you, JCI Belgium. Uh, anything further for the discussion? I see Estonia. Uh, hi. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, it's not about supporting or being against this motion. I just want to raise the question maybe to everyone that since uh, several national presidents uh, presented their concerns and Natasha took everything into account, made notes and uh, presented how some changes are made. I just want to share is another task force needed or this is something that we can um, fix together with the EDC, together with Natasha, because I personally don't have a feeling that the EDC is not taking our comments into account. So I'm, I'm rather just commenting or raising a question is another task force needed for this. Thank you. Thank you, Kesia. Estonia? Any further discussion? Just to clarify, the... sorry, this is the Netherlands. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Bas. Just to clarify the motion, this is not strictly about EDC, it's about JCI Europe. And I'm, a, I'm a, a bit lost myself on the structure of JCI Europe at the moment. Do we have a marketing or communications committee at this point? No, uh, we don't. We, we have the impact, uh, the portfolio for impact and promotion, and then we normally would have uh, the staff member working intensely on communication. And then there's a proposal for the magazine committee, or is that not a proposal? Is it already been installed and is, on, is the only focus of that committee the magazine? Uh, yes, that is already been installed and it is uh, the focus, that is the magazine. So the proposal now is for an added committee or task force for the communication. Okay, I'm clear. Thanks. Thanks. 
I also see uh, Malta. Yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that the proposal for JCI Europe is not for the EDC alone. So it's for JCI Europe in general um, to improve the communication both internally and externally and everything that has to do with it. So um, if it has to include with the magazine or work together with it, one thing, if it has to work with EDC, another thing, if it has to go with a directors, another thing. It's just to uh, explore how communication can be made more uniform, more efficient, and uh, communicate existing value better. So we don't add more value and nobody knows about it. So it's, it's just for JSA Europe in general, not only particularly to EDC. Thank you for that clarification. Um, then it is Luxembourg. Yes. Uh, um, if my, if my um, understanding is correct, it's not about mapping the existing uh, uh, communication tools, but it's just a matter of lacking of uh, resources. So my suggestion is um, probably we can take like a, train, uh, a trainee that could help you in the reshaping the communication. Um, just to clarify, is that um, an amendment to the proposed motion? No, it's not an amendment to the proposed motion. It's just to um, to uh, for the uh, for the national president to uh, open up the discussion. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I have uh, JCI Luxembourg on the list. I just uh, uh, said my, uh, excuse me, I should uh, raise down my hand. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, then I have EDC Councillor Manuela. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Natasha, and uh, thanks also for all the comments and the motion. Um, as this affects me, I wanted to add a few words as well um, regarding the committee and the communication. Um, this is well, what um, one idea was with the national president newsletter is um, that you national presidents are informed very well, but that also the ones in your board that are responsible for communication and of course also the deputies should be involved and should be subscribers of that newsletter and of course should read it. Um, right now we have about 80% opening rate. Um, of course there are mostly the um, national uh, email addresses but you can subscribe with your private ones as well um, to get that kind of information. Um, so this is the one of information that we like to provide to you um, in, in general, that you see what's going on on the Europe side. And we would be happy, and especially I would be happy if you share that further with your members, um, because I personally, I can't reach to your local organizations. So this is something um, that we on the European level would like to go down to, to you, to your members and to your local um, organizations. Um, what we can do, I mean, there was once the, the question for your communication officers. Um, I got a few from you me um, mentioned. Um, there is a plan to do some something else with those that I got announced. Um, that was also because of Corona that we had to change a little bit on uh, this, this first strategy that we had for communication. Um, but there's still the opportunity to have this one week of information um, provided by you and uh, I'm very happy to work closely with the communication officers um, and if they are the ones that provide it to the members it's also fantastic to do more with them and um, we can do of course also kind of a training um, with them um, but also here I, I need your support national president because I don't know who are the communication officers in your national organization to get this kind of information through to those that are spreading the information further in your um, national organization. So this is a point to add uh, to the motion um, and uh, the topics that were raised here. 
Um, what I can do so far, and just to let you know at the moment, um, I'm I'm part of the EDC, but I'm trying to do the um, to add also the information from Chase the Europe team, so that it's not only EDC information that you get through. Uh, sorry, Manuela. Thank you for that elaboration. I think your your point is quite perfectly clear, and and we know that you are a one man team at the moment in communication, and we cannot expect miracles for that. I think it's not a um, an attack on on your um, efforts that you're doing at this moment because we all appreciate those and we all appreciate the communication that's coming out of the newsletter at the moment. Um, I feel that Marcus's motion is more to do with a structured uh, communication uh, of all events and all uh, value assets that JSA Europe has to offer, and that we currently cannot offer to different target groups. Um, as you said, you, you're creating a, a newsletter specifically for national presidents and board members, um, and you're not reaching everyone yet. And I think this motion of Marcus also tries to implement uh, target groups like external stakeholders, sponsors, and uh, potential members into the communication as well. So in that light, I feel uh, uh, a committee that can help bring value to your communication uh, and also the EDC and further on JSA Europe would be would be an added value at this point in time. I couldn't Thank have you said so it much. Exactly what Bas said. <laughs> um, I will try to uh, control the list of speakers. So next on the list is Germany, then Cyprus, and then uh, then Netherlands is on my list. Anyone else? Just pop up your hand, and then I will. Uh, put it to the list. Yeah, thanks. The floor is yours. Yeah. Thanks, Natasha, for the explanation, and also thanks, Marcus, for the proposal of a motion. Um, maybe some ideas or some some things of from my side. We received the report from Kevin, and he also written down that we have a rethinking of the IT strategy for 2021. And um, basically, I think we have to work together also with a global IT strategy to work together. And I don't see that it's only a problem in Europe. And maybe we have to um, think about it, if that makes sense at the moment, to work on that uh, topic, or if we wait for the global um, IT strategy. So maybe um, Kevin can give some explanation. Is that only regarding the website, or maybe also regarding how we want to interact in the future together to see if already TCI is working on that, and we have only to wait a little bit more. Thanks. Thank you so much, TCI uh, Germany. Then it is TCI Cyprus. Cyprus. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I hear you. Go ahead. Hi. I, I believe that uh, what you are trying uh, to do, we are, uh, is that we also meet. Actually, everyone else say. A lot of um, what I wanted to express. So uh, I, I I believe that uh, the, uh, we must proceed to bring JCI uh, more uh, together. We have more like a, like a team Glo globally, not just. Uh, the Europe, not just the uh, that we must try to be more uh, together in this. I can express uh, uh, differently my opinion. I believe that uh, if uh, I have something that I don't uh, like, don't 
agree, then I will save. Thank you so much. Um, oh, sorry, did I interrupt you? No, no, no. Thank you so much. So uh, I have the Netherlands and then Belgium on my list. May I just uh, raise a point at this moment, which is that um, we're discussing the motion. And uh, if someone wants to add to the motion, then you need to amend the motion. But the brainstorming session, however, uh, it's really appreciated, but uh, that is not at this moment. So it's the motion we are discussing. Thank you so much. So first the Netherlands and then Belgium. I believe I made my point earlier, while it maybe was not allowed, um, I, I feel I added my point there and I hope that we can get to the voting because I feel we're topping up with ideas just as you mentioned now. Thank you. But I actually did have you on twice, so maybe that was my mistake. Sorry for that in that case. Um, I just need to clarify thus. Was that a motion to uh, uh, suspend the discussion and go directly to voting? No, I leave the, the comment. Uh, I leave the order of the meeting at this point to you. Uh, I just wanted to stress that I feel a lot of topping of ideas have been have been come have, have come up, and you mentioned that just now. So I, I feel that you are on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, JCI Belgium. Um, very similar comments. I uh, wanted to get back to the main motion. Uh, we are not discussing any ideas or, or I mean, there's already being a lot of work done on a platform, if I'm well informed. Um, but this is not about creating new ideas, creating new channels or new solutions. Um, yeah, that's something I wanted to add. Um, Thank you so much, JCI Belgium. Um, and then I see a question. Um, chat but that more actually addressed so at this moment i would ask uh, area director lutz to uh, just shortly elaborate on um what uh, exactly is the the plan to cover for this person that will be uh, hired um i think you can clarify that a bit more than i can i only know what Magdalena did. thank you yeah, sure. Um, so the main description is uh, public relations and advocacy manager. Um, so the main idea for that position is to um, exactly to do the communication part. Um, and thus, as everybody has mentioned before, Manuela is taking up that whole position and, and I'm covering up that as well on, on, on my end as much as I can. Um, so uh, that is the main main part, and then there are the additional campaigns. So uh, what Magdalena, for example, did um, was she was um, here. She was mainly focusing on uh, the Step Up for Europe campaign um, with the roadshow. Uh, so that was her main task. Uh, we will see, and we will hear more from the Step Up for Europe revamp task force later. What's what are the plans there? But uh, that will be a field for that person and uh, the european union uh, the european know-how transfer um that's also main that was also mainly supported um and organized by um magdalena or by that per uh, person and um, i also will do um during my jci europe headquarters report which we will hear in the second assembly i will um touch base on that again as well um and for the european know-how transfer i will give a brief update later in this assembly, in the first assembly as well, um, where I can elaborate more um, what are usually the task of that person, um, what the ideas are for now. And uh, we also have uh, an information there that I will share later um, with the unpaid intern um, that uh, reached out to us, um, is based in the Netherlands. Um, and we, Kevin and I, uh, that that evolved this week, uh, so it's very very fresh and uh, just just an announcement. Um, but I will have, um, uh, yeah, an interview with that person. His name is Dan. He's from Moldova, 
um, next uh, this week. No, next week, it's Saturday. Um, and uh, we'll see uh, how much we can onboard him as well. Um, also to cover these uh, topics that we that you have raised regarding the communications. Um, it will be an intern, of course, not a paid staff, um, not full time, um, but still it's help. And um, well, and, and, and he's volunteering for that position, so it, it, it will cost um, uh, anything from the budget, which of course is very, uh, very, very good. And, and I really encourage him um, and, and really shout out if he's watching, uh, shout out to him um, and thank him for, for offering this. And, and, and I'm really looking forward to working with him together. Um, so there, there, there are some updates. Um, I will touch base again on that um, later for the European Now transfer and uh, for the report in the second assembly for JCI Europe, um, the headquarters report. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, that clarification, Lutz. Um, I see Mark Smith, Vice President Mark Smith, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Just to clarify, I think, as EVP Marion said when she um, presented the update on the Europe Plan of Action, two key areas of focus was there on developing and improving communications and also knowledge sharing and transfer. So for me, this motion absolutely um, emphasises all those points. And of course, should um, the Conference Assembly approve this, this will also provide further development opportunities for our members to get involved. Thank you so much. I don't have anyone else on my list. Is that correct? If anyone else is asking to get the floor, then please raise your hand now. Or if for some extent it doesn't work, then just unmute yourself. Uh, I Estonia. Yes, sorry for one more question. Um, I just have a question if this motion would be approved and the task for force is created, then who would uh, oversee the the activities and the results of this task force? Uh, would it be something extra for Manuela or someone specifically from JCI Europe or how do you see who would who would oversee this? Thank you for that. Um, before we answer that question, let's just take the last one on the list as well. That is Tom from JCI Belgium. No. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just forgot to uh, lower my hands. That is absolutely okay. And we know the system is working. Good. So getting back to your question um, regarding um, who will oversee it? Well, that's a decision made by the General Assembly to have this task force uh, or committee. It's uh, it says yeah, committee slash task force. That's perfect. We know what we are going to do. Uh, and then the the board of directors, the the European team will foresee that the task force is being brought to life to make a call for people to it and. Um, We'll probably also assign someone to it because we do that with the other committees. You, at the European President's meeting, a committee for Step Up for Europe event was uh, was made, and uh, Treasurer Lauri was uh, assigned to that. So there always is the liaison between um, the JCI Europe team and the committee, and uh, that is one of the ideas that uh, EVP Marian brought into it this year to make sure there is a closer connect connection. So. Um, it, to answer your question, would it, would it be Manuela? That isn't decided, but of course we would look into um, where is the resources, who has uh, the time to uh, to do it at this moment, and um, and then we will, as a JCI Europe team, flash the board, foresee that things are uh, moving forward as decided on the General Assembly. Did it clarify your question? Oh, it did. Thank you. I see no more uh, raising their hands. And therefore, um, we would move to voting on the motion. So just before we move away the motion from the screen, because you're going to see the poll, I will just give you 
uh, a moment to read the motion again. So, um, dear national presidents, chief delegates, please read the motion um, tightly so that you know what we are voting on. Thank you. And then uh, Area Director Lutz will put up the poll. So if you go to the chat, you see there is a poll in the chat and uh, the question is there and then you can choose in favor, opposed or abstain. And it's absolutely important at this moment that only the national president or the chief delegate is voting. No one else, please. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome to vote. Helena, I see you said you went away. So we are voting on the motion on the screen. And you actually still see the motion on the screen. Sorry, that was my mistake. I thought it went away. OK, so you know what to do. The motion went away. Can you see the poll? No, that is that is exactly my uh, my comment. I don't see the poll anymore. It was there and then it went away. And then it went away. Lutz, I might need your help. Does anyone else have the issue? Um, because I still see people voting. Now on the other place, because of the comments, it went away. Okay, thank you. Got it. Cool. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Lutz, will you give me a heads up when everyone has voted and we have a result? Yes, we do. We have uh, 22 votes in so far. A uh, lot in favor. I'm opposed to abstain. Live updates on the polling. <laughs> so this is the really interesting part about the online conference assembly. We can do <laughs> online updates all the time. <laughs> 24 votes in. Five. We should have 33 votes in total. Please uh, remember there's also the option to abstain. If you want to abstain, please click it. So we know that you want to abstain. Seven votes in. We're still missing six. Okay, there's a countdown. It's set for the polling. It's uh, one and a half minutes left. We have 31 votes. So I'm still missing two votes. And there is uh, a really good point from EVP Marion in the chat. So, um, after you put in your vote, please click submit. Very good. EVP Marion, right on. We have 33 votes in. I will uh, close the poll. Thank you. And we have 26 votes in favor, three opposed, four abstain. So, guys, thank you so much. The motion carries.
And we will get back to you for um, putting together the task force. Thank you so much. We are looking forward to working together with you guys to improve this part that is immensely important for all of us. Thank you. So at this moment, I will go back to uh, the original item we we're discussing, which was uh, the report and um, accepting the report. Is there any more questions or comments for the report? Okay, hearing none. And so for this part, uh, what we're going to do is what we, uh, what we did before. So all of those who are opposed of ex accepting the report, um, please raise your hand. So if you do not approve my report, then click the hand sign. If you approve, don't do anything. And we will report time. Okay, when I'm scrolling down the list, I don't see any hand signs, which means uh, the report is approved. Thank you so much. So, now we are moving forward to agenda point C, amendments to the guidelines of the European Development Council. Um, here, Sorry, I am a bit too far in this. So sorry. We are going to the JCI EDC financial report. And may I just say as an introduction, um, we have changed um, by a decision by the General Assembly, we have changed so that the budget and the complete financial part more or less is handled in a consolidated budget at the EV assembly, which we are going to take place uh, at 2 p.m. this afternoon. But, however, there is still in the EDC guidelines um, an interim financial report. And uh, since it's not in the other constitution for the JCI Euro part, you're going to get a complete overview by uh, Treasurer uh, Lauri Valtonen. So, Lauri, the floor is yours. Thank you, Natasha. Let's see if I can get my video working. Yes. Okay, good afternoon from the western coast of Finland. It's sunny here and uh, almost uh, not, not snow at all. Almost everything has melted. But uh, I'm here to give you a brief overlook to the EDC financial status on 30th of April. And after that, a very, very brief overlook to JCI Europe consolidated uh interim financial report at the same date uh why it's very brief is that uh, what uh, marion and natasha both said that most of the actions planned for the spring have been postponed and therefore no no expenses or profits have realized to the to the situation please keep in mind that this is not a budget this is a interim report from the uh, 30th of April. Uh, we'll get back to the budget and the uh, financial statement of 2019, as Natasha said later this afternoon. Uh, about EDC, uh, we have received dues, and as you heard heard in the roll call of this uh, meeting, every national organization is financial, so that means everybody has paid their dues in full. So we're we're good with that. We have also received 9,800 euros of JCI Foundation grants for for developing the growth and development academies, which Natasha described earlier, uh, and that's the, that makes the total income of EDC at the moment 27,753 euros. Uh, on the expenses side, there are only 
officer expenses at this moment and uh, to go through them it's it's quite easy because there are mostly the expenses of EDC councillors participating in the EPM and that's quite about it and then there's finance expenses that's bank fees for the EDC account for the first three three months of the year so that leaves the profit at the moment for 20 2406 euros and you have to keep in mind that this is this is a uh, JCI dues now uh, JCI foundation dues and the, no JCI foundation grants and the actual dues from the national organization organizations and the uh, expenses have not realized yet and then why I said that the uh, JCI Europe consolidated financial report will be quite short is that Lutz can I thank you uh, as you can see here's the here's the consolidated budget oh no budget the report this on the general side is the JCI Europe Europe uh, report you can see that this 5,984 euros of allocated dues to JCI Europe and officer expenses 795 euros which is, which is uh, for assistant and myself to EPM and uh, then there's administrative costs for 419 euros it, it has uh, in it like uh, registration to German Verein register and uh, I have to mention that there's also 27 euros, if I remember correctly, for buying a JCI Europe stamp. So now we have a JCI Europe stamp. Uh, and then there's 30 euros for finance expenses. That means bank fees for the JCI Europe account. Uh, there's also budgeted differently the EU know-how transfer. Uh, no surprise there are no expenses or profits yet they will be realized in the in the autumn altogether jci europe consolidated budget is at the moment 28746 euros uh, surplus but you have to keep in mind that no no real expenses have yet realized uh, only certain cancellation at the moment is this ec so there will be some some savings with that but we can discuss them more at the agenda point on afternoon with the budget but uh, to keep it short and simple here's the short interim report for jci edc and the jci europe finances at the end of the april thank you Thank you, Laurie. So, is there any questions? There is. I have JCI Netherlands uh, on the list. Bas, go ahead. Yeah, just to clarify, I heard Laurie, uh, and thank you for your uh, elaborate report, Laurie. Uh, I heard you say that all uh, organizations paid their dues in full, and I see in the in your in your report that not everybody might have paid in full. Could you? Could you explain that? Because for the purpose of this call, everybody is financial because the deadline is the 31st of May, but has everybody paid in full or not? Thank you for this, this question. You have very sharp eyes. <laughs> that is true. This is, this is a situation from 30th of April. And at that moment, there was a gap for 32.50, uh, 32 euros, 50 cents that was, uh, charged by one national organization's bank for bank fees for the transfer of the dues so at that moment we hadn't received all the dues in full but i can assure you that that situation has been fixed and all the dues are paid in full thank you for this explanation great great news that we all paid in full Thank you so much uh, for the question and for the clarification. I don't see any more questions. Perfect. Confirmed. No further questions. So, um, 
Thank you, uh, JCIU Treasurer Lowry. For this moment, I would like to seek a motion to accept the report. Moved by. Is the first. Moved by Germany and seconded by. Seconded by JCI Scotland. Thank you so much. Um, so for the voting, all of those, same procedure, all of those who are opposed of accepting the report, please raise your hand. If you are in favor, don't do anything. I'm scrolling down the list and I don't see any opposed. The report is hereby accepted and we are rushing on to the next agenda item, which is amendments to the guidelines of the European Development Council. So we will move on to the proposed amendments to the EDC guidelines. I hope you've seen Sorry. Um Sorry, I have to interrupt. Um, I, I just texted you. Switzerland had their hand up after uh, for the motion to be opposed. Oh, so sorry. Just for clarification. Okay, perfect. One opposed, and and it doesn't change anything. It's still approved. But thank you for the clarification. That of course needs to be taken into consideration. Moving on with uh, the amendments. We are going to the proposed amendments to the EDC guidelines. And, uh, but before introducing the amendments, and they are really tied, uh, connected together, um, let me just refer to the needed quorum because it is a bit different for amending the EDC guidelines. You are going to look at chapter six if you want to follow the process. According to the EDC guidelines, chapter six, it's article 612 for amending the EDC guidelines, 50% of the national organizations need to be present. It's normally only 30 for the conference assembly, but for amending 50%, we are 50% that's covered. And for amending the guidelines, a majority of two thirds is needed. Good. Um, for, the, um, for the proposed amendment, we just uh, wrote well, basically an argumentation for all of it, because it goes along. As you see the procedure as it is now, the, if you remember from last year, there were two candidates, both present their plan of action. Then the candidate elected, will that will be the proposed plan of action. And that is the one that the national presidents are going to decide on. And after that is, approved with amendments, that's the final plan of action. Everything, ha everything happens within the same meeting, which means that the team that ends up being the final team has no chance of, um, of having a say on what should be the actual things that the EDC are going to work on. And uh, there, is, uh, there is some cons about that, of course. The procedure proposed here is so that there will be an interim final plan of action, which is now known as the final plan of action. And then at the following meeting, the European presidents meeting the following year, then the national presidents, which will be the deputy presidents the year before, they are going to vote on it and see if there's any amendments. There, they will also still have the chance to say if they think something is changed too much, so we don't follow what is um, the, the proposed uh, and approved on from the World Congress, then they can oppose. So that is uh, the reasoning behind it. And therefore, uh, at this moment, there is a proposed amendment which needs to be seconded. Do I have a seconder for the amendment? The first proposal. The ACI Estonia. So what we are voting on here is uh, article 323 and just putting in the word interim. So we get interim final plan of action. Any discussion?
seeing none. So at this moment, we will put up a poll again, so we can uh, clarify if we have um, two thirds. And for the first one, amendment to the guidelines of the European Development Council. If you are in favor, please put in A, opposed, B, C, abstain. And it is important that everybody votes and only the national presidents. Looking at yes. 19, 20 yes. votes in. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-six, uh, twenty-eight, and thirty-one. This is looking good. And thirty-two, one more, thirty-three, and we can close the poll. Poll results. Share. We have 32 in favor and two abstentions. Perfect. Thank you so much. Then we are closing the poll for this one. So, moving on very fast, the second and the third proposal are uh, covering the same. It's putting in interim. So for the second proposal, we will also get the poll up here. And as soon as it's ready, you can vote. For proposal number two. Okay, and here's your favorite live commentator again. We have 14, 16, 18 votes in, 20, moving fast. We're getting better in this. Technology is a beautiful thing of the 21st century. <laughs> Sitting all across Europe, we are casting votes. Uh, 24 votes in, 25, 26. <clears throat> 28, 5 left, 29, 30, 3 votes remaining, 30 votes. We are still looking for three more. Please remember to click submit. Still 30 votes. Three more. Please check if you have voted and if you have clicked submit for your vote. 31, two votes left. So 31, two more. Please check if you have voted for the poll and click submit. Still 31 votes. Uh, please check your polls. Two are missing. Again, the poll is open for a total of five minutes. Um, I think the procedure would be 
that we count the votes as abstentions. Two minutes left, two votes are missing. Please, all national presidents, check your polls and please go through if you click submit and uh, if you did the vote for the second proposal for the amendments to the EEC guidelines. What proposal number two and three, yes, and more or less also four, is basically just uh, ratifying the first one. Um, we had a very short discussion about it when making them, and just to be sure that there wasn't any different opinions, we put them in different motions. But just to be sure, it is ratifying. Good. I think at this moment, we will count the last as abstentions. And what is the conclusion uh, for the poll? That means that we have 29 votes in favor and four abstentions. Perfect. Thank you. Can you clear the poll for the third question, which is also um, oh, for the last, which is also putting in. Um, well, a new article on 3.3, which says, and that is where we put in the part with EPM, the interim uh, action with any amendments shall be subject to the approval of the national president's meeting at the European president's meeting in the acting year. Are we ready with the poll, Lutz? Proposal number three. <coughs> you can vote. Thank you. Twenty-five in. All in favor, twenty-six, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-two. One to go. Thirty-two. <laughs> and we are only on forty-seven seconds. We have thirty-two in favor and zero opposed, zero abstain. There is one still remaining. Maybe we give him or her just a little moment. Okay, we will close the pool in five seconds. The motion carries. We already know that. Perfect. Yes. Let's close the pool and be ready for the fourth. The fourth proposal is, um, yep. is changing the wordings, so we follow the line, which is the approved plan of action and what is the final plan of action. We are ready with the poll and we will limit the time for voting to one minute and 15 seconds. Fifteen votes in, sixteen. Twenty, twenty-one. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. We are one minute into the voting. There are 30 seconds left. Twenty-six. 
27 votes in. And we have one minute 30, so we will close. Uh, there are 29 votes in favor, so we have four abstentions. Perfect. Thank you so much. And so um, all four motion carries. Thank you for that. Before moving on for agenda point C, the call for candidates, uh, I just got a message from uh, NP Andre from uh, Switzerland. And um, just to clarify, it was just a mix up with the hand signs and so. So we have everyone in favor for the report by the, fin the financial report. Best of luck for, uh, so sorry, I'm mixing up. Let's quickly move on to the call for candidates. We do need um, an EDC team for 2021. They are going to be elected at the National President's meeting at the World Congress. So at this time, I would like to hear if there is anyone announcing uh, candidates for the European Development Council 2021. I have Czech Republic on the list. Hello, uh, this is um, Mirek Riz from JCH Republic. Uh, I would like to announce uh, Jana Havlíčková as the candidate for EDC chair for next year. Thank you so much, uh, NP from Czech Republic. Well, as you uh, already was uh, informed, uh, there will be the chance for a short speech, but we will first, for the candidates, we will first see if there is anyone else. At this moment, it will be the EDC chair candidates. We have JCI Belgium. Yes, we do have a candidate for EDC. Uh, it will be Laurent Schurman. Yes. Do you at this point know anything about which position? Or... Not yet. Perfect. Thank you so much. I don't have anyone else on the list. So at ah, there is one more. Uh, JCI Bulgaria, Elitza. Hi guys, uh, JCI Bulgaria is also interested in a position in the EDC, but at this point we won't announce particular name and particular position. Thank you. Thank you so much, JCI Bulgaria. Anyone else? Hello, um, from Romania. Um, Romania? But somebody, nobody sees it. We have also a candidate, it's called, she is Alexandra Botos, but not for a specific position. Thank you so much. JCI Romania, anyone else? Uh, yes. Hello. Who is? Thank you so much, JCI Russia. Anyone else? Just raise your hand and then uh, Lutz will make a remark. Belgium, you still have your hand uh, raised and all are gone. So at this point, I would like to give the floor to um, the one person we have as EDC chair candidate at this moment, uh, Jana Havlikova from JCI Czech Republic. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, and hello, everybody. I'll be very brief. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk to you today. I have been as the EDC uh, counselor for a few months and I've had the opportunity of, to observe how Team Europe, how EDC, how the VPs have been working. And uh, it kind of inspired me to contribute a little bit more to what is happening in Europe. Given the past challenges with the change in staff and given the present challenges uh, that we have due to coronavirus epidemic, I believe that what we need to focus right now 
apart from you know providing added values to our members and promoting all four areas of opportunity is one thing that has been mentioned but i don't think it has been given enough uh, attention and that is continuity and this is something that i would like to focus on and this is something that i would like to promote and something that i would like to support just to make sure that we continue running as jci europe and as edc smoothly that we do not reinvent the wheel and that we take uh, the lessons that we learned last year that we are learning this year and we make the most of them in the years to come that being 2021 thank you very much for this opportunity i promise to keep it brief enjoy the rest of the assembly thank you so much uh is there any other candidates in the room Have gotten notified of anyone? I see not. Perfect. Got well. Best of luck for all the candidates. Um, please remember our new initiative where we introduce the candidates training for the EDC candidates. Please tell your candidates Wednesday, June seventeenth. We are looking forward to seeing them there. On this note, I will quickly move forward with agenda point E, which is reviewing the JCI Development Counselor for Europe job description and portfolios. Well, um, one of the things that we have been discussing um, in general for, uh, for the portfolios is what we already uh, spent quite some time about, um, the communication part especially because should it be a more broader position where it's covered, where it covers uh, the entire JCI Europe. So the portfolio for impact and promotion is one of those we have uh, discussed, should there be any adjustments to that. At this point, we are not proposing any changes to the job description and portfolios. And we are in the second year with the portfolios, but due to the situation, it's a bit difficult to um, actually see what is working and what is not working. And the things we realize, we adjust that on the fly um, within the scope that there already is. So at this moment, we don't have any changes. Is there any questions for that part? Seeing none, that was just a point of information. And by that said, I am giving the floor back to EVP Marian. Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Natasha. And I'd like to thank you again for your great work this year. And so far, it has been a pleasure working with you. So I'd like to thank you again and uh, praise you in, in public, so to say. After this point, uh, we have uh, scheduled a 10-minute recess for you to have uh, get something to drink. Um, so I'm seeking a motion for a 10-minute recess. Raise your hand if you want to move it. And Lutz, please let me know. Moved by JCI Monaco, seconded by Belgium. Uh, if you oppose to having a 10 minute recess, please raise your hand in the coming five seconds. The Netherlands, Bas? Yeah, quick point of order. We, we are amazingly running out of time. Um, is there something that, that you take action on that? Because I did a quick calculation of part two of this agenda and we still have two hours pretty much to go. Um, it's now a quarter to one. The meeting should last till one. Um, are we doing anything different now or are we just moving ahead just as the agenda says? My plan was to move ahead as the agenda says. Um, we could also do it differently. We have a, a one hour break in between the two um, meetings planned. Uh, we had a 10 minute break planned here. We could also do a one hour break now and not do the 60 minute break between the two assemblies. 
I would suggest that you take the 10 minute break and discuss also with the team what their wish is, because I don't feel that it is opportune to cut the, the break in between the meetings entirely, especially if we run late with the second part of the agenda as well. I don't see that we will finish before three or four with the second part of the agenda and then go straight into the next agenda. It, it will it will tire everybody out. We had the experience with our own GAs as well. Um, so maybe it's wise to discuss with the team if there are any points that that we need to take less time or, or, or put in differently in on this agenda, um, because this will take take whole afternoon. OK, um, I will discuss with the team if we have a 10 minute recess to see what we can speed up. Thank you. Have a 10 minute recess. OK, any yeah, we can other? Yes. Now, but yeah, we can have the 10 minute recess now. That's no no problem. But or 15, yeah. then take the time to come up with a solution for this this second part of the agenda. Yes, uh, Croatia. Hi. Yes, I, I think that we should that you guys should take into consideration of maybe shortening the big break that we have for one hour. I know it's not very wise to have it just be 10 minutes, but maybe we don't need a complete hour. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Other comments on this? No more comments. Then I hereby declare uh, that we have a 10 minute recess we, and we will be reconvening at 12.54 uh, uh, Central European time. See you in 10 minutes.
of the town Maybe at the cornerstone I know that I can't be without you This bond is solid gold We're a diamond and an emerald It took me forever to find you Cause when it's all over The love that you can smoke to clear and we watch our dreams appear i know that we can rise together this vision that we share is ours together we can touch the stars i know that we will see december because when it's all over the love that you give All right, uh, one more minute until recess is over. We have been discussing with the team uh, where we can uh, reduce things, so uh, we hope we can speed up the 
next part of the uh, the assembly. I hereby call the meeting back to order. And the next point on the agenda is the European President's meeting side election. We just did uh, the bid presentation will be uh, done by JCI Lithuania. No. Um, I cannot hear person. you yet. Sorry. Did you hear something? Hello. I can hear you. You can hear me. I do. I can hear you. Marianne, can you hear her as well? Go ahead. I think it was only me not hearing you. <laughs> okay. Um, so from the, from the beginning, dear president, uh, we are a uh, GSI Board of Directors, national presidents, uh, senators, um, members, and friends. Uh, we would like to announce Lithuanian's interest in hosting European President Meeting in 2022. Um, next slide, please. No, I could not. Okay. Um, beginning of the year, was in mind to do the European President meeting in Konas, but a few months ago we got the very good uh, possibility to cooperate with Vilnius City, so now we could choose from two towns. As you can see, both towns have beautiful castles, so both towns have beautiful history and interesting uh, things to see. Next slide, please. To uh, get to Lithuania. So in Lithuania, we have three airport, but one very small in Palanga and two in Vilnius, in Vilnius and Konas. Uh, you could reach uh, Lithuania within three hours if, uh, from any point from Europe. So it is easy to access. Also, you could come to us by car, bus, train. So it is easy. Next uh, slide, please. Destination Konas. Konas is the second city in Lithuania. It is not only a city of all traditions, but also a large center of business and industry. It is also a student town. Uh, it is famous by uh, street arts, green streets, uh, three lines, avenues, and uh, also by uh, modernistic architecture. Uh, next slide, please. Also, you would feel the um, culture power in 2022 because uh, Konas was chosen as the European capital of culture in 2022. So you feel the spirit of that too. Next slide, please. Uh, destination Vilnius. Vilnius, it is our Lithuanian capital and it is internationally recognized as one of the most knowledge intensive and innovative cities in and uh, record scientific and achievement in biotech laser in, and fintech sectors um, also maybe you probably don't know that uh, vilnius are the most uh, green greenness space in europe three times more green space than amsterdam berlin and warsaw Vilnius Old Town uh, is among the largest in Eastern and Central Europe, included in the UNESCO World Heritage. And also, we are happy that we have uh, the best connected city in uh, almost all Europe. Wi-Fi uh, is for free everywhere. Next slide. Um, Vilnius Airport is nearby the center, it's about 15 minutes by car. Um, it is a very compact uh, city and you could feel very safe and peaceful there. Next, please. So, where do we...
So, where do I start? It took just a two hour flight to Vilnius. The weather was fine. It was early in the morning and the city was still sleepy. But it was also very charming. Our conference was held in the very heart of the city, in the Radisson Blue Hotel Liatova. Precise attention to detail, great staff, punctuality. Time really has flown by. And then we saw the city itself. Vilnius has a huge old town area, one that is full of unique places, forests, and exciting people too. After some active time with my fellow colleagues, I really enjoyed my coffee in a local coffee house. Thanks. And oh yes, the local food. Altogether, this place really is quite astonishing, colorful, and very tasteful. But this gives you the energy to row a boat down the city's main river, the Neris. Oh, hey there. And to fly high in a huge hot air balloon. Every morning and every evening, the city skies are filled with these hot air balloons. And our group took a ride in one of them. Incredible. And yep, these people really know how to enjoy life. From luxurious bars and crowded pubs to massive industrial parties. It's really nice to be back at the Radisson Blue Hotel Liatova, being able to enjoy cocktails made by the best bartender in Lithuania. Cheers. It's an ideal place to stay, in the middle of this vortex of events. So that's it for now. I'm really looking forward to being back here again. seeing uh, some kind of information about uh, Radisson Blue Hotel, but it's also uh, look, um, was showing uh, Vilnius town. It is very beautiful. So um, because we do not have had the site visit, I am representing uh, venue options too. So we could choose Radisson um, Blue Hotel. It is a four-star hotel and it is 456 rooms, 17 uh, meeting halls, other option it is, next slide please. <clears throat> yes, Best Western Vilnius, it's also a four star hotel, 114 rooms, seven meeting halls, it's also in the old town on the city. Uh, next slide please. And one more option in Konas. It is um, a nearby old town and uh, 200 rooms, seven meeting halls. So in Lithuania, we have a lot of opportunities where to do the um, uh, European present meeting, just we have to choose. And next slide, please. At the moment, we uh, have partnership with uh, Vilnius and Konas municipality and uh, Bo Vilnius and Kona's 2022 temporary capital. So we already uh, have some kind of note from them and we are talking. Uh, next slide, slide, please. And regarding the prices, uh, until the 2021 May end, it will be double room price uh, 325, single room 365 and um, until November end, it is 365, single room 405, and uh, on the side, it's much, a little bit bigger. So, includes in the price accommodation, breakfast, lunches, dinner, fireware, dinner, coffee breaks, all session visit, networking party, traditional night out. So, everything is included in the price. Um, Next time and see you in Lithuania in 2002. I would like to invite you to come here. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Lithuania. Um, I just uh, wanted to say that normally we have the site uh, selection, uh, we have the site inspection done before the elections. Uh, so far, we haven't been able to do a site inspection. Therefore, uh, we propose that we move the election of uh, the uh, EPM site for 2022 to the next national president's meeting, which will be at World Congress. Um, for that, we need a motion. Um, so the chair seeks a motion to postpone the election of the EPM site to the MPM at World Congress. Moved by Rick. 
sorry, quick point of order. Are we just moving the site selection and are we electing JSA Lithuania to host the EPM? Or are we moving the whole election to? Uh, there's, a, there's a site inspection that needs to be done before the election. Yeah, but the, we can elect the site and we can elect the country that it's hosting. Just the site selection here. That's the same thing. The site is the national the national organization organizing it in their location. Okay, so we're leaving Jesha Lithuania in in suspense till uh, November. Yes, officially yes. There is no other candidate, uh, but we have to do a site inspection before we can do a site inspection report and do the election officially. I see the motion was moved by JCI Ireland and seconded by JCI UK. Any discussions? Questions? We will do this uh, voting by poll, if I'm correct, Lutz. Belgium has a question. By Belgium. Yes, Belgium, Tom. Yeah, um, seems kind of late to have the election if, um, if I'm not mistaken, EPM is held beginning of February, more or less every year. So that means they will only be elected about three months before the actual event. That's even three months. Okay. It's the 2022 that we're talking about. Okay. Never mind. Then. Uh... Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, then Lutz can bring up the poll for the motion to postpone the site inspection report and election of the 2022 EPM bid to the. World Congress National Presidents Meeting in Yokohama. Yes, and I would suggest that we keep limiting the polls to one minute. One minute should be enough for everyone to vote to keep yes. things <laughs> short and smooth. Uh, we yes. have 30 seconds left. We have 20 votes in, 21. Good. Uh, and more votes coming in, 27 votes in. <clears throat> Five seconds left, 28 votes in. One minute, and we have 20 vo 24 votes in favor. That means that we have uh, six, seven, eight, nine, nine votes as abstentions. Great, thank you, Lutz. That means that the motion carries. Moving on to the next point on the agenda, which is the 2022 JCI European Conference side election. I'd like to uh, remind everyone at this point, as we are running out of time, uh, to please stick to the time that is allocated to you. If you can, please uh, make it shorter and uh, to only touch on the highlights. And uh, we are trying to keep things at, up to speed. Um, then bid certification committee reports will be presented by Kevin Hinn. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. May I have a floor? Is it okay, Matt? Yes, Perfect. please Thank have you. a floor. Good afternoon. I'm just going to be very short and sweet with this since we're out of time. Um, yes, so the bid certification committee was organized um, in April in line with uh, policy 19.1 section D, which was appointed by the JCI president. The aim of this was to ensure that um, the minimum quality standards were 
met for the bid which we received at the end of last year from JCI Belgium for the city of Bruges to host the uh, 2022 European Conference. The committee met at the end of April 2020. Uh, it was chaired by General Legal Counsel Omar Widrogo. Uh, 2000 national, 2019 National President of JCI France, Stéphanie Coupé. Um, uh, the events team, events manager for Europe, Mariana Arce, and myself as Secretary General. Uh, so I'm going to represent the findings of the team. The report which we sent was based on several elements, notably the bid book which we received, the budget, the financial information, and the report from the site inspection, which was um, done by Events Director Leanne and Area Director Lutz in early February. And I'd like to thank JCI Belgium for their warm welcome in hosting them on that during that meeting. Now, um, the aim of this report is not just to just check the minimum standards. What we're doing at JCI headquarters in the events team is now to provide proper accompaniment and advice to COCs in order to maintain high quality standards and consistency from one year to another. So um, right now we are hosting meetings every month with all the bidding teams and also all the conference organizing committees who have been elected. So the information provided in this report was in line with it. We really pinpointed some uh, very precise points which we believe could have been improved. However, I would like to really commend JCI Belgium and the two NAT local organizations who are bidding for this uh, conference for the incredibly high quality of a bid book, the great studies, uh, the great analysis done, uh, the proper thought process that went into it. Some of the points which we raised in the report were actually addressed. I had to. I had a talk last week with one of the senior advisors of the COC, and they did mention that some of these issues had been addressed with a lower break-even level as well. So, so that expectations are in line with reality. And um, Bruges is uh, definitely a very attractive destination for members from all around Europe and all around the world as well. So I'm very happy to say that in the opinion of a bid certification committee, the bid by JCI Belgium uh, EC 2022 certainly meet all the uh, minimum requirements required and we're happy to support this bid. Thank you very much. Thank you, Val. And I look forward to the presentation. Good luck, everyone. Thank you very much, Ashi, Kevin, Hin. And next point is the bid presentation by Jonas Maas from JCI Bruges. Hello from Belgium, hello from uh, Bruges and Houtland. Normally Lutz will start the presentation um, with the movie.
President Itai, dear Executive Vice President Marion, dear fellow national presidents, dear JCI friends. I'm Tom, the national president for JCI Belgium this year, you know, the country with the finest chocolates and the best beers. Today, I am proud to be able to present to you the team and the plans that I have for a fantastic European conference in 2022 in Bruges. So please listen carefully to Jonas and his team who will be presenting their plans. Inspiring young people to create a bright food future that is good for the planet and themselves. That is why our ambition is to make EC Bruges the first zero waste JCI conference. Good morning all, my name is Jonas Maas and I've got the honor to lead the fantastic team which is bidding to host the European conference in June 2022 in Bruges. The team consists of members of JCI Houtland and JCI Bruges supported by Belgium. The long-standing friendship between our two organizations is the basis of this project. We are confident our 60 members can pull this trick. There's enough experience in organizing large-scale projects, of national and regional conferences. The European conference is just our next big challenge ahead. We believe this will benefit our membership growth. We know COVID-19 will have an impact, but what this crisis will have as an effect on the organization on our conference is yet uncertain. Not enough data is available to present an updated plan, but in the upcoming months, we'll work together with JCI headquarters to present an updated plan as soon as possible. At EC Bruges, we believe food is necessity for life. It brings joy and taste, it gives energy, and perhaps above all, it brings people together. The conference we want to organize is the culmination point of a trajectory of many events and touch points. With loads of stakeholders within JCI and outside, we are looking to look for the food industry for cooperation. With our team, Food for Generations, we want to inspire young people, as said, for a bright future for food for generations to come. <clears throat> This has been translated into four pillars. Sustainable food production, nutrition, gastronomy, and heritage. We target five JCI personas for the conference to attend. The first timer, the official, the cultural addict, the active citizen, and the senator. And guided by the journey of these five personas through the conference, we will show the possibilities of hosting the conference in Bruges. Where to sleep in Bruges, what the opening night and the gala night will look like, how we will link all of this to food, and what it will cost to attend in the end. As 10 minutes is too short to present all the journey of all the five personas, we will focus on Sophie. She's a cultural addict from Finland. You will meet Mirko, Karl, Mike, and Marie, the first timer, later on. Enjoy the presentation and hope to see you in Bruges in 2022. Cheers! We portrait Sophie as a happy single who joined JCI Helsinki five years ago. She has the ambition to be president of her local chapter next year. Her interests are cultural and local community based. She has joined several projects focusing on these topics. Isa Bruges will be her third international JCI conference to attend. She is a freelance journalist, like languages and speaks quite a few. Her spare time she, she likes to spend with friends. Also, she loves to travel, immerse in different cultures, visit museums, and let the atmosphere soak in. Going to Bruges is easy for her. She will fly in with Finnair to Brussels and take one of the trains straight to Bruges. As everything in Belgium is so close, Sophie decides to make a stopover in Ghent with a friend of hers, Senator Mike from London. The Mystic Lamp in Ghent is a must-see. Leaving Ghent on Wednesday morning, Sophie and Mike jump on the train for half an hour to arrive in Bruges. We will organize company visits on Wednesday already, and Sophie chose to visit Fribona, a frozen food company with a low ecological footprint. The company visit only takes the morning. In the afternoon, she attends the training JCI Discovery. After her training, she makes a quick stop at her hotel to prepare the opening ceremony. Some Finnish flags painted on her cheeks look great. Sophie chose to stay with her delegation in the standard hotel, 
right at the convention center. The Senatris Hotel Kasselberg is further downtown. Same goes for the HQ Hotel the Crown Plaza, who are slightly more expensive. The hostel for first timer Marie is 150 meters from the convention center. The opening ceremony is in the concert hall, so it only takes her two minutes to walk. At the opening ceremony, she meets up with some old friends. No hangover for Sophie. So Thursday morning, Sophie gets up at 6 a.m. to visit the Bruges fish auction, where the freshly caught fish is traded. This is an exclusive visit that is definitely worth it. It's going to be all about gastronomy and taste today. Fishermen and smelly fish. Sophie needs some perfume after the visit, but that's how fresh the sea smells. She hurries back to the bus, which takes her straight to Jules de Strober. In this family business, they make delicious cookies. Thursday is the conference business day. The CUC has teamed up with local business clubs, the Hanse, Volca and Uniso, to organize numerous keynotes, workshops and panel discussions. This day will be led by entrepreneurs and will be linked to our four pillars in the team Food for Generations. Given Sophie's love for food, she will be present to learn more. A new conference building is under construction in Bruges, which will be ready in the spring of 2021. Here, the trainings, keynotes and business day will continue. Also, every afternoon lunch and trade show will take place here. The new conference building is ideal for the business day. There's a theater room for 500 people and 10 breakout rooms. At 4 p.m., Sophie takes part in a guided city walk in beautiful Bruges. In June, it can easily be 25 degrees. So, Sophie enjoys the lovely warm weather. The tour ends in the Café Brugsbeertje, where there is a selection of no less than 300 different beers. Here she meets Karl from JCI Germany. In the evening, a national night is organized in the Entrepot, a well-known party hall and Bruges. You can go here very smoothly on foot. That it only takes 30 minutes. But you can also go by bike or you can take one on the scheduled buses. Our Sophie is an early bird. So on Friday, she registered for the morning run with many other JCI members, where she met one of our other personas, the national president. JCI stands for learning by doing, which also applies to Sophie. Today, she takes part in the debating contest together with some Finnish friends. After this nice experience, but unfortunately no victory, Sophie enjoys a quick healthy lunch in the new conference building and can still register to join a chocolate tour this afternoon. Followed by a visit to the famous Grutuse Museum with numerous well-known works of art, all museums in Bruges and the buildings we will use during the conference are accessible for people with limited mobility. At 6 p.m., Sophie joins the reception of the Finnish delegation in a beautiful location in the center of Bruges. There are many hidden locations here that you really must see. The Finnish delegation then departs by foot for the national night in La Brigeoise. This location Allocated 10 minutes for this presentation. We are now 10 minutes into the video. Um, of course, we can show the remaining five minutes, but I would recommend that we put it in the folder and that people can uh, view it in full. Um, if anyone opposes to that, please uh, raise your hands. Then we can still show it in full if people want to see it. But otherwise, I'd say we go to the, the questions, if any. All right, any questions then? I see no objections to put the video in the folder. I must say, I really love the video and the customer journey you're making, and it really shows the value of the conference and not just the beautiful city that it is in. So I appreciate that. Any questions from anyone? I don't see any, does the COC? Have any comments, anything to add? I don't see any questions. Yeah, 
Jonas. Yes, 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 we are present. Good morning. Good afternoon by, by now. Good afternoon. I didn't see any questions for you, but maybe you have anything that we should know that maybe was at the end of the video because we will put it in the folder as we exceeded our time. Um, th there was um, very much information at the end of the video. Uh, there's a presentation of the plan of communication uh, on our contacts with sponsors and, uh, and stuff like that. There's a pricing calculation uh, and a presentation of our country managers. Um, perhaps good to, to, to give along, of course, um, put the presentation in the folder and uh, I'll provide a YouTube link through our country managers. Our country managers normally have emailed in the uh, week before this, um, all the national presidents for an introduction. So if there are any questions, please channel them through our country managers. There are seven appointed uh, for, at, at that moment. Um, and we'll, we'll provide a written answer or a spoken answer uh, for everyone. Um, because actually we are quite confident on, on all sides um, that we can, how do you say, provide uh, good answers, uh, as well as on the financial part, of course. Um, we have been in new calculations, which is, we know, very important. Um, and I know questions will arise about that, about that. perhaps too long for, to do this now. But if there are any questions, guys, we are open and prepared. Thank you, Jona. So if any questions, uh, you can send them to them and more information you can, will be able to see in the video. The finances, I guess Joanna wants to know the prices. Uh, the pricing is aligned with the conference in Dublin. Yeah. So we um, foresee to uh, start selling Tickets, of course, in Rostock. Very looking forward to that conference um, at a very, very early bird, which ends at the end of that conference. And then it starts from uh, 425 euros in the early bird. All right, thank you. Um, I think this one was important to take before we do the actual voting. Um, if there are no more questions, and so far I see none, then uh, the voting with we have only one candidate is done by acclamation, which means that uh, I, uh, we again will be only raising hands if you object to selecting um, Jesha Bruges as the location for the 2022 Jesha European Conference site. So I seek a motion to elect Jesha Bruges. Or Bruges as the site for the 2022 uh, JCI European Conference, moved by Belgium, seconded by Monaco. If there are any objections, raise your hand. If not, please do not raise your hand. <laughs> Seeing none, congratulations, Bruges. <laughs> round of applause. Thank you very much for your confidence. Uh, as you can see, the team behind us is, um, is very happy. Hope to see you all in Bruges. We are really looking forward. And good luck with all the, uh, the upcoming um, events. Cheers. Thank you, Jonas. And good luck with the organizing. Then move to the next point, which is the Vice President reports. And here is where we are going to do a little bit of time saving. The reports have been shared beforehand. Um, if there are any questions for each of the vice presidents, you have the chance to ask them. So we will go through the vice presidents one by one. If you have a question for that vice president, please let me know. I hear some noise. I think oh, Tom is not muted. You had a question, Tom, or? Yes. No, no questions. Sorry. OK, good. Um, so, any questions to Vice President Paolo? Can I see his picture on the screen a bit, at least? Or... No questions for Paolo. All right, thank you. Then Vice President Anna is next. Any questions for Vice President Anna?
seeing none, then the next one is Yeni. Any questions for Yeni's very elaborate report? Seeing none. Next is VP Ellie. Any questions for VP Ellie? Seeing none. And the last one is VP Mark. Any questions for VP Mark? Seeing none. Then um, I'd like to seek a motion to accept the vice president's reports that have been shared beforehand. Um, anyone moving the motion to accept the vice president's report? Reports moved by JCI Switzerland, seconded by Croatia. Any opposed to accepting the reports, raise your hands. If not, please do nothing. Seeing none, then I hereby declare the VP reports as accepted. The Vice Presidents, I thank you very much for the hard work you've been putting in the reports. Uh, we are saving time here not to uh, show them, but they are really worth going through. So I encourage you all national presidents to look at the reports and see the great work that your vice presidents are doing. And this is also for our successors to see what has been done this year. So it's not only uh, to be put in the drawer. Thank you very much, vice presidents. Then we move to point 15, the World Headquarters Report, and I'd like to give the word to the Secretary General, Kevin Hinn. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, thank you. Uh, Lutz for that and... Um... Oh, okay, so I can take control apparently, brilliant. Let's see how this works. Um, right, so. Okay, uh, okay, great. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. First of all, I'd like to say a big, big thank you to all the national presidents uh, for being here on a Saturday and also for uh, uh, to all the hard work despite the difficult circumstances. We would have all much preferred to have been in Dublin right now, starting to get ready for the gala in the sunshine, but um, this is how things are. And I'm very proud of the way that JCI Europe has adapted to these changing circumstances and to these different um, these different uh, conditions. Um, now, my, the whole point of this report is to quickly outline what our global strategy is. I only have 10 minutes, so which is why I sent to you 48 hours ago via Lutz, and, uh, which was put on the drive, a very a more detailed report of the activities of JCI headquarters. As you have seen, and as I presented at the European Presidents' Meeting, uh, JCI headquarters is now organised in departments with names that reflect the actions of the departments, such as growth and development, skills, de skills development, um, events and uh, partnerships, and uh, you've got a full uh, breakdown of exactly what we've done then. So I'm not going to go into any details in here. I'm just going to say a few words. Uh, the detailed report was, is on the drive and it was sent, it was posted by Lutz 48 hours ago, Baz. Uh, yes, so um, I'm just going to say a few words about our global strategy right now. As I told you before, it's all about focusing once again on our members who are our number one customers and providing development opportunities to enterprising young leaders. Note, note how I don't use active citizens that much because it's much easier to explain in an elevator pitch what an enterprising young leader is because we are indeed a leadership organization, not a charity or humanitarian organization. So our actions so far have been to implement the new tagline, developing leaders for a changing world and working on how we can co provide concrete value, added value to our members 
to encourage retention and recruitment. Because let's be clear, if we do not recruit and if we do not retain our membership base, by valuing our members, we will not survive as an organisation. We decided to go back to basics by amplifying members' leadership skills, thanks to the four areas of opportunity, which are our unique selling points, uh, individual business, community development and international collaboration. And this is how I really encourage all your actions to be based on uh, these four areas of opportunity. So if you're too widely skewed towards business entrepreneurship and networking and training, try to have more of an international uh, slant and community slant as well. Same, if you're only doing community projects, try to move towards the middle to the little square, which is here, where we are, which is the sweet spot and which is our unique competitive advantage. Now, during this crisis, we haven't changed our strategy. We've actually been using it to transform these challenges into opportunities using online trainings, events and other action. Accelerating transformation is exactly in line with our global strategic plan until 2023. The next slide, which is my last actually, is going to be about what we have been doing um, in the light of this crisis worldwide. So I had lots of questions at the beginning in March about why JCI had not done a global fundraising campaign or an Operation Hope. Well, we saw with Australia in um, the bushfires at the beginning of the year, but instead of mobilising tons of energy and resources, and uh, doing a global campaign for Operation Hope for Australia, it was much more simple for JCI Australia to partner with a local charity, well, with a Red Cross and with a wildlife charity, to be able to have direct impact. But $50,000 were raised in 48 hours, and that money was within one week in Australia, helping the firefighters. If we did it, realistically, it would take uh, six weeks to be on the ground, and that's not the point. Also, we're not the Red Cross. We, don't, we are not ex equipped to do this. This is why the Executive Committee took a conscious decision not to do it. However, we are, however, doing what uh, JCI headquarters and JCI globally is supposed to do, highlighting the actions of the members on the ground who create impact every day, because we are a bottoms up membership driven organization and not a top down organization. This is why uh, we've been highlighting projects such as JCI Switzerland uh, uh, project on local consumption, which uh, and supporting local businesses. We've been highlighting the actions done by JCI Niche and JCI Constanza in Romania and Serbia to help sustain, uh, save lives at the beginning. And uh, same with projects all around the world from JCI Hong Kong to support local businesses. And this is an, actually an opportunity for us to transform our challenges, these challenges into opportunities and effect a proper pivot in the actions of JCI how we can for what we need to focus on now is fighting the economic crisis and the depression by showcasing the economic relevance of JCI and its members by pushing projects that sustain and rebuild local economies because it's the businesses on the ground who are suffering the most from the pandemic and if we do not revive them and support them communities will die so I would really encourage you to fight to look at projects in that direction, how to fight youth unemployment by promoting professional reconversion and developing entrepreneurship skills. At a global level, we're working on projects to that effect, like a new global entrepreneur training program, which will hopefully be, be implemented at the end of the year. And we really encourage you to show creativity. For those of you who like the SDGs, it's SDG 8. So you can use that as a great marketing tool to support us. OK, so. Um, as I mentioned, the other strategic areas are covered in detail per department in my written report to save times. So if you have any questions on these points, I'll be reachable by mail or I can we can organize a call or something like that if it's really important. And I'll be happy to explain things in a transparent manner in the way that we are trying to use JCI headquarters that JCI headquarters is proceeding in with full accountability and transparency at all times. And uh, I just want to touch on the point raised by Sandra earlier regarding the IT strategy and the IT platform. This is something we can discuss further. Um, I have taken note of the 
question and uh, I also took note that a committee has been has been uh, is going to be created so I will uh, wait for the committee once it's been set up we will reach out and uh, start working in liaison we're also planning to discuss with the digital transformation committee on user journeys and user personas as well in the future so this is where we're going to have membership input uh, I hope that uh, this was clear sorry for being so brief but in 10 minutes I can't I'd need a whole hour to explain what we've been doing and I would like to take this opportunity to thank my wonderful team at JCI headquarters around the world I know that uh, Nick has been helping with a live stream uh, this morning uh, executive director Roberto is watching as well and a big big thanks to Lutz for his excellent work uh, he's really taken on the challenge and I'm really proud of the work that he's done so far and uh, Lutz is a huge asset both to our team and the uh, document yes I yes Baz it is the five page written document and I think it is sufficiently detailed but if you have questions let me know thank you Thank you, SG Kevin, for your report. Any other questions for Kevin? Bas? Yes. Hi, Kevin. Thank you very much for your elaborate presentation right now. Um, there was just a, a, a misunderstanding about whether there were two documents or one, it's one that's fine. I was wondering, do you have an update for us on the website? Uh, yes, thank you. So I'm just going to quickly outline the strategy. We're working in two phases here. We have an IT platform, uh, which is to, going to replace the back end of a website, which is going to be uh, the a tender offers currently being in place and uh, we're going to move forward on that over the coming weeks. Uh, so that we're aiming to have that implemented towards the end of, uh, towards in the first quarter of uh, 2021. Uh, so that's going to take some time. As I mentioned in February, we're not going to launch this until something's ready and working. So that's a whole rejig of the back end side. In the meantime, we're the current website we have is no longer adapted to what JCI is doing, especially not in terms of the messaging, which we're putting forward. It's still the messaging of the previous years and not the messaging of 2020 and the new decade. So what we've done, we're, we're working on, we're putting some scaffolding in front while we do the back end. And we've created, or our marketing team are creating in-house a brochure website, which will simply explain who we are, what we do in very simple language, and using the new graphics, which you can see on these slides here, which our new marketing team who joined uh, six weeks ago have already established to make us touch a more mature target audience. And we're not looking for 16 year olds to go and change the world and uh, to help carry parade flags around. We're looking at recruiting young professionals and this new, uh, this new um, uh, graphic design is to be able to help uh, recruit young professionals who can Get their skills amplified so this new brochure website is probably going to be up within the next month or so where the english version is almost ready but before we launch it we want to translate it into all four languages so that all four languages can be launched at the same time so that'll take a couple of weeks and hopefully you'll immediately um and in the meantime we're going to be working on reviewing the back end as i told you it's going to be something that will enable us to understand our members through data analytics through uh, through all sorts of information like social networking and which will enable um, more membership empowerment using uh, with business networking and the possibility even to stream trainings online so these are things which are being worked on now and um, and uh, we'll be we'll be in a position to move forward soon on it so yes lots of things are happening at the same time and uh, I hope this answers your question, dear National President Baz. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Baz, has that answered your question? It was an elaborate uh, answer, but yes, I think that's fine for now. All right, thank you, Baz. Any other questions for Kevin? I haven't seen any in the meanwhile. 
Seeing none, uh, then uh, the report doesn't have to be officially approved. So we uh, can just move on to the next point. Then announcements of future bids. So uh, if you are planning or thinking about organizing one of these three events in the future, uh, you can uh, raise your hand and specify. First, uh, the specify which year. Uh, first, for the European President's meeting from 2023 20, and forward. I see JCI Monaco. Yeah, hello everybody, National President Marianne speaking, um, just saying that Monaco has the intention to organize an APM on 2024. Thank you so much. European President's meeting 2024 might be in Monaco. Thank you. Then Czech Republic. Hello, uh, everybody. We are planning uh, to organize a European President's meeting in beautiful Prague in 2023. 2023 in Prague, Czech Republic. Thank you very much. Any other bids or intentions for the European President's meetings in the future? Seeing none. Then we move on to the next type of events, the European Conference. We just elected Bruges for 2022. Is there anyone intending or planning to organize a European Conference 2023 or later? I see Monaco still has their hands up. Not sure if they also want to do a European Conference. No, thank you, Marian. <laughs> I see Mikaela from Finland. Hi, JCI Finland is uh, interested in organizing a European conference uh, in the near future, so 30, 23 and onwards. All right, thank you. Uh, JCI Romania. Yes, do you hear me? We still have the intention to organize the European conference 2023. 2023, Romania. All right, thank you. Anyone else for a European conference in the near future? Seeing none. And I remind you to move your hand down again after raising it. Then for the World Congress. Any intentions for World Congress? Turkey. Hello, dear Vice President Mayor. How are you? Hello. We are interested in. You're interested in organizing a World Congress in the future. No specific year yet? No specific because okay. the administrations are changing so easily and so fast. Yeah. Okay. So, Jesha Turkey in the near future for a World Congress. Um, Jesha Switzerland. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, JCI Switzerland goes on to make the next World Congress in Europe. The next World Congress in Europe. Do you have a year? Will be 23 or 24. 23 or 24. Thank you very much, Andre. And a reminder again to move your hand down for everyone if you raise it. Um, anyone else intending a World Congress in the near future? I'm seeing none. All right. Thank you for your good.
good intentions uh, for um, contributing to, to this organization by organizing one of these events. I know it's a big task, especially now that we know the time is unpredictable, the future is unpredictable. So um, I really wish you the best of luck in preparing for those events. The next point on the agenda is candidates for 2021 JCI office. We start with the position of JCI Vice President. Uh, all candidates will get a two minutes for a brief introduction. Some of them have sent in a video. Um, as a national president, you can announce your candidate. Please keep it short and no elaborate uh, uh, resumes. Um, are there any national presidents who would like to uh, propose a candidate for vice president? JCI Serbia. Hello. Yes, you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. So JCI Serbia uh, candidate for VP is one of the most outstanding member in Serbia from 2016. She was director of National Project 2016, member of uh, local board uh, as uh, VP for uh, Internal, uh, Internal Affairs 2017, uh, then local president, then national president 2019, and today uh, he's one uh, of the EDC councillors. So please uh, let me representing you, JCI Serbia member with extraordinary opportunity with incredible vision for uh, JCI Worldwide family, Mr. Drajan Stankovic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Drajan, for Vice President. And I believe we have a video with a introduction from Drajan. Uh, yes, Marion, and uh, he is uh, with us uh, in this moment as well. Just to Yes, thank you very him. much. Oh, Drajan Hello. wants to go live. Yes, yeah. come on, It will be easier. Thank yes, you for those kind words. Uh, Madam Chairperson, all protocol observed. When I started in JCI, it took me a while to get passionate about it. It was the JCI Serbian National Conference where I had the chance for the first time to feel the international spirit and meet people from abroad. I thought I learned a lot, but it was just a little glimpse. I start to visit international events and I keep finding new information and new opportunities. Every time I thought I knew everything, something new came up. JCI is the endless list of opportunities, and it's up to us to decide what we will take. It is very important to share this information with our members and let them know what opportunities are there for them. From four areas of opportunities, the international collaboration is something that makes JCI different from other organizations. Opportunity to travel, meet members from other countries, share experience, do business and learn is the thing that attracts me the most. Being the VP is the best possible position to promote this international side to members and share all the possibilities and resources. Well, except maybe a president, but we can talk about next time. Uh, we have to work on new ways to enable access to JCI to young professionals from all corners of the world. We started a story about alternative membership last year, and I think we should work on implementing it. We need to be more agile, to be trendsetters, and to find new ways how to be more relevant to young people, how to empower them, and how to make them true change makers. JCI shouldn't be the best kept secret, but the biggest desire. Thank you. Thank you very much, Drajan. And sorry, I was typing and not on mute, I saw, sorry. Um, I'm sure you will do a great job. You're doing a great job as EDC counselor as well. Next one I saw was JCI Monaco. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor. Hello again, everyone. Uh, so JCI Monaco is very proud to put forward the candidacy of Olena Prikotko as a GCI vice president. Um, Olena was our national president in 2018 and has always demonstrated a very strong motivation in her country and in international GCI, GCI life. Uh, she was EDC councillor last year and she is actually a partnership appointee committee member. She is still very active in GCI Monaco and is involved in several projects like our think tank groups. Uh, in professional life, she manages an education centre in Monaco and is definitely a real leader. 
She's also a good and close friend, always available to share a drink or a few. And uh, her experience to the Monaco board is, uh, is really appreciated by, by everyone. So again, I am very proud to announce her candidacy. Thank you very much, Marion. And uh, I believe Olena would like to give her introduction uh, live. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Dear Madam, all protocols have served. It is my honor to present myself in front of the Assembly as a candidate for the Office of JCI Vice President in 2021. Over the past two months, many of us have had time to contemplate what the organization is going to look like both this year and in the years to come. I have always embraced multiculturalism. Growing up in the Ukraine, a native Russian speaker before moving to Nice at the age of 16 to study a law degree and two masters in France. From there, I began an entrepreneurial journey with an education focus, setting up businesses in Monaco and in London alongside my JCI activities. Throughout my various projects, both within JCI and the business world, I have built on my international background and developed a skill set that easily allows me to work with a variety of cultures and understand their codes of etiquette and tradition. This strength allowed me to fully Monaco presidency and building partnership relations and develop sponsorships models that have greatly increased the overall budget and the visibility of our organization. For me, entrepreneurship and business have always been central to JCI. In the years to come, JCI will mirror the state of the society. We're entering a new normal, and our job as young leaders is to ensure continuity and the prosperity of the organization. I want to dedicate my efforts to help our members adapt to the ever-changing world. The future will be definitely challenging for us as we rebuild the economy and rekindle human interactions. But necessity is the mother of invention, and in times of chaos and insecurity also comes opportunity. JCI is a key stakeholder on local, national and international level. And if elected, I would be honored to contribute to its great work over the next year and help to seize the opportunities that will come our way. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you very much, Elena. I'm, I'm sure you'll make a great candidate. Um, I see JCI Finland. Chairperson, I would like to pass the word to our Deputy President, Paris Avalon. Okay, hello everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, clear. Hello, this is uh, Deputy National President from JCI Finland, Aris Avalon speaking, and greetings from the Nordest participants to this conference. So, JCI Finland is proud to announce that our National President uh, to JCI Vice President candidate for 2021, so Mikaela Baumberg. Thank you. I give my speech now. Oh, yes, please go ahead. <laughs> All protocols observed. Dear colleagues and friends, I'm Mikaela Palmberg, and I have the honor to serve as JCI Finland's national president this year. I joined this magic carpet ride that is JCI in 2014. And on my journey, I have served in different positions on local, regional, and national level. I've overseen big partnerships such as Finnair and participated in over 80 conferences and academies. I've experienced the battle that many local and national organizations face with decreasing members. When I joined my local organization, there was only one member left. At the end of, of my presidency, we had an active chapter with 20 members. On the other hand, I have also had the privilege to lead a strong national organization. I believe that the key to success on every level is strategic thinking and continuity. We need a strategic long-term mindset to create sustainable impact. That is something I can help with. I also believe that we need to revamp our partnerships to achieve a genuine collaboration and a win-win effect. Outside JCI, I work as an entrepreneur, a translator and an interpreter. I serve on the city council as vice president of the education and welfare committee in my city. Different cultures, 
and languages have always been a big part of my life. And right from the start, I fell in love with the I in JCI. I participated actively in international events throughout my time in the organization, including the Grand Slam in 2017. It would be an honor to offer support, share best practices, and serve the organization as vice president in 2021 and help others discover a whole new world as I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mark Michaela, for uh, stepping forward for this position. Then we have JCI Norway. Yes, hello. Thank you. I'm uh, Carl Hagen, um, JCI National President from Norway. So JCI Norway is proud to present a candidate for JCI Vice uh, Presidency. He was the 2015 National President of Norway, 2017 European Development Councillor, and is currently a member of the JCI Europe uh, Equity and uh, Diversity Task Force. He has delivered trainings in 10 countries on two continents, on JCI European conferences, world congresses, and international academies. Our candidate is Geir Arne Önnehold. So, this, the floor is yours, Geir Arne. Can someone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I don't get any video up at the moment, but I'll just do it with voice then. Dear Conference Assembly, all protocols observed. JCI is about amplifying your leadership skills while pushing your comfort zone one bit after the other. Ten years ago, a young man got to experience exactly that when he walked into the Chamber of Commerce in Norway. Little did he know then about what kind of journey he was about to embark on. He could never have imagined chairing the board of a national organization, transforming years of negative membership numbers into a 20% increase of members and significantly increasing the number of partnerships. Being part of an internationally awarded project directly impacting and changing a community by building an elementary school there. Contributing to the development of JSA in Europe to the European Development Council and the Equality and Diversity Task Force. As you may have guessed, that young person is a bit older today and is standing in front of you. With the support of my national organization, it is with great humility that I stand in front of you today, announcing the decision to run for the position as JSI Vice President. To become a Vice President is a privilege and I feel well prepared and confident after 10 years of experience and support from JCI, amplifying my leadership skills. If elected, I would be a voice committed to provide a safe development environment for all our members. First, enabling and amplifying their leadership skills in order to harvest positive change. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Geir, very much for stepping forward and thank you for your speech. Um, were the candidates that I have been informed about. Uh, the election will, of course, be at the JCI World Congress, uh, if not in real life, at least online, but we will make sure uh, there will be an election for next year's vice presidents. Um, again, a reminder to lower your hands if you had raised them and to mute yourself after you have been speaking. Then we move to the next point on the agenda. Yes, good luck to all candidates uh, with your uh, elections and the whole process going towards it. The next is the JSHA Executive Vice President. Are there any national organizations who would like to bring forward a candidate? JCI France. Okay. 
Thank you. Hello, everybody. This candidate for GCI Executive VP uh, 2021 has been a member of GCI France for 11 years. This candidate is GCI Senator number 76515 and has taken many responsibilities within our national organization, but also at the international level of our organization. In 2015, GCI France National President, in 2017, GCI Vice President Europe, in 2018, in the GCI Strategic Planning Committee Member for Europe, in 2020, as the GCI Digital Transformation Committee chairperson, she is a concerned citizen who is professional and responsible function. She works in an international group as a human resource development manager. I am therefore very proud as through France 2020 national president to present the candidacy of our French member Céline Blair class of GCI Executive Vice President. Thank you very much, Linda. Celine, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, and can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Okay, wonderful. So, so Thank you so much. So, Madam Chair Marion, uh, Madam EDC Chair Natasha, dear Board of Directors, dear National President, dear Member in France. So, as you all said, the world is facing a special year, and you are all facing a special year. So, JCI is, of course, facing the same, but more than ever, uh, we are also facing an amazing opportunity to exist as change makers. So none of us um, can say what the future holds for us, but let's imagine it together. So what I would like to propose to you is actually exactly what I had the chance to do and to experiment in JCI. It lies in three words, good, human, and action. The first is about respect good. Why? Just because I don't want to reinvent the past, only the future, with you, of course. The second is about human experience. This human adventure is exactly the reason why I'm standing or sitting in front of you today. And the, the, the fact is that JCI is actually for me the best tool ever to empower and to do each one of us. So that's why we have roots, we have human, and the third one is about a change orientation. Actually, we do not have any other choice now. We need to change just because we hold in our hands our children's world. So the aim for that is just to have all those three things in mind. In my case, I'm passionate about people. Um, in my uh, normal life, I'm human resources director, and um, I had the chance for JCI for a long time, as Linda said. So 12 years ago, I just discovered the organization. I had the chance to do uh, the different positions that Linda mentioned, but since, since then I've also been honored to contribute to build the strategic plan with President Down. And what is a part which is in, very important today is about digital, and uh, I'm working with uh -huh. two great committees in the shadow. So today for building the future, we need to adapt ourselves, we need to be ready to acquire new competencies, and we need actually to be aware to be observers, to be nimble, and to be prepared to change now. So what about you? Are you ready to change? Thank you. Thank you very much, Celine, and I wish you all the best as a EVP candidate. Um, are there any other national organizations who have a candidate that would like to compete with Celine? I think there's still someone not on mute. Is it Gare? Yes, now he's mute. All right, I see no other candidates for EVP so far. So, Celine, I wish you an uh, uncontested uh, election. 
have read the very best of luck with that. Then we move to the next point, which is uh, candidates for world president, for president, I must say, for JCI presidents. Is there anyone who would like to propose a candidate? Jisha France. Oh, Jisha Denmark. Jisha France, do you still have your hand up? Yes. So, Jisha Denmark. Thank you. Um, in 2018, we had the pleasure of having a vice president assigned to Europe. He is now aiming to lead our organization. I would like to give the floor to Ruben Kojima from JCI Japan. Thank you very much. And I believe we first have the national president of JCI Japan uh, introducing. All members gathering today. Hello. Thank you very much for the valuable time today. Also, the world is facing as a big issue of COVID-19 pandemic. It's at this time that we must work together as an international organization to overcome this situation uh, by the co collaboration and the cooperation. I'm sure that we could overcome this situation and make the economic recovery as it was before. This year, the Asia Academy and the World Congress will be held very soon. We are preparing how to provide many opportunities and leading to all members. I'm looking forward to seeing all members in Japan. Now, JSHA Japan would like to run for the JSHA World President 2021. The candidate from JSHA Japan will be Ryubun Kojima, 2020 JCI Executive Vice President, member of JCI Osaka. In 2019, he served as a president of JCI Osaka, which has the largest number of members in the world. With the excellent leadership, JCI Osaka contributed to the vitality of the local economy by leading all members of the local chapter and the citizens of Osaka city. Grown up from the valuable experiences, pursuing new possibilities of JCI to reward the benefits he received and uh, overcome the COVID-19 by cherishing relationships with others. Even though it's a big task, he promised to do his best to accomplish. For an international organization, JCI, he's a precious human resource who could lead us to the bright future. When Ryubun Kojima is elected as a JCI president, I believe that his leadership will lead all members and the world to the best direction for world peace. Thank you very much. The JCI World President, Executive Vice President, JCI Officers, National Organization Presidents, Chief Delegates and Members. My name is Yasuhiro Ogura, the 2020 President of JCI Osaka. First of all, I'd like to pay my respects to all of the people who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. 
My heartfelt sympathy goes out to everyone who is still receiving treatment and also to those who are anxious for this to be over. Now, I'd like to express my appreciation to Yubun Kojima for his tremendous effort in providing opportunities for great growth and development. On behalf of JCI Osaka, thank you very much. Mr. Kojima is a Japanese monk, but he is a person who always explores the universal value of creating happiness for people beyond their religious views. It can show us the role and the responsibility we need now for the well-being of those who live in the future. This year, under the leadership of President Itai, as he completes his duties as the Executive Vice President of the Asia Pacific and as the Chairman of ASPAC. His efforts can be recognized and be seen suitable for the JCI president. JCI Osaka will gather all 900 members' energy to provide full support for Mr. Kojima to fulfill his responsibilities. Let's Start sailing into the future with Yubun Kojima and build a world where the future generations can live happily together. Thank you very much. Dear National President, my very good good friend, Executive Vice President Marion, JCI officers, national presidents, chief delegates, members, and ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to be here today and excited that on this online conference has come together so successfully. I would like to pay my respect to all of the people who have lost their lives to the COVID-19 pandemic. And also would like to express my sincere condolences to their families and loved ones. This has been a very difficult time for many. Additionally, I respect and acknowledge the work undertaken by the national presidents and the members that are confronting this global threat by bridging the gap under the strong leadership of President Itai Maniere. My name is Ruben Kujima. I'm the 2020 Executive Vice President in charge of the Asia and the Pacific region. I am grateful to be able to greet you today as the 2021 JCI presidential candidate. And I would like to thank all JCs for providing me with this great opportunity. When this world comes face to face with big problems, it is humanity that steps up, problem solves, and comes through with the solution. In other words, to achieve permanent world peace, we human beings are responsible for building sustainable relationships. We must come together with our families, friends, and community members to build and maintain sustainable society. This is a task that cannot be put off to be accomplished by the people in the future. We need to realize that this task must be accomplished by us, those who live in the present. The first step is getting to know ourselves better. Now, it is time to reflect on your personal roles and responsibilities. What roles should you take in your life? 
Do you understand what it means to perform those roles? In Japan, we are distant to find our roles, which we call Oyakume. JCI is an organization that can help you find and reflect upon the Oyakume you chose to take on in life. We all have multiple roles, multiple oyakume. For example, myself, I'm a Buddhist monk, a husband, a son to one person, but a father to another, a Japanese citizen, but also a global citizen, a JC, and much more. The list is endless. The roles we take on changes in different situations and the actions we take will differ. But all of those oyakume create who I am. What oyakume are you given on this big, magnificent planet? And what will you accomplish before and after you graduate from this organization? How will you hand this borrowed planet into the future? Understanding this may be a small step, but let us take this step together. A ship that lost its crew can float on a large ocean, but a crew that lost its ship cannot continue its voyage. Our ship that we must protect and hand to the future is this planet. Along with me and as a JC, let us take, let us sail into the future while we take on our oyakume. Thank you very much. Mucho gracias. Merci beaucoup. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you very much, President Rubin, for your, or, I mean, Executive Vice President Rubin and candidate for Vice President, or uh, for stepping forward and taking uh, to take this position. I know it's going to be a, a challenging uh, position and I wish you the best of luck in your election and the process afterwards. Thank you. Then we move on to the next point on the agenda, the campaigns. First up is the Step Up for Europe revamp campaign, which will be presented by Mary-Kate Courtley. Let me know when you can hear me okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I can see the comments coming through there in the text box. Um, firstly, my name is Mary Kay Portley. I am the chairperson for this task force that was set up the start of the year at EPM in Moldova. I'm the, currently the deputy national president of JCI Ireland. Uh, this task force, I think it was referenced a few times throughout the uh, proceedings today. Um, but to give you a brief summary, it came out of Moldova, there were some questions around Step Up for Europe and how we could better adapt it to the changing needs of Europe. There were a few issues raised, so the task force came together, it had very good cross-representation of all of Europe. Uh, so we had uh, good insights uh, from across many different uh, points of view. Once the task force was established, we then created the proposal. So you see a summary of that on the screen in front of you. Rebuild, rebuild connect, and lead. There are many considerations we took into this uh, program for the revamp. We wanted to ensure it was widely applicable across Europe, not just in certain geographies or certain regions. We also wanted to make sure it was action orientated, that it really focuses on a call to action and a clear guidance of what we are doing. Also needed to have a very clear direction that was not or couldn't be construed to be linked with a political agenda and also had to be easily leveraged locally and have adaptability to it. We have of course also ensured and I think Kevin's uh, speech earlier, Sec Secretary, Ken uh, Secretary General Kevin covered uh, some of the strategic priorities of the organisation which we ensured we aligned to as well. So Rebuild, Connect and Lead is the programme going forward. We had a one hour Q&A session on Tuesday with Nicole from Malta, who was also part of this task force. 
going through examples of how we could apply this broadly. A copy of all those slides, I know it was mentioned earlier that perhaps some people didn't uh, know that was happening or they weren't able to attend, but a copy of a very detailed one hour pitch on this is in the National President's mailboxes also. So Rebuild, Connect and Lead is the proposal that we have to replace Stand Up for Europe. The idea is to activate in your organisations questions on how will you rebuild, connect and lead, whether that's rebuild the economy, rebuild your communities, rebuild your branches, your membership base, whether you connect through your members, connect through partnerships, connect with your politicians and lead. How are you going to inspire leadership in your country, in your city and in your area? It is a very broad reaching, but very specific too. And we do feel that it captures uh, the feeling of Europe at the moment, but still can be used for many months and years uh, to come. So that is our final proposal. I'd like to hand it back to the chair now in case there's any uh, pieces here to do with the voting side of things. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mary-Kate, and indeed, uh, we will need to accept this uh, to be able to move forward with this as being the new campaign for JCI Europe. Are there any questions? JCI the Netherlands, boss. Thank you for the work you did with the committee on this uh, on this new campaign. I love the, the, the three words uh, that combine the new action-oriented uh, program. Um, what I was wondering, though, is um, is it focused on um, being picked up by each and every individual national organization and local organization, or is there also an overarching role for JSHA Europe here? That's a great question. Um, I guess the role of JSI Europe will become clear if we can we can vote and adopt it um, on the broader scale. But the idea behind it is that it would be a Europe-wide rebuild, connect, and lead. The national organisations would host a brainstorming session, to really pinpoint how this can best resonate in their particular country. Um, they will hone in a problem statement, and we have built out in the background how you'd host a workshop like this. And then that would cascade out to local organizations for them to come together and create local projects that would achieve um, that national organization's mission. Um, so it is a very much Europe-wide campaign. The role of JCI Europe TBC uh, needs to be adopted first, uh, but it's very flexible in, in how it's applied across Europe as an overarching theme in the countries themselves, and then even right down to the local organizations, it can be quite tailored. So you're also mentioning that there are activities that you already uh, put under this campaign. I did not see those in the presentation. Did I miss something or? No, you didn't miss anything. So we have obviously in the background gone into a lot more detail into how exactly this works in logistics. So how would you take something like this and really transform it, not just into a national idea, but also a local project? So we've built that out in the background. I know that we discussed in our uh, task force as well that we wanted to be able to create a toolkit that the national organizations could use. And that would include guides like this on how to best brainstorm and how to best bring this to life in your areas. We cannot progress with those until this is adopted and we have a budget and we have everything together to support that. Uh, but the thinking has gone in behind it. It really has been thought through from start to finish, not just as an idea and as a concept, but actually how this can truly be implemented. All right, thank you for this uh, explanation on that. Thank you, Mary Kate, and thank you, Boss. I see a question from JCI Germany. Thank you very much, Mary Kate, for the presentation and also for giving us uh, some slides before. And regarding the task force, thank you all for the effort. Um, for me, it is not really clear what is the vision behind that. Um, is what maybe I need an example what JCI Europe can do as a JCI Europe and not what we can do as a national level, because I think on a national level to adapt that it's it's okay that it's clear for me, but um, how can JCI Europe establish this as a campaign not only for half a year, so it should be established for more than half a year. Thank you. 
Yes, I'd love to see it go beyond half a year. I think there's great longevity to it. And it has been designed in such a way that it can. So it's not rooted at any one particular moment in time. Um, but to the greater part of your question there, so it really is, what is JCI Europe doing? What are we, what's our, our action going to be? And our response to that is, JCI Europe is going to rebuild, connect and lead Europe. That is the European vision for us and how that's adopted nationally and is flexible. Is that, is that sufficient? Was there another element to that question that I missed? Do you have an example? Maybe that yes. I, okay, <laughs> what, so what, in the maybe yeah, sorry, I was like, there's definitely something else. In the yeah. detailed pack that sent out to all national presidents and that Nicole very kindly walked through at the QA session on Tuesday, um, that has three built out examples uh, already in there populated. So one of them is you would rebuild your economy. Uh, you, quite, you would do that by connecting with business leaders and the leadership element there would be providing those members with that partnership opportunity to engage with local business. Um, I think as well the JCI Malta example was actually given as a worked example of how you could apply this with the buy a meal campaign. So I know that they have further details on how that worked. Um, for people who might be familiar with this, they ran it with local restaurants um, to try and buy a meal online. It was an online platform where they connected local communities and members with local restaurants to really revive the economy in, in Malta. And that was very positive. They did, did very well. So that's a really good example of how you can rebuild an economy by connecting to people with businesses and demonstrating leadership. So that was one of the worked examples we gave. In total, in that pack, there are six worked examples. So. If you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, I really would encourage you to to see how it can be adopted. I I have um, looked into and I also attend the session. So, but basically, are examples on national level. But what should be the vision for JCI Europe on that? Is that to connect all the members in JCI Europe? That maybe has an influence to how we communicate to each other, or what what can be done on JCI Europe level? That is what I said. I think it's not the problem for me to adapt it on my national level. I think we are fine. Well, I'm fine with that. But um, what can we do overall as JCI Europe? Because I think to be visible, it's also good to have one campaign all together, what we can proceed and what we can promote also outside of the JCI world to maybe more, more members also to get new sponsors and so on. Absolutely. Um, I think there's opportunity to expand that a bit further and do a bit more further thinking into the European lens. The initial proposal was to come up with something that could unite us rather than divide us. Um, and the Rebuild Connect lead is where we've landed. There's definitely opportunity to showcase what comes out of that in a rolled up level of exactly how JCI Europe is rebuilding, connecting and leading. Uh, but I completely appreciate what you're saying there. We'll, we'll definitely take that back. And if this gets, <laughs> if it gets adopted and if the time and energy and money gets put to it, we will, of course, ensure that there is a cohesive European wide message included. And I can also maybe uh, respond to that, that, of course, with JCI Europe, if we adopt this campaign, we will we will be working on also promoting it, using it maybe in the JCI Europe live, for example, referring to projects that are being done as a JCI Europe level. We don't actually organize projects, but we mainly work on the coordination and the knowledge sharing uh, for those projects. Any other questions for Mary Kate for the presentation? Seeing none, then I seek a motion and I remind uh, Sandra, you have your hand up still. Uh, I seek a motion for adopting this campaign and further elaborating on it, how we can um, yeah, adopt it in each national organization and on the JCI Europe level, but adopting this campaign to move forward with it, moved by JCI Malta, seconded by JCI Finland, we had the discussion just now, so I'm assuming that there are no more questions, discussion on this. And Lutz, do you have a poll prepared for this one? Yes, coming up quickly. 
Give me one second. So to summarize, the motion is to adopt the Rebuild Connect lead campaign to be the new campaign for JCI Europe. Details for the campaign uh, can be seen in the presentation that was shared earlier, and uh, some things will need to be elaborated. Um, but we're adopting the campaign with this motion. The poll is up, so please cast your votes. Let's, how is it going with the votes? Yes, we have uh, 26, 28 votes in. And uh, just uh, for your note, there's a question from Joanna. Um, can you please summarize the motion in the chat? Yes, I just did. Then, uh, yeah, there's a minute gone. Um, so we have 23 in favor, three opposed, and two abstain. Right, that sounds like the motion carries. So I wish the task force good luck in uh, elaborating this campaign further and to and so that we can all get working on it. Thank you very much for that. We move on to the next point, which is the business networking platform by Jana. Ayana, you are on mute, just letting you know. Oh, good. No. Okay, good. Thank you very much for that. So, once more, a GCI Europe Business Platform Task Force has worked quite hard and prepared, prepared several um, options, uh, several ways to go uh, in moving from here now on. So, if I could have the first slide. During the EPM in Moldova, uh, JCI Germany and JCI Cyprus expressed their wish uh, to promote more business within JCI members, which was supported by uh, many countries. Uh, many of them joined the task force. We did some brainstorming, divided into teams, worked on it in teams, and proposed several solutions. Next one, please. Uh, we really generated many ideas, and uh, then the situations chain, uh, situation changed, COVID-19 came, and uh, we looked at several options like web solution, business networking, an event that's gone now temporarily, uh, business meetings online, using Step Up for Europe or now Rebuild Connect lead campaign. Uh, we also looked into the oppor uh, opportunity provided by Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs corporate, corporate membership that somehow disappeared. Uh, from our agenda and we also talked to the European Senate and talked about business mentoring and networking with uh, our lovely senators who are very much interested in helping us push this agenda forward. So uh, to go for the low hanging fruits and actually have something that can be implemented quite quickly, we, liked, uh, we looked at three solutions. The first one was web-based solution. Web -based solution. So um, the proposal now is to establish a team. Some of the people from the task force have already volunteered to be on the team and to prepare an online platform where GCI members could uh, see what their business site actually is, having sort of like our own LinkedIn or something linked to LinkedIn. Uh, then the platform would be created and we would test it, make sure that it's sustainable and we would launch it into the world, hopefully by the end of this year. 
Uh, the person who knows most about this is Tobias uh, Hecke. And you will have the opportunity to meet him on June the 19th, when we have the whole day to a JCI Europe business agenda. Another solution, I can have the next slide, that we looked into was online networking events. Because we thought, like, you know, what can we do now? What can we do now immediately? And that is also sustainable in future. And since we are members from all over Europe, all over the world, uh, I currently run business networking clubs online and offline as well. So sometimes, uh, you know, it is out of necessity, but sometimes online networking brings a lot of advantages as well. So we want to run three sample online meetings uh, in summer and autumn and see how this works for uh, JCI members who are interested in doing business. Then we can set it up as uh, something that can continue and be sustainable in future as well. And last but not least solution that we looked at and that we chose that can be easily implemented is cooperation with our Senate. As uh, you know, these are people who have a lot of business experience and we already have a co uh, cooperation with them when it comes to mentoring. So we decided to extend this uh, cooperation also to business networking and business uh, mentoring. Here we have to set up the whole process. We will probably copy uh, a little bit of a little bit the mentoring process that is done through EDC, but we will define the conditions uh, process, uh, collect applicants, uh, test the cooperation, and hopefully by the end of the year we will have something that can be used in the years to come. We will be talking about these in greater detail, as I mentioned, on June the 19th, when we have the JCI Europe Business Day. Uh, there will be other members of uh, the task force present. I know that there will be SG Kevin, there will be Tobias, uh, there will be Marcus and other members from the task force. So please join us if you're interested in business. You will definitely see brainstorming sessions, uh, mastermind, business speed networking, and also a sample of the business club that could be run within JCI, strictly to support business among members. If you have any other questions, just reach out to me or just join us on June the 19th. Thank you very much. If you have questions, you can you. ask now, but we're running out of time. That's why I'm so brief. Yes, I indeed recommend to reach out to Jana straight for any questions and recommend to join the business day during the online European conference uh, on the 19th. I see a hand by Jesha Germany. Yeah, thank you, Jana, for this presentation. Um, just a hands up if you want to do something on 19th of June. So please come up really soon with all the details that we can share that in our uh, organization, because we have only at least two weeks and we have some holiday day in Germany and so on and also in other countries. So if you want to do something and if you want to that many, many members uh, will attend, please send out soon all the information regarding that. Thanks. you. Any other questions? And a reminder to put your hand down. Okay. Um, then I thank you, Jana, for your report. I see no other questions. Then we move on to the magazine by Jonas. Yes. Good afternoon, JCI Europe Conference Assembly, all other protocols observed. Uh, it is my great pleasure today to present the JCI Europe magazine on behalf of EVP Marian, who initially got the idea and launched the project, and uh, also uh, Lotte Nijkamp from uh, JCI the Netherlands, who is the chief editor uh, and also a project manager, but uh, unfortunately was not able to do the presentation for you here today. So it is my great pleasure to do it. Next slide, please. Next, yes, thank you. The idea uh, behind this uh, magazine is uh, to do um, a physical and electronic magazine that showcase the great impact that JCI Europe is doing in uh, local uh, chapters all over Europe. Uh, next slide, please. This is uh, first and foremost to showcase what we're actually doing, but also to serve as an inspiration for the different members of uh, 
uh, JCI Europe uh, so we can learn from each other and uh, and build on that but also to have a product that we can give to uh, potential members potential partners to really show what we are doing not only in a specific town not only in a specific country but all over JCI Europe as a statement uh, of the impact we're doing next slide please But not only that, it's also a great project that show the collaboration and give opportunity to JCI Europe members. Uh, we are currently 15 uh, members of the uh, project uh, based all over Europe. Um, and uh, yeah, next slide. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, different roles ready for uh, the people already in, but there is still room if someone is interested in participating. Going to the content, next slide, thank you, is uh, really the key here, uh, because uh, first and foremost, we want to show uh, a story from all the countries all over Europe, uh, not only 50% uh, or 75%, but have 100% of the uh, countries in Europe uh, showcase some of their best uh, projects uh, on a, a local level, maybe also on a national level. Also to uh, inspire um, members on uh, uh, what they can uh, do in this organization. We will try to fit every story uh, into the four areas of opportunity so that we ensure that we touch base on all four of these uh, areas. Uh, and uh, of course, balance it so it's both uh, uh, descriptions of uh, great projects, but also inspiration for, for future members to see why and uh, what they can gain out of a membership of JCI Europe. Um, yes, if you can skip to the budget uh, to, uh, to cut down on the length of this. Yes, uh, one back, please. Yes. The budget is, uh, of course, we haven't found a, a, a gold pot at the end of uh, a rainbow. So uh, we have to uh, uh, make a budget, a realistic budget uh, on what this will cost and where the income will come from. So far, we have uh, made a rough estimate, uh, which you can see here that uh, some of it will be financed via advertisements uh, that we are uh, working on uh, to uh, get uh, from all over Europe. We uh, have a little estimate that the sales uh, in uh, Yokohama at the World Conference will, will pay tribute. Then we hope that all of you JCI uh, Europe countries can see the value of uh, having this magazine and uh, being able to uh, give this to your members, to future members and to future partnerships. Uh, and last but not least, we are uh, applying for a foundation grant. Uh, of course, these are a bit floating, but uh, a reason for not having a higher advertisement is that we uh, don't want it to look like an advertorial for McDonald's or uh, another company. But uh, to balance uh, the content uh, with the um, content that we are uh, less in control of so that it's still a JCI Europe statement and not a company statement, uh, so to speak. Um, the expenses, on the other half, uh, is... Um, uh, meant for uh, primarily publishing, uh, which means the layout, uh, the the base layout will be done digitally. Then there's a, a transformation uh, fee uh, for making it into print. And then, of course, printing the actual um, uh, editions. And then we have a little buffer left. Yes, um, we are aiming. Yes, next slide, please. We are aiming to keep the costs uh, as low as possible for the actual uh, editions, issues of the magazine, so that we can spread them out uh, uh, all across uh, Europe, maybe the world, uh, and get the message as far out as possible. Um, last, but, last but not least, I'm uh, very willing to answer all your questions. Uh, otherwise, they can be asked afterwards. And uh, by this, I give the word back to you, uh, Marianne. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, thank you very much, Jonas, and thank you for the great work that the committee has been doing. I uh, see that there uh, are some questions in the chat, and I think I can also answer at least uh, some of them. 
Uh, one is, of course, about the physical magazine, and we've been discussing this uh, as well, of course. We do believe that a physical magazine gives uh, great opportunities for uh, giving it to the potential members, potential sponsors, uh, having it on your dinner table, um, or yeah, like casually shown to people, and it should also be uh, not like a throwaway type of magazine. It should be uh, one that you should uh, keep. So with uh, yeah, good quality paper and not uh, uh, yeah, the very thin paper or something. So it should be one that you keep and use for many years. Um, I know that there are uh, eco concerns with this, but what I noticed as uh, being the editor in chief of our national magazine in the Netherlands a few years ago, um, if you make it only digital, people read it less. If you make it physical, people are more uh, tempted to read it and to keep it. Uh, we also did a similar one in 2014 in the Netherlands with projects from all the local organizations in the Netherlands, and people still use that uh, to show to sponsors what JCI is uh, or to potential partners. So I do believe that there is an added value to a paper one. Uh, with that, I must also note that um, we will probably work with pre-ordering. So if you want to have printed ones, we will print them. If you don't want them, we will not print them. So to, to cut costs there. Um, and uh, there will also be costs involved in publishing it online uh, properly, so it doesn't mean that we will have uh, zero costs. Um, but there is a platform that we use in the Netherlands for publishing the uh, digital magazine. We will be do doing some sharing of resources there with JCI the Netherlands, so that will save some costs, but there are still costs involved in publishing it uh, online. Um, the I see the price 150. Uh, that was the one off price. So if we would be selling them, for example, in Yokohama and um, the price for national organizations for uh, in bulk would be lower. Um, the single edition. Well, we are only in this for one year for this position. If their next team wants to continue with this idea, then it could there could be another one. But we are focusing on a single edition. Um, printing it locally, we uh, are looking into the cheapest options for printing it while maintaining quality for sure. Um, the, yeah, the 4.5k costs is for um, uh, yeah, making the, the digital magazine. We were, do, we're doing that together with a professional publisher, so it will look uh, professional. Um, Are you going to translate it into French or other languages? We are considering that, but it will also require a lot of work. So we have to see what is possible and if we have people who want to help us with the translations and, of course, how many languages we can offer online. That will probably be easier than the, the printed ones, but we will look into that. Um, the partners would want to know what the events are at the national level. Um, that uh, well, if for some national organizations, I can imagine that that's an added value if they themselves haven't done many great projects yet, so that they can show what JCI is on a broader scale and not just a few people in that national organization in case they have very few. But of course, that's also why <clears throat> that's also why we want projects in there from every national organization. The 150 price is only when there is a high number of copies to print. The fewer copies, the higher the price. Um, we will have to work on a more elaborate uh, budget getting closer to the date. So the exact price will be determined later. But I'm not sure if you have, Jonas, any exact. No, I can uh, just elaborate a little bit on the question. Uh, first of all, the, the physical uh, magazine. Let me just give an example. When you're uh, uh, in, in talks with a partner, uh, when you leave the meeting, you leave a magazine where they can see uh, all about JCI uh, on a European level instead of apps, uh, afterwards having to send them an email with a link which they will uh, never open. So that's just an example of why the physical mag magazine can serve a purpose. Um, going into the more uh, um, uh, one year uh, talk, we are talking very much uh, uh, in the uh, magazine uh, uh, editorial staff to uh, 
try to make it as long lasting as possible so uh, that uh, we don't necessarily speak a lot about years and dates but try to keep it uh, as uh, long lasting uh, as as possible and and last but not least going into to to the pricing the main goal here will be to to keep the addition uh, issue costs as low as possible this is a, a, a based on 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 what we have uh, heard so far from from uh, printing this the price of of 150 should hold as a, a single sale price uh, and and uh, and hopefully we can we can cut that uh, down if you if you buy um, uh, yeah more samples so uh, based on what we know now it's it's realistic um, as as a base price but if we can make it cheaper that's our aim of course Yes, thank you, Jonas. Um, I also saw a question about not convinced about the costs for the online platform. It's going to be more than just a PDF. So it's going to be like interactive with some uh, media videos, uh, multiple photos, everything included. So it's really not just a PDF. We know that we can publish that on issue. It, it's going to be much more than that. And I can show you the example of the Dutch national magazine where you can see uh, what it is. And I really think it is worth it. Uh, the budget is higher than the step of Europe last year. Uh, yes, but we're not using any budget from JCI Europe. Just to note, this is an independent uh, budget. Why don't we just try issue first? Then we still have to publish the whole, uh, create the whole thing, create all the content, do the layout. So there's still a lot of work involved. And also note that the work is. Uh, yeah, professional layouting. So it, it is going to be a lot of work. What else would you like to know about the budget, Johanna? I think that's what we've been talking about. Hi, um, maybe it will be easier if I speak on the camera rather than typing. Um, we did have a quick chat um, before the conference started and we didn't have the full understanding on the financial model. I know that some presidents were raising doubts about uh, the respective figures that we were mentioning here on chat. And we were assuming that the budget is coming from JCI Europe. So the, this is the new information that it is not. So we would like to understand how exactly um, what, when this will be financed from the European side and is there any financial consequence for the JCI Europe budget that we should be uh, aware of? If not, probably this will um, eliminate most of our doubts with regards to the financing side. Indeed, this is an independent budget. We currently don't have any resources from JCI Europe allocated to this magazine. Um, and maybe I can just say that um, for the further questions, and this is a work in progress uh, for recommendations, uh, you can get in touch with Jonas or Lotte uh, and their team to uh, go deeper into the uh, details and to see how we can bring this forward. I still believe that they are on a great track with a professional um, magazine, uh, both online and on paper. Uh, but if you have any ideas on how to make it better, uh, please share your ideas with them. And I believe the de details of the number of issues are in their uh, elaborate presentation, or at least a global estimate. Jesha, the Netherlands. Yes, thank you uh, for the presentation. Thank you, Marianne, as well. Just to clarify, is this uh, a project by Jesha Europe or is it an independent project? And also, what is the purpose of uh, this point on the agenda? Is it just to inform us and to be able to be uh, to contact the, the, the committee that is behind this? If so, I think we can move on. If not, um, I would like to know the purpose. 
This is indeed just for information because this is something that we as Team Europe are uh, working on, but it's uh, as it is an independent uh, budget, an independent project, uh, although initiated by uh, JCI Europe, this is just for information. Thank you. So in that in that case, I would like to um, 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 move to, to suspend discussion and go to the next point. And if people have any questions, refer to the committee. Yes, great, Bas. Thank you. All right. Uh, any further questions uh, can be referred to uh, the committee. Thank you very much. Then we move to the next uh, agenda point, which is the committee reports. First up is the JCI Europe Partnership Committee. Um, before I start, I have to uh, announce that JCI Moldova entered the room. I forgot to announce them earlier um, and that they now also have a vote. And so in case we do voting by polls, we can uh, include JCI Moldova. Um, yes, when do we make a break? Uh, I know that we've been going on for a long time and I'm really trying to see how we can uh, speed this up. Um, of course, national presidents, you are always welcome to move a motion for a short recess. JCI Scotland. Um, I'll go ahead and propose a five, ten minute break. A ten minute break proposed by JCI Scotland. Are there any seconds? Uh, I second the break. If I may, may just ask, I did ask before in the chat, you probably missed it. Is there a plan about the break? We don't want to be messing with your plan. So did you have, can we know what the plan is with the big break and the, the second part of the assembly? Just to know. Yeah. Yes, the initial plan was to have a 60 minute break between the meetings. Uh, we discussed in the previous break that we uh, would reduce that to maybe 20 minutes. Um, but if we are doing a break now, I'm not sure that we need another break uh, then, so we'll have to see how it goes and when we uh, do the break, so we can also do it dynamically as we are doing now. Okay, thanks. So I had a motion from JCI Scotland. Uh, I see JCI the Netherlands. Was that a seconder? Yes, was a second, and also I think Croatia seconded as well. Okay, and Croatia seconded as well. Yes. Thank you. Um, any opposed to a 10 minute recess, please raise your hands. Belgium is still up. Are you opposing or? Not opposed. Good. Then I hereby declare that we have a 10 minute recess reconvening at 5.12.
Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I see that there's a hand sign from Bas. Yeah. Looking at the time. Thank you, Marian. Um, I would like to move to put the committee reports to the folder um, um, and just move on to other business because I think we we have to read uh, the, the reports before we can actually say something about it. Um, and with the eye and the time, and also the second uh, the second meeting coming up later. I feel that we need to move on, and so I'd like to move to put the committee reports towards the folder and skip that point on the agenda. Thank you, boss. That motion, any seconder? Belgium. Any opposed? Raise your hand. Seeing none opposed, then we uh, this motion carries and we skip the committee reports. Um, thank you very much, for committees, for your hard work. We will be sharing your presentations in the folders of the national presidents, and uh, so they can review them there. Then we move to the next point on the agenda, which is event updates. Jesha European Academy update by Sana. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I would like to share you an, an update about the uh, European Academy. Next, next slide, please. Uh, the Academy is for incoming local presidents, and we received uh, 126 applications from 26 countries. So thank you for all of them. We have more than 100 nominated delegates. Next one, please. Uh, we hope to have uh, our Academy uh, in, in, the, in the August as planned, but probably it would be uh, smaller options are cancellation or postponing it to later, but all options are still open. Uh, we asked comments from our team members, from JCs and all the applications. Uh, we made a survey and uh, according to that uh, results, we decided to wait until 30th of June to make the final decision, including sending invitations to the applicants. Next one, please. This is a sort. <laughs> Next, please. Oh, uh, actually, uh, one back. So, uh, yeah, now. So, most of the applicants replied to our survey, and 85% uh, of them uh, say said that they want to come to to the academy in August. But uh, we will make another survey for them in the middle of June. And according to that information, we will make the decision uh, by the end of June. And next one, please. And uh, to ensure lower the risk of outbreak, we will make all the necessary steps. Uh, the smaller academy is one option, keeping distances, uh, using uh, hand sanitations, even masks, and uh, asking all the delegates not to travel if they have any symptoms. Next, please. But the uh, academy is for incoming leaders, and uh, we want to develop the leaders for changing world. So that's why we want to make sure that we will have high-level training for the local presidents, and uh, let's bridge the, bridge the gap. Thank you. And next, here's uh, our contact information. If you have any further questions, please contact me or our, our mail address. All right, thank you very much, Sana, uh, for your report. Um, 
were there any questions? I think they can also contact you directly. Mm -hmm. I see no questions so far. Then I thank you for your report and we move on to the next one, which is the European Transfer. And I think Lutz has a say about that. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Um, I'll make it quick and short as well. Um, the general issue, of course, with the European uh, NAHO transfer and why we have not communicated anything yet is um, that uh, the parliament is closed and shut down still and uh, that um, we have communicated, or I have communicated our patron for the European NAHO transfer, um, the MEP uh, Musran, Siegfried Musran um, from uh, Romania. Um, and uh, I've been in contact with him and uh, or his, uh, his, his assistant and um, they really, I asked them for their recommendation if we should move forward with it um, for a physical European NAHO transfer and they have some um, obvious doubts uh, since the um, parliament has you know, closed and uh, cancelled all events until the end of July so far going into August. And um, if they do reopen and if we can go there, um, then there will be, of course, there's a limitation of only one person being in one office of the uh, member of parliament. And obviously, um, they, the elected representatives of our countries and uh, thus they, they should definitely not be um, put in, in, in danger or in contact. Um, by having too many people visiting them and being in contact. So those are all concerns uh, why we have not been pushing forward this yet. Um, that's point one. Point B is um, we are looking into uh, options, alternative options. Um, for example, a digital uh, European NAHO transfer where we could have one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, sessions with the member of parliament. Um, I have the vision of maybe creating with two, three, uh, members of parliament from all parties of the European Parliament, um, uh, a, a kind of a forum where I kind of act as an interviewer or moderator um, with the member of parliament and then people can join, they can register beforehand for the call and then we have like an interview for 20 minutes and then there will be 40 minutes of um, FAQ um, of, of exchange between the member of parliament and uh, members. Um, point three would be that uh, as I mentioned before, um, I am very likely to have someone on board. Uh, so Europe will be um, at least not a one man show anymore uh, from the staff side, but that I will uh, likely have to have um, an intern. His name is Dan. Um, he's residing in uh, the Netherlands right now. Um, so he, um, I will task him mainly with that, um, yeah, with that, uh, job, so we have one person really focusing on that um, program. Uh, because what I really want to make clear is that um, seeing the pandemic and uh, seeing restricting our events does not mean that we do not do them, that, but that we look into other ways of how to do them. And we have done that on various other events. This one right here, for example. Um, and of course, we are trying, and I'm personally trying my best to do the same for the European Hour transfer. Um, but that's of course TBD. Uh, we're working on it, um, and for participation as well, uh, we are looking for June, um, so you can log on. So we at least have all the details. If it's going to be a digital one, that we have your email contacts, and um, that we know who would be interested. So we loop you in and see that you can join those sessions. Um, but of course, if we're going to do those sessions, we want to keep them uh, as open as possible. Pretty sure that we will do a Facebook stream as well, so everyone can join. Um, but that's all to be announced and uh, I'm just very happy that I have a second person now that will support me on that. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, but just some insights uh, that we have been in contact, uh, we have been in contact with the Commission, with the Parliament and um, that we are pushing things forward. Thank you. That will be it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can raise them now or feel free to always reach out via email, WhatsApp. I've been in contact with most of you now. Um, you know that you can reach me through WhatsApp um, always and uh, just give me a call and, and we can have a chat about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lutz. Um, yeah, any questions for the EU know-how transfer, uh, please uh, refer to I didn't see anything come by in the chat so far. Um, then the next one is JCI Academy. 
by Keita or Masa. Here. Hello, everyone. Greeting from Japan. Hello. My name is, hi, uh, my name is Keita Sugawara, Chairman of 2020 JC Academy Commission. Thank you for your time. First of all, I've been hearing about the severe damage that the COVID-19 has caused throughout Europe and that it is still expanding throughout the world at this moment. I would like to express my sincere condolences to those who passed away from COVID-19 virus. The situations are getting more and more better by the hard work of frontline workers. I would like to express my respect towards medical staffs and frontline workers who make sacrifices every day to keep the people safe from COVID-19. Number of infections are decreasing day by day in Japan. In many prefectures, there haven't been any infection reported in these few days, and the government has declared an end to the lockdown in most cities, including Fukuoka. However, we are not the only one facing the problem, it's the whole world. We must continue to be close attention towards the virus, whether to decide if it's safe to hold the event or not. We hope the situation will settle as soon as possible. And in the meanwhile, we will continue to do our best for the preparation of this year's JCI Academy. Next slide, please. Right now, we are planning to move the schedule to late October, right before the World Congress. I have to apologize for the precise schedule not being set yet. Next slide, please. About the registration, for the candidates that has already been registered, there are no need for another registration. The registration deadline was March 31st, but I understand for many countries, it wasn't the best time to complete the registration. We have set a new date for the deadline. It will be end of July. For the countries who hasn't registered yet, please register through JCI homepage. Next slide, please. For further information, please visit the homepage or feel free to contact our commission through email. Next slide, please. To conclude our presentation, I would like to ask Ideta-san, president of JCI Fukuoka, and Yasunaga-san, JCI Academy Director, for a few words. Ideta-san, onegaishimasu. Hello everyone. My name is Masashiro Ideta, 2020 President of JCI Fukuoka Japan. This year, JCI Fukuoka will hold this wonderful project in the city of Fukuoka. JCI Academy is one of the most important projects in JCI Japan. Actually, I was a delegate in 2015. I realized we could have a great opportunity to grow through JCI, and I started to devote my life to JCI activities. Please join or introduce a delegate. Fukuoka is a city of festivals and food and fashion. We are waiting for you in Fukuoka. Next is from Takuchiro Yakusunaga called Michael Jackson in Fukuoka. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. The population of the Fukuoka city is about 1,500,000. 3 million tourists from overseas visit Fukuoka city every year. We are aiming to make Fukuoka the number one city of Omotenashi. Omotenashi is the Japanese way of hosting and serving guests. Fukuoka is a very convenient city. It takes only 11 minutes from downtown to the airport. Fukuoka is the most compact city in the world. You can enjoy food, culture, festivals, and fireworks here. I promise you have a wonderful time. Please visit Fukuoka. Thank you for listening.
Thank you very much. Uh, Kate, was that uh, all from your side? Sorry, uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for very much. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, as you see, more information can be asked uh, in the email addresses and as shown on the screen. Thank you, Lutz, for going back. Thank you. So then we uh, move forward, but we stay in Japan with an update on the World Congress Yokohama. Hello, everybody. Greetings from Yokohama, Japan. I am Dennis Manabe, Congress Director of 2020 JCI World Congress Yokohama. It is my great pleasure and honor to meet you all. I was so excited to visit the city of Dublin and enjoy the Irish pub, being able to greet you all in person. Never would I have imagined that we will be online today, and I am sure that nobody predicted COVID-19 global pandemic would affect our lives so much. However, despite the circumstances, we truly appreciate EVP Marion and COC conference director Durek and all members in Ireland for giving me this opportunity to promote our Congress. At the current moment, the travel restriction to Japan is still heavily active and un unfortunately welcoming you all in person appears to be very difficult. If this unfortunate situation continues, we are planning to hold 2020 JCI World Congress online. I will be prepared to gather enough information and make an official announcement by the end of July. I understand completely that traveling overseas during such precarious times will create concerns amongst our members' families and within the work environment. Hence, registration for our international congresses will be challenging. I also understand the well-being of our members is not only the issue of the individual, but part of a bigger whole, and that it must be taken very seriously. However, that being said, we are trying our best to move forward to be able to see you all in November and to be able to provide you the special experiences in Yokohama, where our members can reunite with smiles our faces. The theme of 2020 JCA World Congress is the crossroad of innovation. It is our strong belief that innovation emerges when there is a synergy of ideas amongst people with different views. Let us start something new together. Encountering each other and staying together is the key. This connection is what makes us happy. This togetherness is what we need to build a brighter future. I promise to make this Congress full of hints to make this world a better place. I promise to make this Congress a safe place where exchanges of views are accepted and needed to be able to empathize with one another. I promise to make this Congress a platform which would serve as an opportunity to trigger new action for a brighter tomorrow. In conclusion, please let me announce our details of our Congress. Please keep your calendars open for 2020 JCI World Congress Yokohama, which will be held for five days from November 3rd to 7th. We will be updating various information about the Congress on our website. To make it more convenient for you to visit Yokohama, we are working towards an extension of an early bird registration deadline and pursuing negotiation with hopes regarding accommodation details. If you have any question, please do, do not hesitate to email us via our website. We will be 
if that you are visit to Yokohama will be a like exchange like changing experience. An experience filled with hints to look back and reassess where you came from. An experience that will change your take on life and see where you stand in a bigger picture. An experience where you will be build a friendship that you will cherish for a lifetime. This is the vision I, ha <coughs> I have this Congress. Never give up. That is what I believe in. We are not the unknown. It is a sea of possibilities. I kindly ask for your continued support and cooperation of 2020 Jesha World Congress. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dennis, for your report. I really hope that we will be meeting in Yokohama and uh, instead of online, but let's see what the future brings. Then we move to the next point E, which is the 2021 Yesha European Conference update. By Ole. It's really sad we couldn't meet in Dublin this year. But how about next year in Germany? Please join us at EC 2021 in Roswell. And be part of a once in a lifetime experience. Visiting Gothenburg, Oslo, and Copenhagen. One ship, one hero, a special venue, a special conference. All on one boat. Connecting people and nations. We're all in this together. More than ever before. Uncertain times require a strong commitment. And every plan needs a backup. We are working on it. For GCI and for you. See you in Rostock from June the 8th to June the 12th, 2021. President Itai, the Executive Chief Vice President Marion, the International Presidents, all protocols served. My name is Ole Mönkamp. I am one of the four conference directors, and I would like to give you a brief preview. Just when the presentation starts. Yeah, there it is. So, right from the very beginning, many JCI chapters are involved in our project in Germany and, of course, in Gothenburg, Oslo, and Copenhagen. Our thematic focus is partnerships for our future. Partnerships are important to achieve our goals, no matter if you look at business, friendships, cities, or countries. It's human to engage in partnerships. Let's celebrate them on our partnership. We will start in the Hanseatic city of Rostock. Click. Next. Yeah. The first day will be, will be about the Hanseatic League and partnerships before we head off for Gothenburg, having a great welcome light on board. In Sweden, we will enjoy a sustainable, creative and active day ashore. Next stop will be Oslo. In Norway, it's all about nature, technology and Nordic culture. Arriving in Copenhagen, we could explore the green capital before the captain's dinner commences on the last night of EC 2021. After five days and four nights back in Rostock, we leave our convention. Fully aware of the debatable dark side of the cruise industry, we don't want to do any greenwashing. We are committed to reduce our carbon footprint whenever possible. Talking about sustain sustainability will always make an impact, even on a cruise ship. Lectures will raise the awareness on the topic of sustainability. Guided tours showing best practice examples open up new horizons for a better future. As JCI members, next. As JCI members, we want to take action to make theoretical knowledge tangible through practical experiences. Now we will get to two very important questions. How much will it cost you? And even more important, what will you get for your money? We offer a unique, all-inclusive pricing. Included are the conference fee covering the onboard program, accommodation, five meals per day, and a selection of unlimited free drinks. The earlier your book, the better your chances. 
we have a limited number of beds and even fewer cabins on board. So please register now. You can choose between three different cabin categories and stay with up to four persons in one cabin or by yourself. You can book your cabin for, for you and your friends right now. If you don't have cabins, cabin mates yet, we could match you up. Our pricing is our pricing in the different categories is per person sharing a cabin with four, three, two, or just by yourself, which is going to cost you more. And please don't forget, everybody is staying at the headquarters. Of course, you are welcome to bring your families on board. We could not have imagined that a tiny virus could almost put the whole world to an end. But as dramatic as the corona pandemic is, it also shows what we can achieve together. The situation poses a challenge that we didn't expect. All JCI conferences have been cancelled or postponed. Cruise ships have been in port for months and it's not yet clear when we, can, when we can travel across borders again. But that's why we want to look optimistically into the future. Looking forward to our next trip to meet friends from all over the world again. At this very moment, we cannot foresee how, how the situation will continue. We, we develop backup solutions to roll out whenever necessary. But we all agree our first plan is ECC 2021. We want to welcome our JCI friends on board for a unique conference that connects people and nations. To make this dream come true, we need all of you, your cooperation and your support. And of course, your registrations. Let's roll up our sleeves and get going. Today, all of us would have met in Dublin. Since we all are um, at home instead, all in one boat, not being allowed to travel and meet personally, we still want to meet you. So we had the idea to send our suitcase on its way to connect people and nations in these times. If you want to be part of the journey of our suitcase, just write an email to shipspell at ecc rostockcom and it will make a stop over at your chapter. All of us skill will reconnect people and nations. Please register now for setting sail with JCI Europe next year. Now the next video, please, Lutz. Thank you, Olo. Was that it from your side? I think he lost sound altogether. <laughs> yes, that was it from from them, yeah. as far as I know. Oh, sure. Yes, Olo, do you want it to say? <laughs> no, now I hear you again. Ah, good. We all heard the video, it seems. So and people are also asking where they can get these epic videos. So if you can please share them uh, with everyone. The first video is uh, online on Facebook and uh, YouTube right now. The second video will come up next week. All right, great. Thanks, and please share. And we're looking forward to a, a real-life conference next year. 
Me too. So thank you for the presentation. And with that, we move on to the next point on the agenda is any other business. So far in the adoption of the agenda, we didn't receive any points from any other business. Um, do we have any points now? Um, yeah, Lutz says, Helena wanted to say something. I'm not sure if it was about the breaks or it was already addressed. Can you hear me? Yes. It wasn't about the breaks. It was uh, some one hour and a half ago, I think. I was raising my hand, uh, my hand, but, but it was missed. Uh, it's not a problem at all. I didn't want to interrupt later on. This may be a little uh, not in the topic right now, but given that we are in the end anyway. Uh, when we were discussing VP reports, uh, our team, uh, the one that we have at WhatsApp uh, group with our VP Mark, uh, we wanted to, of course, congratulate all, all VPs, but we wanted at that time to uh, praise and thank uh, to our VP Mark Smith. We believe that we should definitely uh, uh, say something about him because his uh, dedication to our team has been second to none. Uh, I come from a very small national organization, so I've seen a lot of, a lot of VPs. But uh, we never had a VP like him, so we are all, all his assigned countries thankful to him. And given that this is now the end of the whole program, we also like to thank all of you guys at the uh, JCI Europe and EDC team for your efforts today and general. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Helena. And uh, good to hear that Mark is uh, doing a good job in your national organization and in his group. Uh, and it's a pity that we didn't get to see the elaborate report of Mark. But uh, And he's also doing a great job in uh, posting Facebook videos, if you're not following him yet. Um, all right, anything else in the any other business part that I missed? Looking at Lutz. Seeing none. Then uh, the date of the next meeting, hopefully that will be on the opening day of Yokohama World Congress. So that would be the 3rd of November. Uh, of course, uh, things may change in the future, but we will see. For now, we count on uh, reconvening uh, for the JCI Europe Area D uh, constitution uh, on the 3rd of November 2020 in Yokohama. Of course, we will be reconvening as uh, JCI Europe EV after uh, this meeting. So my chairperson closing remarks are going to be very short because we have another meeting coming up. Uh, thank you all for bearing with us. Um, sorry for this being such a long meeting. Of course, it's very hard to keep time, especially online. And uh, yeah, we see that we have a lot of technical challenges. As I said, by the end of the day, we will be experts in holding online meetings. Uh, in the event, we will have another one in November. I'm sure everything will go much and more fluent. Uh, but for now, I thank you very much for sticking with us. And with that, um, that is, this is the adjournment, and I want to ask you first how much of a break you want to have between this one and the next one. Uh, originally, it was scheduled to be 60. I already noticed that uh, that would be too long. Um, would you like to have 20 minutes, 10 minutes? I see a vote for 10 minutes. So I can I say I see a motion to have a 10 minute recess moved by JCI Switzerland, seconded by JCI Germany. Any opposed? Raise your hands. Seeing none, all right, we will have a 10 minute break after this. Then I seek a motion to adjourn this meeting. Please raise your hand to move the motion to adjourn this meeting. And in this setting, this means adjournment until World Congress. Moved by JCI Finland, seconded by JCI Luxembourg. Any opposed? Please raise your hand. If not, do nothing. Seeing none, thereby I declare this meeting adjourned. We will be starting off. All right, let's. Calling to order. Welcome.
introductions. I don't think we have received any introductions since uh, this morning. Wait, yes. So no introductions. We move on to the next one. Oh, that was too fast. The first one is the announcement of quorum and financial standing. We have to do another roll call because this is another setting and let's see who survived the meeting of this morning if we still have a count of 34. Let's take it away. Yes, thank you very much EVP Marian. Uh, welcome again. Um, also from my side from Berlin. Um, one note for the financial standing. Um, I'm very happy to announce that Everybody has paid their dues in time. Uh, so all national organizations are financial as of today. Um, so we will do the same procedure as before. Uh, so please bear with me if it takes it a little bit longer, but now we have learned a lot about technology. So let's get this started. So I would like to start with JCI Austria National President Christoph. Christoph, are you still there? Let's move on. I will take that up later. Next up, JCI Belgium, Tom. Yes, Belgium still present. Thank you, Tom. Next, Elisa, can you give us a little indication? She was here just a minute ago, so maybe she just left for a second. I will I will take it up at the end as well, like uh, Austria. Thank you, though. Um, then next up, JCI Catalonia, Anna. Yes, Catalonia is here. Lovely, thank you. Then Croatia. Croatia is here. Thank you, Helena. Then we have Cyprus. Dolores, can you hear me? Okay, we will catch up on Cyprus at the end as well. Czech Republic, Miroslav. Czechia has survived till now. <laughs> Lovely. Good to hear you, Miroslav. Thank you. The next one, Denmark. Is still here. Perfect. Thank you. And I saw in the chat JCI Bulgaria is still here. Elitza, thank you. I will give you a tick as well. Uh, then we have Estonia, Anit. Yes, Estonia moved to balcony, but it's still here. <laughs> Even better. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, then we have Finland. Yes, fin JCI Finland is still, st still here. Then the uh, next one is France. JCI France. Yes, France in the place. France in the place. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, the next one is Germany. Ahoy again. Germany has survived the first session and still present. Good to have you on board. Ahoy. Next one, Iceland. Iceland present. Lovely. Thanks, Ireland. Ronan, can you hear me? Okay, we'll take up Ireland at the end as well. Next one, Italy. 
<laughs> lovely, lovely enthusiasm. Um, then we have Latvia. Latvia is still here. Hello. Perfect. Thank you, Elita. Uh, then we have Lithuania. Hello. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Luxembourg. I'm here, ready to kick it. Perfect. Aurélien, thank you. Then Malta. Still alive. <laughs> Sounds good. I hope you're still in the sunshine. Um, not burned. Uh, then we have Moldova. This is Moldova here. Present. And I would like to announce we have a chief delegate. Uh, I received the chief delegate form. Uh, so we have JCI and Moldova on board. Then uh, Monaco next up. Marion. JCI Monaco is there. Perfect. Thank you. Netherlands. Netherlands is gradually heating up, but we're still there. <laughs> Bucket water helps. Um, let's Very move. <laughs> Poland. Joanna. Hi, Poland is still here. Going strong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Then we have uh, JCI Romania. I'm still here. Hello. Good. Thank you. Then JCI Russia. Russia is still here. Perfect. And JCI Norway. Norway is also here. So <laughs> yeah. here. Yes. Yeah. It's just like, same list like before. Um, Scotland, JCI Scotland. JCI Scotland and Sidekick are here. Gotcha. Perfect. JCI Serbia. Surviving and still here. Love it. Love it. JCI Slovakia. Can you hear me? Okay, catch up at the end. Uh, JCI Sweden. Johan, can you hear me? Sweden is still here. Lovely. Thank you very much. Then we have JCI Switzerland. Yes, Switzerland is still here. Thank you. Uh, JCI Turkey. Thank you. Perfect. JCI Ukraine. <laughs> Yevian, can you hear me? Okay. Then JCI UK. Right. Thanks, James. Then, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, we, we have put area. Um, again, JC Austria. Christoph, are you here? Quick again. Sorry for the delay. No worries. Good to hear you. Thank you. Then, JC Cyprus. Dolores, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Then, JC Ireland. Ronan, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, lovely. And then we have Tomas. Can you hear me? JCI Slovakia. I also don't see him on the list, participant list. Slovakia. Oh, no, no. I don't see him on this uh, participant list as well, so I will mark him as absent. Then we have Ukraine, Yaflian. And he logged on as James, but we have James Lambert. That's a different James. Okay, then we have Ukraine and Slovakia absent, which means we have 32 national organizations present which means that we have a simple majority of 17 and a two-third majority of 22 votes. No proxies. So, dear EVP Marian, we have Chrome. All right. Thank you very much, Lutz. We have a quorum. And let's see uh, what's next on the agenda? The first thing is the adoption of the agenda. We didn't receive any amendments so far. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay. 
Jaisha France. Yes, thank you. I would like to uh, table a motion related to the EC 2020 uh, reimbursement just before agenda uh, item five. Uh, before or in uh, agenda number five? Mm. I think that's in. What do you in? You prefer in? In, in. yes, in okay. that so agenda point. Okay. Or, okay. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other amendments to the agenda? I'm guessing Lutz cannot type and check the hands at the same time. So I'll give him a bit of time. Seeing none. All right. Then I seek a motion to adopt the agenda with the amendments we just heard. Moved by Switzerland, seconded by Asia France. If you object to adopting the agenda, raise your hand, otherwise lower your hand. The agenda is hereby adopted. Thank you. Moving to the next point, which is the meeting minutes of uh, last uh, meeting at the European President's meeting. Uh, reminder to lower your hand if you haven't done so yet. Um, the minutes, are there any comments to the minutes? Seeing none, and then I seek a motion to approve the minutes as they are. Moved by Jaisha Denmark, seconded by Jaisha Belgium. If you object to adopting the minutes as they are, please raise your hand within the next five seconds. Seeing none, then the minutes are approved. All right, we move to agenda number five. And that is the budget. And I propose that we first have the presentation of Lauri and then uh, take the motion added by uh, Linda. Lauri, can I give you the word? Yes, you can. Let me click my video open. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, uh, I have two different agenda points here. First, I have the approval of the JCI Europe EV financial accounts of the previous year, and uh, we'll go through the income statement and the balance sheet of the last year. Uh, to mention, we have already gone through these with the uh, Europe Finance Committee and uh, we have discussed uh, certain questions and I'll try to try to go through all the questions that were brought up in the Finance Committee. If I forget something, please ask me a question later. And after go going through the financial statements of the 2019, uh, we need to approve the budget for the for year 2020. And the reason for that is that um, when in Tallinn, uh, there were two candidates for the EDC chair and the budget was approved with a, with a note that if the elected uh, EDC chair would like to review or, or do any changes, it could be approved later, and it was supposed to be approved in uh, in Moldova, but uh, due to access uh, lacking the access to the accounts, uh, we have to postpone the approval to this this meeting here. So we'll go quickly through the budget in the in the second part of my presentation. But to start with the uh, Financial statement of 2019. I, you have all received it within uh, within the uh, invitation to the meeting, and I I have 
gone through it with uh, with previous treasurer Jan. And uh, to start from oh, I have a wrong wrong window here. Here to start from the top, uh, you can see that it is it is divided uh, to JCA Europe and EDC, and the third column is the consolidated. It means that they are they are counted together, and that is the that is the column that should be should be compared to the budget. Uh, the dues for 2019 was 24,792 euros, almost to the budget. Uh, then to the projects, it was only 7,600 euros. There are two reasons for that. One reason is that uh, growth and development academies weren't as popular as planned. And the other reason is that uh, in the budget, the grants for the for the academies from the JCI Foundation were calculated in this in these projects. And as you can see in in the income statement, they are separately on the fourth row. So the the truth is that uh, projects had profits over eighteen thousand euros. When the budget was 23,000, so the situation is not that bad, so it seems. Uh, fundraising for Step Up for Europe, it is a it is a specialty for the 2019. Uh, it has it has provided 1,910 euros uh, for the for the JCI Europe profits. And when going to the expenses, there are Officer officer expenses for the JCI Europe and EDC they are nicely within the budget. Uh, project costs are luckily they are too less than budgeted. Uh, development of new organizations there were no no costs for that. Partnership officer made costs for 1,195 euros nicely within the budget. And communication and marketing was little over budget, but not nothing dramatic. Grants were given out for 1,028 euros, nicely within within the uh, budget. I'm sorry, I have to close the WhatsApp because it keeps bleeping there. Uh, then the costs for the roadshow for Step Up for Europe was 8,491 euros. And uh, as you saw on, the, saw on the previous agenda point, uh, there were some funds still unused. Administrative costs, 1,188 euros, which brings us to the operating profits so that uh, JCI Europe um, as a as a entity made almost 7,000 7, euros for surplus, Oh, no, 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 no. What, what was the correct correct word? Losses and the uh, and the EDC made three thousand euros for three thousand four hundred ten euros surplus, totaling uh, the deficit of uh, three thousand five hundred and thirty seven euros for the consolidated JCI Europe budget, and then there are. Finance expenses, which includes mainly bank account fees. So the end of the year deficit was 3,791 euros. And when going to the balance sheet, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, you can see there's receivables for almost 11,000 euros. There are within JCI Europe, there are 1,170 euros for the Step Up for Europe crowdfunding project. There are funds still in the in the crowdfunding platform waiting to be transferred to JCI Europe account. They are they are put in the receivables for being in the in the uh, crowdfunding platform. And uh, under EDC, there's 9,691 euros. It's mainly JCI Foundation grants that are are uh, applied and approved last year, but paid this year. So they they have been in receivables 
in the end of the year, and they have been paid paid to our account during this year. Uh, then there's this one amount, 330 euros. You can see it. It's in the assets of EDC and liabilities of uh, JCI Europe. It's uh, it's one registration fee that should have been paid from uh, from uh, the Europe account, but was paid from EDC account, and it wasn't. And uh, dur during the uh, during because of the lack of the access to accounts in the end of the year, the correcting transaction couldn't be made. I learned that uh, that kind of a uh, amount exists a week ago, so I think I'll I'll just make it fixed. So transferring 330 euros from another account to another. And then there's uh, 26,659 euros in the bank account, no cash whatsoever. Uh, equity side uh, retained earnings at the end of the last year were 33,000 33, euros out of which 2,400 euros were allocated for JCI Europe, and 30,683 is allocated for EDC and its purposes. Accounts payable, there are some, some invoices, just a minute, I'll check, check the list, some invoices that couldn't be paid in the end of the year because of the lack of the access to accounts and they are mostly paid during this year but there are 276 euros grant for chesia belgium then there's a reservation for a video of the diversity committee it's 3000 euros uh, i don't i don't actually know what's the situation with the video at the moment at least anything Anything hasn't been paid for it this year. Uh, then there's some travel costs that were invoiced in the end of the year, but uh, have been paid only only during this year. A growth and development academy and uh, hotel and travel costs for the EDC chair, and they equal together 4,432 euros, and then there was uh, this 330 euros I mentioned. So total equity and liabilities gives uh, JCI Europe 2,735 euros and EDC 35,115 euros. And here is the fast run through of the financial statement of the 2019. I think if there's any questions about those, I think it might be wise to take them now. Are there any questions for Lauri and the report of the 2019 financial report? Can I say seeing none? None indeed. So, Lauri, please proceed. Sorry. Yes, thank you. And uh, as I mentioned, I have another another point that is the 2020 JCI Europe budget. And the reason it is here is that it was it was decided to be revised if needed uh during this year and the main point is that we've gone gone through it with the edc chair natasha and we found no need to to any revisions in the actual amounts of the budgetary budgetary divisions whatsoever there's two two clarifications that should be made and approved here uh i wrote in the in the some of the materials these already but uh, i think we it is wise for us to go through them uh we 
within the budget notes there are there are the uh just a minute i'll open the documents here i managed to close it for some reason uh, there are gone through all the no it's actually in the in the no it's in the notes yeah there's the uh all the all the national organizations and uh, their membership counts and the proposed JCI uh, dues counted out. And uh, the fact that they are not uh, one to one with, uh, with the budget and the, and the interim report I made is that because of the the budget is calculated by the membership count of 2019 and the uh, and the truth is about the membership counts for 2020 that uh, gives a little difference in the numbers but the most important thing about here is the lines 45 to 49 there was a discussion before the conference assembly in Tallinn that uh, the JCI Europe dues should be uh, redivided because of the financial standing of EDC compared to JCI Europe. And uh, it was about to be proposed that uh, the division between the two sh should, do sh should be 75 cents to EDC and 40 cents to JCI Europe. And uh, it was written in the proposed budget but uh, within the discussions, uh, the finance committee and the treasurer and the candidates for the offices came to the conclusion that uh, they, sh they should withdraw the actual, actual proposition. But there was uh, late night and, uh, and uh, lots of hurry and uh, things to prepare. Uh, it was the... The proposition was, was withdrawn and it was fixed to the actual numbers in the budget, but uh, the, the few lines you see on the on the slide that remained in the in the proposed budget and it got a little under the radar and it got approved. So the above adjustment of the division for 2020 was not approved and the division remained the same for 2020 than in 2019. And uh, it doesn't affect in any numbers because that is how the budget budget is uh, calculated. But if you if you have the enthusiasm to do the mathematics and calculate all the dues with using this proposed division, it doesn't add up. So I would like to, to get that uh, couple of lines away from the budget because it doesn't belong there. It wasn't approved. And uh, another another point that uh, have made a couple of couple of problems during this year is the one line in the EDC breakdown breakdown that says that 100 euro participation fee per delegate. Uh, I want to make it clear that uh, this this line is supposed to deal with. Uh, deal with uh, uh, growth and development academy and growth and development expert programs and their participation fee, not the ADC participation grants. Uh, there have been discussion that uh, this 100 euro restriction should be should be aligned to the to the EDC participation grants and we have had to live live with that that restriction, but I would like to rule it out, but because it wasn't meant to be that way, that that has been limiting the possibility for ADC to to give out grants for those who, who need who we need. I'm sorry. Quick point of order. Yeah. We're actually taking about 15 minutes now for this point, and I'm currently not sure where we are moving with this. Is there an actual error that we need to uh, rectify right now or uh, what what is the point at this as, at this moment the point is the, what i was saying that i want to inform you 
that there's uh, these two mistakes in the budget. Yeah, but I've read the budget, and if you fix the mistakes, I think we're good. Yeah. So is that okay. a proposal that, that we need to fix right now, or what are we going to do? There's a, uh, there's a proposal that uh, you'll approve my corrections to the budget. Thanks. Is that a motion that's on the floor right now? If you wish to make such a motion. Yes, please. Okay. All right, moved by Jesha de Netherlands. Seconded by Jesha Switzerland. Anyone opposing to uh, accepting these corrections, which were just an error in the budget, uh, just to be exactly complete. If you object, please raise your hand. If not, please do nothing. Do you see any raised hands, Lutz? Uh, Jesha France, you still have your hand raised. Is it about objecting or is it about something else? It was raised since the beginning, says Lutz. All right, then I don't consider it as an objection. And then we uh, say the motion uh, carries for accept for correcting these changes, uh, correcting this mistake. Thank you, Lauri. Was there anything else from your side? No, I'm done. Thank you. All right, then I believe uh, whether yeah that we need need some more questions for Lauri. Jesha UK. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, just one, it's more of an observation about the budget um, in terms of equality and equity between all members. Um, obviously, we are all aware of the refund position of EC only being 60%. Um, personally, in the UK, myself and my deputy, we would normally get our hours covered by our purse, um, but we're not claiming that because we want to be equitable with all of our members. And I was just wondering whether the JCI Europe team would be able to do the same thing. I can respond to that because we talked about it, James. Um, indeed, the fees for conferences are covered by JCI Europe for the team members for whom this is not already covered by the JCI budget. Um, so for VPs, EVPs, it comes from the global budgets, and for the EDC councillors mainly, it comes from the JCI Europe budget. This is in our policies, and so they have the right to get the money back in case they already registered. Um, so we are covering the 100% uh, from the JCI Europe. A budget. In, as, Jesha, as James said, uh, he opted for not taking the refund from his national organization. That is a personal choice and um, our members of Europe can they make the same personal choice, but we cannot make that choice for them. Yes, is that okay, James? All right. Thank you very much. I hear, see that my sound is getting bad. All right, maybe I can reset my headset later, but first I would like to uh, seek a motion to uh, round this up to approve the financial report of 2019 and the 2020 budget. Moved by JCI UK, seconded by JCI Malta. Anyone opposing to objecting the, the financial report and the 2020 budget, please raise your hand now. Seeing none, then I hereby declare the financial report and the 2020 budget to be approved. Then we have the motion from JCI France. Linda, can I give you the floor? Okay, thank you, uh, Marion. 
So we wish to table this motion because the situation we are in the unprecedented and we all agree. Above all, however, it will set a precedent in our organization. The situation requires has to review the organization, the funding model for our international events, the amount of rig stocking that today proves that only the member bear the risk and I assume the consequences. What will we do if one day an organization, sorry, an organi organizing country has not completed its budget and is faced with a difficulty? It can sell Councils and does not doesn't reimburse our members. The European Conference sets a precedent. It is up to us to define the future framework to be given. It's our responsibility of, as national presidents. The amount of compensation is not the most import, important thing. The financial loss is much greater. It is the precedent that we create in our organization. It's the future and for future generation of members that it's important. We can't be just leader. Now we come to be sustainable leader. I will read the explanatory statement. Whereas 728 people, the majority of whom national organization that are member of GCI Europe were affected by the cancellation of the 2020 GCI Europe conference in Dublin, losing upwards of 20 hundred euro each on their re registration fee, whereas the COVID-19 crisis has severely impacted GCI Europe activities in 2020 and should result in budget saving of 3,000 euro. Whereas at December 31, 2019, GCI Europe had retained earnings of 30, uh, 33,088 euro. Whereas we believe that GCI Europe should, ser should serve its members and restore confidence in our international events. Whereas we several national presidents believe that GCI Europe needs to show leadership and send a strong signal that we, we will have to defend the interest of our members. B, it will resolve that GCI Europe set aside the provision of 15,000 euro to offer pay up East European Conference 2020 delegates to register for European Conference 2021 a discount on their European Conference 2021 registration or some other form of compensation for delegates attending European Conference 2021. This excludes delegates who have been otherwise reimbursed. I finish. Thank you. All right. I copy the motion. We'll copy the motion into the chat. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, is there a seconder to this motion? Jesha Catalunya. All right, then we can discuss this motion. First, I'd like to ask Lauri, do we indeed have uh, retained earnings of 33,000 uh, with JCI Europe that would be possible to be allocated for the 15,000 as proposed. Thank you, Marion, for the question. Uh, the fact is that we have with JCI Europe, we have retained earnings, just a minute, we have 2,405 euros. Uh, European Development Council instead has 30,000 euros, 30,683 euros, which is uh, allocated for the purposes of EDC and mainly mainly paid by JCI Foundation for the for the growth and development purposes of of Europe. 
So answer to your question, Chase EI Europe does not have 15,000 euros. All right, um, JCI France, Linda, could you respond to that? Or someone else? Thank you. Um, uh, um, we can take the count on EDC, so? All right, then I'd like to give the word to the EDC chair, um, Natasha, because we can use the money from the EDC. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, as uh, Tricia Lowry already explained, it's the budget. The, the amount of the retained earnings from EDC is foundation grants. They are given for a specific purpose, uh, even though they were not used for that specific purpose in the future. Um, we don't know exactly what is from the foundation grants and what is from, um, from the dues collected, but that would definitely be a smaller amount since the dues collected in EDC has been one euro previously, around one euro, and then lowered to the amount we have now. Um, JCI Europe has only been collecting dues for two years, so the complete amount, more or less, is the foundation grants. The money are there, so we can use them for uh, a specific, um, a specific purpose um, from given from the JCI Foundation. So just to give you a little bit of more insights in what was the idea for this year, um, as it's probably not a surprise for any of you because it happens every year, uh, on behalf of the European Development Council, I applied to the JCI Foundation for grants for the Regional Growth and Development Academies. I applied for around $50,000, uh, and that is a huge amount, but that is actually what is needed if we wanted to go completely through with the ambitions we have. We got $10,000, uh, which is um, uh, which is the amount that we have been given for the previous years. That means that uh, the savings we have in the account can be used for this specific purpose, even though we didn't get Full, fun, uh, full, fin uh, uh, the full financing for uh, this year's academies. So that's, that's just a bit of an explanation for, so what could the money be used for and what is the intent to use them for? Um, even though that we are past the first six months with uh, no physical regional academies, then that will still be the option in the future. But for the specific amount and the comment uh, that we can take them from EDC, that is absolutely not possible, and that has been checked with headquarters as well. They are giving for a specific purpose, and they need to be used for that purpose. All right, thank you very much, EDC Chair. I also see a comment in the chat from Marcus from Malta. Would you like to comment on that? or? I think it's pretty self-explanatory, and uh, I would like to move to uh, table this motion and to dismiss it for any further con uh, consideration as it's against the uh, JCI Europe Constitution. Yes, thank you, Marcus. Indeed, in its current form, as uh, Lauri, uh, Natasha and Marcus explained, it cannot be adopted. So, Linda, would you like to amend the motion or anyone else? And a reminder to put your hand down if you have raised it before. I see no other remarks. So with an unconstitutional motion, we cannot bring it to a vote. I see no other uh, comments, so then I propose we move further with the agenda.
All right. Um, Jay shared the Netherlands. Boss. No, I shot the gun. I'm good. Move on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, yes, I see that I forgot an agenda point for B. Apologies. I was very eager with approving the minutes and I thought, hey, this is going fast. And then I forgot one point. That is the uh, review of actions from the previous minutes, a clarification of the step up for Europe videos, documentary and allocated funds. GCI, oh, Lutz, area director Lutz, please take the floor. JCI Europe. Uh, yes. Um, thank you, EVP Marian. Uh, I'll make it quick. Um, just touch um, up on the report that has been shared, um, I think, a couple of weeks already ago. Um, I will just, you know, just recall the main points that uh, regarding the videos for the Step Up for Europe um, campaign, there were no additional or no written agreements um, with anyone who's involved in the Step Up for Europe videos. Um, and there was only a written agreement for two videos for the short clips um, that have been shown online, the, the multiple short ones for the Facebook page, and then the teaser. Those were the only two that needed to be delivered. They were delivered. Um, so this is all done. And uh, the others, the documentaries, the voluntary, the documentary videos, a, doc a voluntary project um, by uh, the members Annalisa and Mark. And uh, so, of course, um, since they do it voluntarily, um, we cannot put, you know, put any deadlines on it or ask them to deliver it since there's no actual agreement that is written or they don't have to deliver it. Um, so um, those were the points for the videos. Then um, one point, then the next point would be the money. Uh, 10,000 euros were budgeted um, last year for the um, whole project. Um, and there were an additional 1,720 euros um, raised through crowdfunding. Um, deducting all expenses, the remaining budget is 3,229 euros and 11 cents. That includes, um, for example, just take out one example, uh, the um, accommodation costs for Mark um, while he was shooting the short clips um, in the Netherlands, for example, for uh, the Step Up for Europe. Um, uh, uh, campaign. Um, so the remaining money is uh, the remaining 3,229 euros and 11 cents are still in the budget um, and there are no open or undelivered videos um, as far as I have understood and my research went. Um, and I include all stakeholders from former EVP Victor to um, Annalisa and Mark themselves. Um, and everybody else who was involved in the project. Uh, so, as stated in the report, um, we have a clear cut of the budget and we have a, a clear answer to the video question. Um, are there any questions still to the report? Checking the list and seeing none. Marcus, maybe you still have your hand up. But sorry, I get done. Okay, cool, perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, then that will be it for my side. Thank you, Marie. All right, thank you very much, Lutz. And uh, we're jumping back and forth because now we are going back to agenda number six, which is the discharge of the 2019 Board of Directors. Now that we have accepted the financial report of 2019. Uh, we can now discharge the 2019 Board of Directors from their financial responsibilities. Uh, for that, I seek a motion to discharge the 2019 Board of Directors. JCI, the Netherlands. Moved by JCI, the Netherlands. Seconded by JCI, Switzerland. Anyone opposing to... Uh, discharging the 2019 Board of Directors, please raise your hands, otherwise do nothing. JCI France, you still have your hand up? Okay, it's gone. All right, no objections then. Uh, then hereby I declare the 2019 Board is discharged. Congratulations. I'm not sure if they're watching. 
Um, then moving to the next point, the constitutional amendments. Um, as you have seen in the documents for this meeting, we want to propose to install a, a general legal counsel position in JCI Europe. Uh, this is because we want to um, yeah, work on the solid basis for this organization. And we see that there are a lot of legal issues uh, that have to be dealt with. Right now, we have legal knowledge in the team, but this is no guarantee. So we want to um, make sure that always in the future and therefore add point G under uh, eight in the constitution, as Lutz is showing the general legal counsel if this is not the same person as one of the above mentioned persons. So this can be um, someone who is already in the team. It can also be a separate person. It is an elected position. So that means uh, if we accept this adoption in this uh, amendment and um, that we can have candidates for the GLC position uh, at the elections uh, in Yokohama. Um, it can be also someone candidating for a different position in the board. So I seek a motion to add this role to the board of directors. Moved by JCI Monaco, seconded by JCI Switzerland. Any questions? I didn't say that just now, so I'll give you space for questions. Remarks, Jisha UK. Just wondering, would it be possible to do the two proposals as one vote? Uh, the two proposals. Okay. Did we split it into two? I thought it was one. Or did it? Um, it's probably the next text that refers to this part. Yes. Please scroll down. Lutz, and indeed we can do it as one vote, as we just noticed in the first go. Uh, there we are also just adding the G, which is referring to the GLC before that. So it is the same thing. It just needs to be changed in multiple places in the Constitution. Thank you, James. So to be clear, to clarify, this motion is to make all the necessary changes in the constitution um, for installing such a position as GLC. So we still have the motion on the floor by Monaco and Switzerland. I see Jesha the Netherlands raised their hands or was it about moving it? No, I had an extra question this time. <laughs> Go ahead. I was wondering, uh, I'm all be behind uh, uh, adding the position of the GLC into the into the board of directors. I was just wondering about the consequences of this uh, to the budget, because I feel that when we installed the treasurer before, we didn't take into account that the treasurer also needed to be represented at the World Conference, uh, EPM and European Conference. And so the travel was not in the budget. Um, what is the position of the JSA Europe board at this moment, moment for GLC? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Indeed, uh, if it is another person, uh, then that person uh, would have the right to get the conference fee covered at least. Um, if it is the same person as, as uh, that's already in the team, of course, that wouldn't be an issue. But that because it's only for next year where it will be relevant i think we can uh work that out in the budget for next year so if i understand you correctly this would be an issue coming up in next year's election and then you would like to try and add it to the budget next year no the budget for next year will be proposed at the national president's meeting in yokohama the same time where the glc will be elected Right. Okay. So, are you making a provision in the in the minutes then at this point that we are taking this up at the national president's meeting in Yokohama? Uh, because I I do feel that it's important to also include a person that is donating his time towards this position is also compensated for his travels that he may need to do or she may need to do uh, in 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 their function. 
Yes, so we uh, note down that this has to be included in the budget, you say? Yes, yes. well noted. Thank you. All right, do we have any other questions? JCI Sweden. Uh, yes, I'm wondering if, uh, you know, the, the financial impact of having another board member, uh, how much would it actually cost and will it have any effects on our dues? Yes, um, Jesha, uh, Lauri, could you maybe note on that? Of course, again, if it's the same person as is already in the board, it would have no impact. Otherwise, Lauri, what would be the costs? Of a board member, and do we have to raise the dues? Hello, uh, from the wild guess from the back of my hand, I would say that the effect for the GLC in the budget will be exactly the same as treasurer, which is like um, quickly calculate a little over a thousand euros, and. Uh, Wild guess would be that it doesn't have at least significant effect on the dues at this moment. As as you mentioned already, uh, we will of course present a budget in in uh, Yokohama, and uh, there it will be counted out. And the the goal is that it has minimum effect for the dues. Yes, thank you, Lauri. I may, uh, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. so, the thing is, if we take a decision now to add the board member, uh, once we discuss the budget, you know, the discussion will be, yeah, but you already approved this person, and, and you know, with that comes a cost. So, are we, uh, by that, you know, more or less accepting our dues being raised and, and uh, the financial impact of this? Uh, even though we don't actually know the exact number. So, so that's what I'm... Is that the case? Um, I'm looking at Natasha, if that would be the case, because theoretically, I think we can say that the DLC doesn't get any uh, fees covered. But... Yeah, no, it's not mentioned yet in uh, in any part of uh, the constitution how the reimbursement should be so we are not um, approving it uh, indirectly um, I was just uh, quickly going through in my mind what we have been discussed also with um, so my puppy making noise really sorry for that um, <laughs> What we also discussed when I did my reporting is we do look into also uh, optimizing on, for example, uh, one of the portfolios with also a part of the Team Europe. So in general, we are looking to optimizing in every in every any area, uh, which also will have an effect of, of the budget so that we just don't add any more. If you also look at the budget, uh, it is... Um, a matter of priorities because there is actually already room for it in the budget if we did a bit less um less of uh, for example campaigns there was a lot of money allocated to campaigns so it can be done without even raising the dues but of course it can have an effect uh, elsewhere okay sweet does that answer your question did. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, then I'd like to move to the uh, voting. Lutz, do you have a poll re prepared? It is coming, he says. So we're doing all the proposals at once. Um, the poll is up. 
Please vote in favor, opposed, or abstain. We have 24 votes in and uh, we are 40 seconds into the voting. 10 seconds left. We have 27, 26. Why is my political songs? Not um, okay, and we close the poll. Uh, poll results and we have 23 in favor, one opposed, and three, uh, wait, four, six, seven, eight, nine. No, we have two, eight. 23 in favor, one opposed, eight abstentions. All right, that sounds like the motion carries. Correct, let's? Yes, yes, yes. yes. More than two, two thirds. One and four fifth. Wait, let me let me calculate just to be sure. Give me one second. But I'm pretty sure that it moves. We have one opposed, but let me and abstentions are not counted. So we have 23 in favor, one opposed. In the EV, the abstentions are not counted. Yes, we had that discussion before, I remember, since we adhered to <laughs> American Robert's rules of order. Um, yes. so uh, yes, we have a four four fifth majority. For constitutional right. Just to be very sure that we're doing it correctly, because now we have a GLC, or at least a position for it. Um, a question from Jesha the Netherlands. Yeah, just to clarify, are we uh, counting the people that are not voting as an abstention? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are, and it's specific mentioned in the constitution. Sorry. Thank you very much. Um, then moving to the next agenda item, because with that uh, motion, we now have a vacancy in Europe for a GLC. And in case we have a vacancy during the year, it is the right of the executive vice president to appoint someone to have that position until the next elections. So hereby, I would like to appoint Natasha as the GLC for the rest of this year. All right, then we, congratulations, Natasha, and I'm very happy to have you on board. Uh, you have been uh, irreplaceable this year so far already with your legal knowledge, and I'm very happy that we can uh, rely on that for the rest of the year as well. Um, then we move on to agenda point eight, which is JCI Europe headquarters report by Lutz. Yes, thank you, dear EVP Marion. I hope you can see me. Um, yes, uh, I just checked. This appears to be the last point on the agenda before other business and head of next meeting and the adjournment. Uh, guys, we are getting there. We are getting to the end. And uh, before I want to start, I keep it very short. Um, I promise, short and sweet. Uh, maybe you have noticed that during the two assemblies we had today. Um, I'm not preparing any pre uh, presentations uh, because I think this is more interactive. And as usual, reach out to me personally if you want to have any more details on any specific point. Um, but before I start, I want to really uh, um, announce, since this is my first um, European conference, um, as a personal note maybe here, um, today I really saw that uh, how dedicated you are all to this organization, uh, staying here for now. Yeah, since uh, 10 o'clock, uh, this is two, four, six, seven hours now. Um, 
just to uh, let you know um, and to really acknowledge that, that you as volunteers for this organization take this whole Saturday off um, to uh, really make sure that everything goes right in this organization. That's why we do the assemblies. Um, that's why we do all these protocols, all these hand signs, these hand signs. Um, so really, thank you. I'm really impressed by that, and uh, I want to acknowledge that. Um, so going to the JCI Europe headquarters report, um, as you know, I started uh, in uh, mid-December, taking it up after four months of an office that um, has not been, um, yeah, manned, um, and there there was there was no been, no staff been there. Um, so things, of course, piled up, and not due to uh, my predecessors. Um, which who did a very very good job uh, both Chris and Magdalena, um, but obviously due to uh, that there was no one here to receive any uh, mail and and post. Um, so two things actually piled up um, as the highest priority, and and those were the two things that I started to work on first, um, and that was one the um, registry for um, non-profit or for as associations in Germany. So if you ever wondered what the EV means, it means for, it stays for Entered um, Associations, Eingetragene Vereine, um, which is the German term for non-profits. You are um, obliged as a non-profit to uh, get uh, registered. Um, this is also a checks and balances um, procedure um, to make sure that non-profit organizations are actually non-profit. And uh, we saw that before, um, for example, with Marcus, uh, what, what he raised, um, uh, regarding the constitution, this is what the whole meaning is behind the um, associations and, and the registry, um, because you have to have these kind of things in the constitution if you want to get registered as an association. The benefits are that you, for example, don't uh, get taxed um, for it, uh, for your for your um, budget, um, and you have some yeah, um, well, some some benefits uh, uh, regarding banks as well, or if you if you want to use uh, technology or apps, there are some um, players in the market that are designed for registered organizations. And we have this as well to um, get corporations in Europe um, with other um, associations because an EV is uh, very well recognized um, across Europe. So um, that's just the background. So I started working with that, and that was the main. Those are the two main things I really want to talk about in this report. As I talked about the European Now Our Trends already, it's a different point. And then other things are more for Area D as my role as uh, Growth and Development Director. But this is mainly for the um, JCI EV report. Um, so this, for example, is the registry of um, one year. Um, it means uh, all protocols, all minutes need to be translated uh, from English to German for the uh, for the registry, since um, they only accept German written minutes. Um, so I did a lot of uh, translating, um, which I'm much better in than in math. Um, so I'm very happy to do that job and do less Excel sheets and rather do this. Um, and actually, this is kind of my profession. So um, uh, we have some we we did su succeed in it. Um, uh, we had to register the 2019 Board of Directors before we can register the 2020 Board of Directors. Um, I got a positive green light from the registry for 2019, so we can now move on with 2020. Um, it, it's a constant back and forth with the registry since um, we, for example, members of the board for the EV are uh, appointed through due, due to uh, through the election in the um, General Assembly of JCI. Uh, so this is, of course, very complicated um, for the German registry who only sees the EV, but not the JCI, the, the, the worldwide organization. Um, and then they ask, of course, how did they get elected? Um, and then I have to explain that. I have to frame that. I, I work together with um, uh, a member in, in JCI Germany, um, Arno, uh, who's very, very helpful for that. Uh, shouts out to him um, if he hears this, um, who drafts with me. Um, the legal writings, for example. Um, so this, he has been a very big help, and and that's what what we have been done. So that that that's what took up a lot of my time, besides my task as growth and development director, area director for Europe, um, when I'm mostly in contact with you as national presidents. And then the other big thing is accounting. Um, shout out to Lauri, thank you as well. We we have been working on new formats uh, for the accounting and for the Excel sheets. 
um, because uh, we, we have an accountant here in Germany as well who helps us um, for the accounting um, of the uh, EV, which also goes hand in hand with what I have said before, um, that nonprofits are actually nonprofit. Uh, so the um, uh, the registry, the the, uh, the office for finance uh, cooperates with the association for uh, uh, with the uh, registry for associations, and they communicate, of course, um, if there's any dubious uh, payments from from an EV, uh, then they would report uh, that to the uh, to the registry. So everything is linked together. So everything has, of course, need everything needs to be um, bulletproof. Um, uh, I'm a German, and Sandra, you can uh, maybe um, uh, underline that. We are very diligent, um, maybe not that fun sometimes, but uh, they are very diligent. And um, so um, you can you can be sure that that's that's one benefit for this organization. Um, it's it's not easy, like cherry picking, as we say. it's not it's not an easy thing to work with the registries uh, since they ask every little dot and every little translation, every number. Um, but nonetheless, this assures us and you as members especially um, that everything goes um, right to the law and to the numbers. Um, and this is mainly what I'm what I'm taking care of. Uh, so I think five minutes are over. Um, I don't want to extend it any longer. Again, if you have any specific questions. Oh, one last thing. Yes, um, I want to mention that the second person um, that we want to hire here in the European uh, uh, headquarters um, Magdalena, uh, the former Magdalena, um, and, and, and Magdalena's position. Um, we are working on it, and and they has. We wrote out the uh, job descriptions, but due to the pandemic, the German Chamber of Commerce, who actually hires uh, that person on behalf of JCI, um, put a complete hiring stop. Uh, since, for example, I'm I'm still allowed to be in the office but no one is really here we all work still from home um, there are still very tight regulations in germany regarding the pandemic um, so the german chamber of commerce put a full stop um, hiring stop uh, uh, in place and that's why we can't hire someone now um, laura the uh, secretary general of jci germany um, who's also in that complex with the german chamber um, and i and kevin we're all working on this um, I promise you uh, that that we want to. <laughs> I have a personal interest in getting the second person on board, so I don't have to jiggle everything in my hands. Um, but uh, that's that's the reason why why there's a delay. But nonetheless, um, as I mentioned before, we're going to have an intern, uh, Dan from Moldova, um, and I'm very excited to to get to know him um, and have some support. So much from my side. And I forgot to put my video on big. Nah. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much, Lutz, for your very short report. You promised to keep it short. Um, any questions for Lutz? Seeing none. All right. Then we uh, have to approve this uh, for this. Um, report officially. So I seek a motion to approve the report of JCI Europe headquarters, moved by JCI Sweden, seconded by JCI Ireland. Anyone opposing to accepting the report of Lutz, please raise your hand. If not, do nothing. We didn't move the second, no, move the motion, so I think they're not objecting. All right, none then I hereby declare the report of JCI Europe headquarters for accepted. And thank you very much, Lutz. Indeed, uh, already in your first half of year, you've been a great asset in, uh, in our team in Europe. Thank you very much. Then we are at the next agenda item, which is any other business. Is there anything that I forgot? I didn't hear anything that had been moved to other business. If there is anything, please speak now. Seeing none. All right, then we move to agenda number 10, date of the next meeting. 
that is uh, quite simple. Hopefully, uh, we will be meeting in Japan on the 3rd of November for our national president's meeting. We will again be dividing the meeting into two parts um, there, and we hope to have a shorter meeting there. Um, then the chairperson's closing remarks. Yes, we have been here together for seven hours and 15 minutes. Sorry, uh, have... oh. Marion, can I ask a quick question about the next uh, meeting? Yes. Um, you mentioned it will be on the 3rd of November in Japan. If there are still um, regulations for some countries that they cannot travel to Japan, will there be provisions to make it a partial online, partial offline meeting? And will that change the date maybe? Is it something we need to take into consideration now or is it just okay with a proposed date for now? I would say for now we go with the proposed dates and this is definitely something that we uh, need to take into account to make sure that everyone is able to uh, attend the meeting in however form we uh, put it. Thank you. All right. Then I will continue with my closing remarks. As I said, staying here for seven hours and 16 minutes now. Um, I see that still some people want to stay for drinks. So that's a good sign that uh, you're keeping the spirits up, um, literally. Um, yes, I'd like to thank you all for your contribution. It's been a long day, I know. Imagine that we could have been in uh, Dublin in the sun as well, having a Guinness or whatever you prefer, a whiskey. Um, but we are all here at our homes and enduring our uh, Saturday seven hour meeting. I hope it, it wasn't uh, too bad for you. I enjoyed uh, chairing it. It was an honor and um, I hope that we will have a better period in the second half of the year. We will see what the future brings. If we can still get together this year, that would be great. Um, and otherwise, we have become experts at uh, chairing or participating in an online assembly. Next time, I'm sure everything will go even faster, even smoother. So thank you again very much. And with that, I'd like to seek a motion to adjourn this meeting. Is there anyone who would like to adjourn the meeting? Moved by JC Ireland. Seconded by Jesha Germany. Anyone opposing to adjourning the meeting, please raise your hand. If you want to adjourn the meeting, do nothing. None. That is great. Thank you, everyone. Meeting is adjourned. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and I hope to see everyone again in real life soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks all. Thank you all. Bye bye.